can't think of the name. Right now, because oh, you know wow. what? You He's know what? Swords in. don't get tired, but fighters do. And still, movie trivia, Schmodown, champion of the world, dangerous, Dan Moro. You're the, you're the Star Wars champion. Congrats. No, I think I need to. Patriots. Aliens. Got it. Oh, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Turn around. Let me see it. That was incorrect. Incorrect. No good. Incorrect. Jane Fonda, Helen Mirren, and Jennifer Lopez. And with that, Good John guess. Rocha and Stacey Howard have been eliminated.
everybody. The Schmodown Collision is moments away, and you guys are celebrating with the pre-show, sponsored by Captain Morgan, the original spiced rum. Guys, I can't tell you how excited I am. I can only imagine how excited you guys are. We are going to be back in studio, and we have four massive matches, two digital, two in studio, the matches are incredible. Listen to these matches that we have. You're gonna start out with a Star Wars championship between Andrew DiMolanta and Laura Kelly. You're gonna bounce into studio and see Amaru Moses and Saul go at it for an IG number one contender match. And you speak about number one contender matches, jump back to digital and get undefeated Kevin Smith going up against the just unbelievable superstar, Lady Justice, Marisol McKee, number one contender in singles. But back in studio, the main event, the titles are on the line, the team's championship, Shazam, William Bibiani, The Kid versus Mike the Killer Kalinowski, the reigning Intergeekdom champion, and his partner, Chance Ellison, former two-time champs, looking to become three-time champs. What an event it is, I can't wait. The studio is in a buzz, Steph Sabra, Frank Janish, they're running around getting interviews for people as people are showing up. You're gonna see the first time a lot of people have seen each other in a while, so you're gonna see the interaction there. Then Steph and Frank will be interviewing people and getting their predictions, how they're feeling. Maybe there's some special guests. What's gonna happen? I know the buzz is there. I can feel it. I know you can feel it. So let's get to the first interview. Take it away. Hey, it's me. Hey, guys. You're not here for me, are you? Here. There's real celebrities outside. I saw Andrew Guy. Yeah, yeah, but I'm really excited. I've been in for a while, but. Uh... This is the one you won. I won where? Okay. I got this one. Well, it's now. 
it's like you're basically just waiting. Like, it's oh, true. I forgot about that. Like, sometimes you just the bunkers the second round and you're like, all right, well, <laughs> anyone can in the third round again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel like with like our singles matches, you know, you're back around and you lost all these huge players. But it's not like every one of those guys had 100% every time you yeah. yeah. That's what it is. Today, for you to leave the way you play, it was really happy. Yeah. Every question was like, you know, I can't have a match. In the old days, it could be like, you know, you miss like three and they miss two. And, that you are not very tall, because Ben's the only one I said. I didn't even say hi first. I said, why the f*** are you so tall? Okay. Uh, <laughs> that hits the spot. <laughs> than most people who are normal. That's very kind of you, but so, no, not today. Okay, we'll so see. fair enough. We'll see. All right, we'll I just have see. to accept it, but I'm super stoked. Did you get some sleep last night? I did. Oh, I did. Right. At least one of us did. I did, That's I did get some sleep. I did get some sleep. Oh, we gotta take one. Oh, is this video or pictures? Video. Oh, oh, I didn't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I wish you luck, I know, and I kind of do anyway. I gotta so give, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, we gotta give a match that we get a better match than last time. So oh. we'll see. We'll see. Still a good match. Let's see how the cards. Go. That was still a tough match. Yeah. That came down pretty close yeah. to the wire. All right. <laughs> Yes! Nailed it! Well, that's not cute. <laughs> there will be an next time. Right? So, so. Got that? There will be a next time. Yes. Yes. Hey everyone, we are so excited for our partnership with Captain Morgan for the Schmodown Collision coming up on July 31st, Mark, and what? an event it's going to be. Captain Morgan, the original Spiced Rum, sponsoring it, and I believe we get to open this now. We do. This is like Christmas morning for me. I'm very excited about this. There's going to be some things you don't know what's in here. I don't know what's in you here. You talk about it. Let's I'll do open it. it. Go for it. Yes, we got food, too. That's 
Look at that. Why do Got you popcorn? go for the food first? Look at me, look at you. I get yeah. chocolate, oh. you get cards to read Thank you. about what I'm unboxing, which includes, yes, bottle of well, Captain Well, I'm going to go first then, because I always like the Captain and Cola. To me, that's oh. the classic. That's what I'll enjoy. Nice glass with some ice in it. And Time tested. Christian approved, Captain Morgan and Cola. I want something a little more exotic. What well, do we got? I got my eye on you, buddy. You know yeah. why? Because I got the eye of the captain right here. It is a specialized drink. It is collision tested just for you. What oh, is it? Oh, yeah. This is the official drink of the Schmodown Collision. So you have your Captain Morgan, I assume. Yes. And then we also have some ginger. Yep. Give it a little kick. And then just like paradise. Passion fruit, baby. This is going to be a fun show now. Yes, it will be. So what we will also be doing is going over this. And what is this? This is the official scorecard of the collision. <laughs> yes. And you got Dimolanta versus Kelly. You got Saul versus Moses. Kevin Smith versus Marisol McKee. And in the main event, Corruption is going to try to get those titles away for Shazam. So Mark, they want to play along with it. They think, oh my gosh, I'm so much better than Chance Ellison. I'm <laughs> so much better than Viviani. Well, you got your own whiteboard. You got yourself this, and you can just oh, play that's along. Great. Draw a picture. Let's play Pictionary. Okay. Draw how you see me in your head. Okay, ready? Yeah. And then reveal it. All right. I am flattered. He wrote, I am great. I don't know who it's for, but I know that Captain Morgan is great, and it is best when enjoyed responsibly. That's Captain's orders. Thanks, everybody, and enjoy the collision on July 31st. Can I make my drink and eat this now? Yes. No matter how you choose to celebrate and stream Schmodown Collision, Captain Morgan is best enjoyed responsibly. Captain's orders. What's up, y'all? I'm here with the den mother herself, Kate Mulligan. Kate, I'm so excited for you because you are so excited about your competitor, Saul. You've been backing him from the get. How are you feeling about his match today? I mean, we are, this is the element that we wanted Saul in. This is like, we could not be more excited. This is Saul. Listen, if he can do what he can do in the digital world, 
What is he about to do? What's the Saw show going to look like? So I'm so thrilled to get this opportunity. I'm so thrilled that we're here today. It's just so great also to be back. <laughs> right? But one thing that I think is so dope about you, Kate, was that a lot of people didn't believe in him. And you were like, no, I want Saul, and I'm going to make it happen. And now he's had an exceptional season. Yeah. Yeah. How has that like, been able to watch him and then be like, yeah, haters, look at this? Twir I twirl on those haters. I ride in the haters. No, um, I was going to say, thank you for letting me in twice during that. I have optimized. But no, I, listen, I saw something in Saul last year. I saw what he was able to do against Brandon Hannah. And I know he didn't win it. But I also, like, as I've said before, the best thing that could have happened was Saul didn't win that. Because Saul stayed alive. And there's nothing scarier than a person who feels like they have a, a name to avenge. They have like, you know, they have a, they, they want to, they, you know, they, they have something to prove. And Saul is somebody who was like, there's, I don't let this guy go. Not to mention, yeah, I don't think people know this. Other managers were sniffing around my Saul. I was like, I gotta get in when I can. If I had waited until my second round draft pick, not the one that I traded for, but my actual, he could have been gone by then. And I was like, that. And, for anybody who says I overpaid for Saul, I underpaid for Saul because I got him first in round two, and then he's gotten us two KOs. He's taken two points away from another team. He's given us eight points just in two matches. So, guess what? That was the steal of the year. Oh, grrr. <laughs> yeet, period. Yeet. Oh, I want to talk about the matchup between him and Amaru. They're arguably two of the hungriest players. Yes. They really, really want it. How are you feeling about that matchup with Saul? I think, listen, Amaru's a joke. Saul and I are not thinking of this as a joke. This is, he's, you know, all we can do is, is prep for this. And it's something, you know, Thomas Harper, who we're team to, but I'm um, affectionate to, has told us, like, it's not, it's not you versus the person, it's you versus the question. So we're just going to stay locked in. We're not going to worry about what Amaru's doing. We're not in control of that. We're worried about what Saul's doing today. What Saul's going to do today is dominate. And that's, that's all there is to it. I'm all about domination. I'm also all about, you're known to have somewhat of a personality. I mean, just here and there, um, some beef between some managers. Is there any manager or competitor that you're like, let's see what you do today? Uh, yeah, I mean, um, hmm, I'm going to have to think about this. Listen, what I'll say is that the dungeon needs to be determined. That's all I have to say. So, any any faction that's going to help me do that, let game on. Kaiser? Bye bye. Well, Kate, it's been an absolute pleasure as always. Good luck today, Queen. Thank you so much. I love you. Question like it's been a pleasure always. It's been like somewhat cool talking to you today. No, but really, it's always great talking to the one and only Kate Mulligan. Frank, back to you. I'm here with Sam Levine. You have a competitor here today, Amaru Moses. How excited are you to see him in a studio match as opposed to the digital space? Uh, I my levels of excitement cannot be contained today. Um, you know, in, in the poker world. Uh, there was this big boom in the poker world about 20 years ago now or so. And, uh, and so everyone started playing at home on their computers, you know. Right. The online poker was the big thing, you know, in the early 2000s. And then you had all these guys who made names for themselves playing online. And then they went and played in a real poker room in a casino in Vegas at the World Series. And they all flamed out. Because playing online and playing in person when you can see the other guy when you gotta cover up the sweat on your own brow at two totally different ball games. My boy, Amaru Moses, was built for studio matches. He is unshakable. And he is going to put on such a confident show out there. I, I've never been more confident about a player before a match, a first live match ever. Now, what, what goes into preparing someone like Amaru, who's a rookie, who's made it to this number one contender shot against Saul, who's in his second year, he's 2-1, and one, so he's had a couple good matches, he had early defeat uh, last year in his rookie showing, but he's you know, coming in here with a presence, I think, that people are, are wondering, how is that going to affect Amaru? How, how do you prepare Amaru for this type of setting? Um, I know you say he's built for this, yep. but how do you prepare someone for the first time? So, first thing, I never, ever underestimate any opponent, with the exception of uh, Bob Finstock. Uh, but with the, with the exception of that, I never underestimate an opponent, and so uh, Amaru and the suspects prepared for this match 
as if it were a title match against any of the IG greats. Martin Opic, Mike Kalinowski, Rachel Cushing, uh, uh, any of them. So he has put in the work. We have done so much study. We have done flashcards. I have, uh, you know, had someone throw uh, softballs at him, physical softballs at him, while he's trying to come up with answers, you know, of all the names of the Avengers. And uh, I'm telling you, the guy has put the work in, so now it's not about um, does he know it, does he not know it. He knows it. The question is, can he conjure it up fast enough to get the points? And I believe it. And now, obviously, in-studio matches, you're managing now, again, in studio. What's that going to be like for you as a manager as opposed to the digital space where everyone kind of hears what you're saying? What's that going to be like coming into studio where you can kind of confer with Amaru in a more a private setting, if you will? What's that going to be like for your managing aspect and, and how he works with that? The biggest change, honestly, is that I had to put on pants. And I'm not happy about it. Not at all. Um, with the exception of that, uh, probably the biggest change is, uh, frankly, that I'll be able to talk to him in confidence. Uh, I'll be able to approach him. We can step away from the, the microphones if need be. Uh, you know, if I want to tell him something that I'd rather wasn't broadcast out to the world, I can now. And I think that that's... I mean, I know a lot of the fans have uh, enjoyed seeing what the actual back and forth between managers and players has been, but the reality is, I think it's those have mostly been very different conversations than some of the conversations that would have been happening between players and managers if it were just between the two of them. Uh, so basically, I'm going to be telling him about tonight's lotto numbers and how much money I lost at the racetrack yesterday and that I need to stay with him. All right. Well, uh, before you know, we get you out of here, I'm wondering what other match tonight are you looking forward to besides the one you're managing? You know, you have Shazam and Corruption. That's a huge team's title match. There's Andrew DiMolanta taking on Laura Kelly for the Star Wars title. And then you have Kevin Smith and a normal contender shot in the singles division against Marisol McKee. Is there one of those that you're particularly more interested in? I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't think there were any other matches today. Uh, I, this is the only one that matters. So I... I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of a fan of Dogma, so I'd like to see that Kevin Smith match. That's Sam Levine managing Amaru Moses today in the number one contender match in the Inner Geekdom Division against Saul. Now we go back to Steph. Thanks, Frank. I'm here with Jillian Marie. You might know her or be acquainted with her from a certain point of view. Jillian, you've been to a ton of live shows. What are you excited about the collision? It's the build-up to spectacular, I feel like. And we have some incredible matches. We have Shazam Corruption. We have Kevin Smith and Lady Justice, Marisol McKee. Come on, that's going to be so much fun. We have Saul and Alma. And of course, we have the Star Wars match. How can we, you can, like, Zimbalanta and Laura Kelly? Wait, are you kidding me? We just got the rundown of the day from Jilly Marie. But seriously, I can't keep talking about each match in itself because it's so exciting when you're looking at the slate we have for today. Which match are you most excited to see what the results are? And where do you want the results to land? Corruption and Shazam, I think. I think that's going to be just straight insanity, straight fire. It's going to be craziness, and I'm so excited for it. I also know you're a huge Star Wars fan, like myself. So you've got to be excited about the Star Wars match coming up. Laura Kelly, girl, you know I always root for you and I'm pulling through for you on this one. It's going to be so much fun and I know she can do it and she's going to get that belt from her hands. It's so exciting to see someone like Laura Kelly who's been in the league, who's one of the most known, most reputable competitors ever competing in this title match and against Andrew Dillon Melanta, who is unbelievable. It's, I would not be surprised if we see another 51-50 this match. They're both so on top of their game. It's scary. It's it's scary to even think about how much these competitors know about Star Wars that I wouldn't even have thought about knowing. They're like, oh, just pulling it up from nowhere. And I'm right? I swear I've watched every movie so many times, but Jillian, one thing you might already know about me, I love the drama. When you're watching these matches, are you living for the drama or what are you living for? Give me that controversy. I love a match with a good controversy. I think maybe we could see that with Corruption and Shazam today. It's Corruption. Come on now. Like, you know there's going to be some kind of sassiness and attitude that comes from this game. I guess. Jillian, it's been so real to see you in person. Back to you, Frank. Here with Rachel Silvestrini. Rachel, good to see you. It's been so long since we've been in person. I want to ask you, what's it been like coming back 
to in-person studio tapings now that we're coming out of a little bit out of the digital age? Um, it's really emotional actually because before we were all together and you could interact with people and everybody felt the energy while you're competing and then we went digital and it was just you and your sweatpants and you know, your mom in the living room watching you going, go! Um, and so now we're all back together and you get to, it, like we haven't even started yet and you feel the energy. Yeah, that's all I ask you because there's a certain type of energy that comes with in-person live studio tapings or live events even as well, more so. Uh, now that we're here for Collision, we have, haven't had one since 2019. Um, is there any memory uh, of past collisions that come to mind that really stick out to you as something very memorable? Uh, I hate to say it, but don't tell Peter. It was such an emotional match just to begin with, and then for it to end that way, like, it was so heartbreaking. Kevin's such a big uh, friend of mine. Like, I just absolutely love him. And to see him go through that was just torture. It was a tough moment to watch, a very memorable moment. Uh, not in a great way for Smets, but he eventually did go on to win the belt. So, it, all, you know, it was fine after that. Uh, now that we're coming back into studio tapings and matches, What's it going to be like for you as a player to be in that environment once again as opposed to the digital space? There is nothing that competes with feeling the energy and knowing that people are rooting for you right like five feet away from you versus sitting in your room. Like it, It's such an event when you come to, to live tapings because from the moment you arrive, people are talking to you and building you up and asking questions and helping you study versus being at home. I mean, yes, you get to wear sweatpants, which is amazing, but like... It's, it's just so much more fun when you get to share it with people. Absolutely, that's a great point. And uh, you can really feel the energy here today with everyone seeing each other. Uh, it's been, so, been a while for some people, and uh, it's been really nice, and it's been great to see you. Good to see you too, Frank. I'm here with Amru Moses. Amru, drafted number two, 2-0. Everyone's looking at you. How are you feeling before this match? Um, I'm, I'm chill. I'm ready to go. Saul is a, a great competitor, but the I've had two matches already. So that pressure that everybody's been putting on me that I try not to put on myself, it's gone. I'm here. I'm, ha I'm ready to answer questions. And, and ready to go. It's gone. I love that. What I love about you is I love a rookie we can root for. Rookie season and you came in hot and ready and you did exactly what you needed to do, which was execute, execute on those two matches. Do you think the two matches in preparation got you more ready for this match at the Salt? Uh, for sure, for sure, because the first match, it was the one that, that got my like stumbles out of it. I was able to like recover when I didn't do well, and the next match was, Bruce was a, a really tough competitor. His knowledge, Saul's knowledge, kind of on the same level, so I know I can keep up with, with some of the best rookies now. Uh, keep up with one of the best veterans. What do you think you need to do? What's your focus today to come out with that dub? Uh, worry about me. Just worry about me. Worry about answering the question in front of me. Make sure uh, I play the game smart, play the game right, and don't worry about what he's doing on the other end. So. Amaru ain't worried about nothing but him. You've got to love that energy. When we're looking to the future, Chandru, Mike, is there any competitor that you would rather go against or rather see lose? Um, rather no, but just to like play Mike. Mike is Mike's a, Mike's a staple. So to be able to say I'm gonna play against the staples and you can see how I do against him, that would be dope. That would be amazing. Um, I I I'll play Tandrew, of course. I I'll teach him how to clap on the two on the board because the rhythm rhythm needs to work. Uh, I'm more worried about that uh, than the trivia. Uh, but for Mike, I he he be. Give me a drink. Drink. So, Amru, are you saying you bring the rhythm? Of course. All the time. All the time. Feel the rhythm, feel the ride, whatever that Cool Runnings line is. Cool Running, such a great movie. Amaru, I'm digging the entire energy you're putting down right now. I'm going to let you focus on today. It was great speaking to you, and we'll see you soon. Thank you so much. Frank, back to you. All right, I am here with video, Drew. Good to see you back in studio. What's it, what's it like coming back to in-studio matches now? You can breathe on me again. And uh, with with that, you know, what else might you be looking forward to in studio with babies? Oh, well, breathing on other people mainly, but then having them breathe on me and then possibly touching? Touching's good again. Right, right. Um, let me ask you about uh, collisions of past. What's been some of your 
uh, favorite moments from collisions, if any come to mind? Uh-huh. Yep. Uh, well, let's see. I, I got into one in 2019. I uh, settled that one out of court. was not my fault. That was somebody else. Uh, I got into one in 2020. That one possibly was my fault, but I don't remember it happening. So technically, that's a double jeopardy. So. Well, well, I was more talking about the Schmodown collision, you know, oh. the, the movie trivia Schmodown. Right, right. The, that collision matches. Uh -huh. Any come to mind uh, for you? Well, yeah, actually, the one with Dan Merle and Mark Riley, uh, the very first one, it was like I think a, tri a triple way threat. That was that was actually a pretty good that was a pretty good match. I mean, the energy in the room was really palpable. You could feel how much everybody was loving it. John Roca, third person, obviously, and I mean, yeah, I just I thought that was probably why I love Collision. Yeah, yeah. What was it about that match in particular that you know that really sticks with you? Because there's a lot of energy and a lot of uh, um, a lot of you know high level of play, what, what's, what about that match, you know, makes it so memorable for you? Let's just go back to step. What's up y'all, I'm with Sean, the Saint Sullivan. Sean, so good to see you. You obviously are a Star Wars competitor, and we have a great Star Wars match coming up with Laura Kelly and Andrew DeMaranta. How are you feeling about that matchup? Well, you know, at the start of the season in Corruption, we still had a lot of loyalty for uh, Laura. You know, she was one of us. We thought we were going to get her back, but her true colors have shown. And truth be told, none of us want anything to do with her. I'm pretty sure she's going down. Andrew's uh, whole attitude has changed since he's been part of Mercs. Um, I really like the positivity. I really like what we're seeing from him. And he played lights out against Alex twice in a row. There's no way he's losing for it. I know, it's quite the matchup. They both are so good, but this year, Andrew DeMolanta has really been ruling the Star Wars division. But let's talk about Corruption. Obviously, that's your team, and Corruption is here for a big matchup today against Shazam. Uh, what, are you, what are your thoughts about that? Well, I mean, look, Mike and Chance are setting constantly. I mean, uh, even before, leading up to this match right now, we've got questions coming in from Collins, questions coming in from Marisol, just prepping them over text, over you know, Snapchat, over voice call, whatever. They're constantly studying, they're still going. Um, I mean, I'm looking over, I see Chance just in the zone over there. They don't have the same pinpoint knowledge that Mike and Chance have. Same thing, I'm going like if you had one piece of advice for what you want to say to your teammates as they go into this match. Look, you guys have been here before. You know what you're doing. You don't need anything from me. You guys know what you're doing. You're fine. You got it. Well, Sean Sullivan, it's been absolutely groovy. We'll be right back. What an excellent pre-show that we have going on right now. And before we really get into the matches I did want to break down just a little bit exactly where we are with the factions with these players and how everything could shape out by the end of the event swag right now at seventh place with 16 points just ahead of them is the den with 31 points and they are tied with the usual suspects at 31 as well now they could all pick up some four points here and move up a little bit into the standings and make things a little bit interesting usual suspects have been on a run as of late winning a lot of their matches dropping a few but they did get a big win just the other day with lightning time and danger zone so that moves them up into competitive territory and maybe a little bit more by the end of today we'll have to wait and see when you have corruption here at 32 points at fourth place the quirky mercs here at third place with 38 points the quirky mercs have a potential for 20 big points today, and that could easily catapult them into first place. They have Andrew DiMolanta trying to defend against Laura Kelly. They have Kevin Smith trying to win a number contender match, and then obviously the big one, Shazam, trying to defend their belts against Corruption, Kalinowski, and Chance. So if they win all three of those matches, that's 20 points. Corruption, on the other hand, they have Marisol McKee trying to take out Kevin Smith and Corruption again with the Merc, so they could pick up a potential 11 points right there, and that could put them from 32 to 43 points. Wouldn't put them in first place, but would put them just behind the dungeon at 47 points, who are right now at the top of the board. Interesting thing here, the dungeon and the Finstock Exchange, they are nowhere to be seen right now in this event. They have to sit tight and watch everybody else play. If Corruption can hold back the Quirky Mercs, which is something I think the dungeon and the exchange would like to see, it's going to make the top of the table very, very tight and very competitive where no one's going to have a huge lead coming out of this event. But we all know what Corruption did last year in tournament season, and that's pretty much to help them win the faction title. 
If they can get themselves, corruption that is, in a position, whether in second or third place here, and then you get into tournament season, we could be looking at a repeat of faction champions for corruption. The Quirky Mercs are set up for a huge day today with their three matches. If they win any one of them, they're automatically going to be in second place. It just depends what the gap is going to be between the dungeon and the exchange. If they win all three matches, you're looking at a pretty substantial lead coming out of this event and the dungeon and the exchange, as well as Corruption, will be looking up at them heading into tournament season. Now, the Quirky Mercs, once they get into tournament season, particularly in singles, you would have to think Brendan Meyer and William Bibiani are going to do a lot of damage in that tournament. And if they go on runs like they did last year, they could extend that lead and fend off the dungeon, the exchange, or Corruption. By the end of this evening, the faction race will definitely have tightened up from perhaps a two-horse race many saw happening with the dungeon and the exchange, but consider the Quirky Mercs and Corruption officially challenging both of those factions for the faction title. Instead of a two-horse race, it's going to be a four-horse race, and perhaps even a five-horse race if the usual suspects get rolling here with a win today and onward through tournaments and the rest of the season. Collision is the mid-year event, and it's only just beginning. Starting off the event, we're going to have Andrew DiMolanta defending his title, which he's done already once against the vaunted Alex Damon. He's going to defend it against Laura Kelly. They've met before. They met in a Fatal 5-way back at Star Wars Celebration. They also met in a 1v1 match a few seasons ago. Now they are here playing for the actual title. DiMolanta has a fire in his eyes since he lost in last year's tournament that he would not be denied. And so far, he's made true on that. Looking a little deeper here at these individual players, let's start with Andrew DiMolanta, the reigning champion. He comes into this match with a 4-3 record with an accuracy rate of 94%. You look at his PPE rate, that means the possible points he's earned in his matches, he's at 91%, and he's averaging 33 points per game. Now, that's a little bit inflated with the 51-50 match he had against Alex Damon, an incredible legendary historic match that we saw uh, nearly at the beginning of the year just an incredible performance from both players going into sudden death the 5150 it's been become iconic now in Schmodown. then they had that rematch and it was another great rematch uh, which Andrew DiMolanta was somehow able to defend against Alex Damon, who had held the belt for so long, we didn't think he would ever lose the belt, let alone lose uh, a rematch against Andrew DiMolanta. Laura Kelly, on the other hand, not being able to rejoin with Corruption this year, is now over on Swag, and everyone was wondering how that's going to work out. Well, when you have the likes of Andres Cabrera, who is a former tournament champion from last year, helping you you know, get ready for this match, I expect to see a very deadly and poignant Laura Kelly come in here and really challenge Andrew DiMolanta just as the same way Alex Damon did. Again, could she be the first woman to hold the Star Wars belt? Laura Kelly comes in here with a 3-3 three and three record with an accuracy rate of 93% and her PPE rate, earning a possible 89, almost 90% of her points through her six matches. When you look at Laura Kelly and everything she did, she's on fire. She won 18 of 18 in that match against Molly Damon. Andrew DiMolanta trying to add another defense to his Star Wars reign. Alex Damon, Laura Kelly, I don't want to look too far ahead, but who could be next? Uh, I'm very excited to see this match go down. I fully expect a tight match, a competitive match, and an exciting match, and there's only one way to settle this and that's through brute force, and we'll see what both of these players can do. Next up after that match, we have a number one contender match in the inner geekdom division between Amaru Moses and Saul, or Saul Show. And this is an interesting matchup between a rookie and a second year player that is Saul. Amaru Moses, he comes in here with a 2-0 record, with an accuracy rate of nearly 83%, with a PPE rate of 75% as well, averaging almost 25 points through these two matches. And he has a bit of an interesting road where he's played two fellow rookies in Jesse Swift and Moose Haas. And he started off a little slow in that Jesse Swift match, didn't quite have the performance he was looking for. But in the Moose Haas match, you know, the one that didn't have the audio where we had the great commentary from Christian and Ellis, he bounced back in that match in a big way and put up a very good performance, elevating his accuracy rate, as I said, up to almost to 83%. And now he finds himself in a number one contenders match against Saul. Now, Saul was in the den last year. He's in the den now. And then Saul and Brandon Hanna ended up in a tournament match last year in which Brandon Hanna got the better of Saul to serve him up his first loss of his career. 
Saul's back here, came back with a vengeance, and he's rattled off two dominant wins, which he got knockouts over Greg Alba and John Humphrey, who had pretty solid showings in Intergeekdom Tournament last year. Now, Saul came in here with a bunch of vigor, a bunch of tenacity, a bunch of passion, and we see him right now at a career rate of 87% accuracy with a PPE rate of nearly 79%, averaging 21 points through his three matches thus far. He has a little bit more experience than Amaru in Inner Geekdom just by one match, but they both find themselves here on a big stage today. Whether or not they will be affected by these lights, the environment remains to be seen as, as they have only been playing in a digital format. Another big thing to look at in this match is their managers. Moses is managed by Sam Levine, a former champion of this league, whereas Saul is managed by Kate Mulligan. How both of these managers operate in a live setting. Now, Sam Levine, obviously no stranger to a live setting. Again, a champion, and he's been in this game for so long. Kate Mulligan, on the other hand, first time managing in a live situation. First time for Saul being in a live situation. How will they adapt to this setting? How will they work together in this setting? Will be, a, I think, a very interesting thing to keep note of and keep an eye on for this match. Sam Levine, he's been here, done that. And I think that's something that Amaru Moses can lean on heavily and have confidence in coming into this match, knowing that if anything goes sideways for him, he can always look to Sam Levine, which is not something that you can always do in the digital format. It's going to be a different energy in that room, be a different energy coming from these managers to those players, I would suspect. How have they been preparing for this moment as well with their players? There's a lot there to, I think, keep an eye on as the match unfolds. And we'll be curious to see if it does play into the match as well as it being a decider for the match. As we begin to get into the latter half of the event, we have Kevin Smith going up against Marisol McKee in a number one contenders match. Winner will go on to face either Dan Merle or Ethan Irwin for the singles title. There's a lot of hype behind Marisol McKee. Could she become the first woman since Clark Wolf to challenge for the singles belt? We're going to find out today because she's going up against Kevin Smith, who, who came into this league as the celebrity player, but he's proven himself to be much more than that. He's on a three-game win streak, and you can look at who he's played, but let me tell you how he's played. Kevin Smith has a 3-0 record, as I've stated, and he has an accuracy rate of 89.80%, practically 90%, with a PPE rate of almost 80% as well. And he's averaging 18 points per match coming into this match. There's not many players that have had three-game win streaks. He does join those ranks. And where his three-game win streak ranks right now is in the top 10 of three-game win streaks with an accuracy rate of, as I said, 89.80%. He's played... Chris Jericho. He's played Zavert and Flowers, and he's played Stacey Howard, and he's gotten better through each match, and he's played tougher competition, tougher play through each match. Marisol McKee is a different type of player that he has not encountered yet, and this will be a very telling and exciting match, I suspect, because Marisol McKee, she comes into this match with a 4-1 record, but currently on a 3-0 win streak as well. When you look at her win streak right now, she's answering 91.49% of her questions. That puts her in about the top five three-game win streaks of all time in the singles division. So right now we have two players playing at extremely high levels that have win streaks, three-game win streaks within the top 10 ranking of three-game win streaks. Marisol McKee, for a career at 4-1, has an accuracy rate of 89.74% with a PPE rate of 84% and averaging 21 points. Now, one of her most notable wins came recently against Janine the Machine. It was an incredible match where she had to go perfect. It was a tit-for-tat match, and there was a lot of emotion in this match. Personally, my favorite match of the year so far, just because of the level of play both of these players displayed. And Marisol is probably going to try and rectify some of these losses that Deception has had. Now she gets a chance here at potentially a singles title match if she's to defeat Kevin Smith, who will be no slouch as we've seen him run through categories in the second round like Whoopi Goldberg with seemingly ease. And it'll be interesting to see what these players put on the wheel. Now we know Marisol McKee is Lady Justice. You know, we have new categories out there, courtroom dramas, and as well as I think she's pretty good at Oscars and maybe even movie release dates. She did call out Ben Bateman one time on um, one of our after shows and saying that she would take on Ben Bateman anywhere, any place, a movie release date. So would she put that on the wheel. I'm very curious to find that out. And obviously with Kevin Smith, there is this whole thing of we have a Kevin Smith slice. Would he dare use it in a situation like this? We also have a Matt and Ben slice, a couple of buddies of his, obviously. So some of these newer slices, will he take advantage of those in a pretty big spot that could send him 
to a title match, which would be pretty amazing if you ask me, because again, he came in here with some celebrity status, but he's really turned himself into a bona fide movie trivia showdown pro. With her recent high accurate games, will Marisol McKee be able to keep up this torrid pace against Kevin Smith? All right here, this is the big one. This is Shazam versus Corruption for the team's title. Corruption trying to become a three-time champion. Shazam trying to defend this belt. Shazam comes into this match with a career record of 10 wins and just two losses, while Corruption, they come into this match with eight wins and three losses. Now let's talk about Shazam first. Again, 10 and two, they have a career accuracy rate of 91%. They have a career PPE percentage of 86% the highest that the league has ever seen. When you look at Corruption for their career, they have an accuracy rate of 84% and their PPE rate at 80%. Looking a little deeper for Shazam coming into this match, if we just look at their past two seasons, last season and this season, William Bibiani and Brendan Meyer have put up perfect rounds of plenty. William Bibiani has done it four times while Brendan Meyer has done it twice. And both times Brendan Meyer did it, he did it at the same time Bibbs did. So they have two double perfect first rounds in their past two seasons. You know, when you look at corruption these past two seasons, Chance Allison has been the only player for them to have a perfect first round with the bonus. What's interesting to note about Mike Kalinowski coming into this match, in particular when we look at the first round, Mike Kalinowski has not scored seven or more points in their last six team matches, which is kind of alarming when you contrast how well Shazam plays the first round where Bibiani and Meyer are seemingly putting up eight and nine points consistently. And that's something that can be a detriment to Corruption's game as evidence from their last meeting when they were down eight points to Shazam after that first round. When you look at Corruption and how they play their second rounds, they can be up and down. Shazam is very consistent when they play a second round. Their last two second rounds in their matches, they've gone perfect with the 12 points. Corruption, they did it once. Will they be able to do it again in this match where it probably will seem pivotal that they do just to maintain uh, pace with Shazam? As of note, they are coming off the very first perfect, perfect team title match when they played against the Odd Couple comprised of Jeff Snyder and Janine the Machine. Shazam didn't miss one question in that match. They didn't give up one point in that match as well. Very hard to replicate that performance coming into this match. Again, to do it twice, seemingly impossible. But if anyone could do it, it could be Shazam. Corruption, they have faced tumultuous odds time and time again. It's going to be very interesting how Corruption withstands Barrage from Shazam, which I do expect to happen. But I do expect Corruption to fight back because that's what they've done. That's how you become a two-time team's champion. Mike is a very well-rounded player. It just depends what question he gets, how deep it, it goes. But he does have a counterpart in Chance Ellison, who seemingly knows everything. Also very well-rounded and a great compliment to Mike. It's going to be a very interesting uh, event, a very interesting match, especially with all the emotions flying around. I think both of these teams, given their past history in that one match, Corruption's obviously going to want to play better than they did last time and obviously win the title. Shazam's going to want to keep up this torrid pace, and I think that's a pressure that no one's really talking about. Can they keep up this pace of answering at a high rate? I don't know, but if anyone can do it, it is Shazam, and if anyone can overcome it, it is Corruption. This is one of the biggest main events, I think, in the history of Shmodan Collision, and I'm very excited to watch it go down tonight. Well, there you go. That's a little bit of a deeper dive into where we are with the faction standings, with the players, with the teams, everything that is at stake here at today's Collision event, whether it's Shazam Corruption, whether it's Andrew DiMolanta trying to defend against Laura Kelly. We have an exciting match between Kevin Smith and Marisol McKee vying for a shot at that singles belt, and obviously Amaru Moses and Saul, two young players in Intergeekdom trying to stake their claim, and today it happens here at Collision. I'm very excited to see it go down. In the comments below let us know who you're in the comments below let us know who you're rooting for who you're gunning for and who do you want to win the faction championship this season a lot's going to happen here today will we have a new leader in the mercs in corruption who knows but i'm excited to find out and collision is right around the corner
So there you have it. Thank you, Frank Janish. Thank you, Steph Sabra. As you guys can tell, people are hyped. People are ready. People are ready to be back in studio. And not even in studio. People are ready for these digital matches. That Star Wars match between Dimolanta and Kelly. Kelly's beaten him before. Can she do it again? And look at the hot season that Dimolanta's having right now. And Kevin Smith, who would have thought that he would have been 3-0? He's way better than just good enough. He's got a shot at a title in only his second year. And speaking of second year, Marisol McKee, where she's at right now, what a superstar she is. If she wins here today, she will be the first woman to play for the singles championship since Clark Wolf in 2018. All of these things, plus the two matches, the Inner Geekdom match in studio and the main event, the team's match, Everybody is ready. You can feel it. You can tell. I can't wait to call it with Mark Ellis. So excited. Thank you once again to our sponsor, Captain Morgan, the original spiced rum. You see that clock? It's running out. My time's running out here. It's time for me to call a match, and it's time for you guys to watch the collision. Hey, everyone. I'm Jen Sturger, and welcome to the Movie Trivia Schmodown Collision. We are here in studio, in person, all together again. And I cannot tell you how amazing this feels. We've missed you guys so much. Today's event's gonna be a little bit different, you know? We're gonna do a little bit of a hybrid event for you because let's face it, we're not completely abandoning the digital side of this thing. So today, you're going to see two digital matches as well as two here in studio. We have two titles on the line and four amazing matches planned for you guys. So I guess the only question left to ask is, are you ready to schmo down? Did I do that right, guys? Darn it! Jen Sturger, and yes, the collision has begun. The Schmodown collision, it is back, it is here, and it is ready to go. What a hybrid event we have today. Starting out with a big digital match. Mark Ellis, this is the Star Wars Championship. This is the two best competitors in the Star Wars division at the moment, and it is also a massive, massive rematch between the challenger, Laura Lights Out Kelly, and the reigning movie trivia showdown Star Wars champion with one defense on his belt already. That is Andrew the Hunter Dimolanta. You said it, Christian. Two competitors, five rounds of trivia, and do some quick math. A lot of Star Wars questions from a galaxy far, far away, but here in front of your naked steaming eyeballs to kick off this collision. It is the hunter season so far, but Laura Kelly looking to turn the lights out on him and get her own belt in the world of Star Wars. What a massive match we're kicking off with, partner. It really is. And when you go back and just look at the journey of both of these competitors, they both debuted at Star Wars Celebration inside of the same match. Dimolanta was somewhat known because he was one of the first patrons to uh, come out and do a uh, an audition, and it, it was announced he was going to be there. Laura Kelly was pretty much picked out of obscurity and they're like well who's this well she does a star wars podcast is she any good boy was she she was so good that she showed up at the star wars title match that day and got a big standing like ovation from the crowd when she when she showed up she was shocked by it and she got a shot at alex damon at the time and the way she did it she defeated Andrew DeMolanta in order to do it. It was with a five-pointer. He just missed one from the Clone Wars. He's changed dramatically as a competitor. She has changed dramatically as a competitor. Managers have come and gone inside of both of these uh, competitors. And now DeMolanta with Koyji Andrew working very, very well. And it looks like Laura Kelly and Winston Marshall are on the same page. So this is a, this is a very interesting dynamic. And even though they have competed against each other before, it's a very different circumstance. It was a little bit of an asteroid field for Team Swag to maneuver early on in this season, but as Han Solo said, never tell me the odds. They're through it. They're out of that creature that tried to eat them that time, and they're chilling in Cloud City. Andrew DeMolanta, Laura Kelly. One tends more towards the Jedi. One leans towards the Sith. One laser focus and has a championship belt to show for it. The other enjoys a nice champagne after any of her many victories, and we're going to see a huge win today, Christian, not just in terms of the competitor and the pride in the belt, but also so in terms of faction standings, there's a lot of points on the line today. 
Well, Swag needs it uh, desperately. They know it. Winston Marshall knows it. He's he's he a bit of a struggle this year. They're in they're in trouble. They need big seven points here. This would be massive should they do it today. Plus the fact that Laura Kelly would become the first woman to ever win the Star Wars championship should he, she win here today. Um, so those big seven points now. Flip it over to the Mercs. The Mercs are playing for a lot of points. They've got these eight points on the line because of the defense. He already defended against Alex Damon. No one thought he would be able to beat Damon. He did that. No one thought he'd be able to defend against Damon. He did that. So he has an opportunity to get eight big points here. And the Mercs could get a total of eight points in this one. They could get four if Kevin Smith can do it. And they can pick up another eight if Shazam beats corruption tonight. So the Mercs are all in tonight. And this is going to be a uh, this. This is something. This is something indeed. So many points, so many personalities, and to go back to where it all started, we're going to need a flux capacitor and some gigawatts, or at least a really cool promo. Andrew Demolanta, who was a patron. Laura Kelly, who I found on Twitter. Somebody's got to take down Damon. It, it may not be me, it may not be Andrew, but it's, it's got to be somebody, and I'm excited to try. Hopefully we're the first of the new generation of Star Wars competitors, first of many. How do you prepare for Alex Damon? Oh, you don't. Uh, you just prepare yourself for slaughter. But you try really hard. <laughs> I still got Damon winning this one because I just don't think her confidence is there yet. Oh, I'm going to get annihilated. You can't go in that like that against a champion like that. 100% people tell you the other player's beating you, and you can beat them. I'm going, I'm going with her. I love an underdog. John did well earlier this year, but I think that Laura Kelly's a monster. I think this is the start of something new today. I, I see this as sort of the first stop on a tour on my uh, my road to revenge. Watching the way that she communicates with Shannon, she might have gone to the dark side. She scares the hell out of me, but it fits. This is one of the biggest upsets in Schmodown history, one of the biggest upsets in tournament history. He played a good game, he went perfect. I'm glad that I forced his hand in that matter. Next season, you two will play each other in a number one contender match. What is this? What's wrong, Andrew? Are you not ready to face me again? There is nothing I want more in this life than to see Alex Damon lose. So I very much am looking forward to whoever gets to him. Um, and if it's not this year, then maybe it'll be me next year. So I'm looking forward to it either way. Like we said, we haven't seen someone that can even come close to him at this point. No one's ever gonna beat Damon, ever. The first person to ever defeat the Demon one-on-one, -on -one, 51 to 50. Alex Damon defended the title four times in his span of the three-year run. Demolanto wants to do it this year. Beat Alex Damon once is some kind of feat. To do it twice, Demolanto does it. He retains the title and now has an opportunity to avenge his loss against Lights Out Laura Kelly at Collision. I'm not a fake champion. I am the champion. I'm the guy that you have to beat. Now.
should get you hyped up up because this is there's a lot of history between these two laura kelly has a victory over the champion you have to have confidence going into that however dimalant is also coming off of two victories back to back over the unbeatable alex damon so you've got to have a lot of confidence there and let's also not take away that laura kelly debuted in the first match of the season against molly damon and played perfect she looked absolutely unstoppable so these two titans of the star Star Wars division are about to battle and you know how it goes in the Star Wars division. You look at a match like Burkett and Gold uh, Burkett and um and Gold Leader. Burkett went perfect, but he went to multiple choice once and he lost. Like that's the kind of stuff you're dealing with in the Star Wars division. You can't miss up you can't mess up a letter, you can't miss up anything inside of it because if you do your opponent can pounce. It's a razor thin margin of error and of victory. And you and I, we're just treading water as Star Wars fans asking these questions. You ready to get going here, partner? I'm ready to get going. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie for the Star Wars Trivia Championship of the World. Introducing first, representing Swag, with a record of three wins, three defeats, the challenger, Laura. Laura lights out Kelly. She is the challenger. She is here. And Laura, as I mentioned coming into this, you do have a victory over Dimolanta. Do you hold a bit of a mental advantage going into this match? You know, that feels good just hearing you say it. It's just, you know, it's just a beautiful sound, really. Uh, but no, I don't think it's any kind of advantage. I think Andrew's a way different player than he was uh, last year, and I think that I'm also a different player, so I think this is going to be a whole new game. I'm barely thinking about uh, that last game that we played in the studio. It was um, it, it was definitely something. I, I don't think that the five-pointer is going to take him out this time, but we'll see. We'll see. You know, Laura, we've seen you compete fairly recently, and you were answering questions like your bullseye and womp rats and your T-16 back home, but at that time, it seemed like your standing with swag, or maybe swag standing with you, was a little precarious. Feels like we're on solid ground now. Does that give you an advantage going into this match as opposed to the last time we saw you compete? Uh, you know, I don't know if it's an advantage. It feels good. Last time it felt good. It was just, you know, it's it's always kind of fun just to get my anger on uh, with this. So I, I had a lot of fun um, getting to be, you know, sort of snippy with Winston. And I think he appreciated it. And then, you know, sort of taught me a lesson. So I think that we're certainly on the same page now. But in terms of how I'm approaching the game, nothing's changed. It's all the same for me. Well, we've definitely seen that, and I know that you've been saying no comment to this question that's been asked, but I have to try to ask. Anyway, um, there seems to be a, a relationship that is formed with you and our president, Grace Hancock. Uh, anything that she said to you before this match, anything in general that you'd want to share? Mm, you know, Grace has always been supportive, but I don't think that I need to elaborate beyond that. Fair enough. Well, good luck to you today. Laura Kelly, the challenger. She is ready and she will be facing the champion in just a moment. And her opponent representing the quirky Mercs with a record of four wins, three defeats. He is the reigning, defending, Undisputed movie trivia schmodown, Star Wars champion of the world, Andrew the Hunter. Dimalanta. Andrew the Hunter, Dimalanta, Andrew. Smile on the face, as there should be. What a year it has already been for you. Not only winning the championship against Alex Damon, defending the championship convincingly in your last match, 
now knowing in a short span of time that you're going for your second title defense against the competitor who beat you just a couple seasons ago, how much does that mean to you going into tonight's match? Uh, it means a lot if I can get a victory over somebody that's defeated me, but that's not the focus of today. The focus of today is answering questions and keeping the belt. So um, it, would it be nice to get a win today uh, over somebody like that? Absolutely, but that's not the revenge is not uh, something that's on my mind. You were very impressive in your initial win of that belt from Alex Damon, but I think a lot of people are talking about how you were able to defend it and Staying on top of the mountain is arguably just as, if not more difficult than it is getting there. So how do you stay on top again? What's the conversations between you and your manager, Corey Jandrew, been like? Uh, relax. Like, like every match uh, ever since I've gotten on the mark, just relax, have fun. You know what you know. Uh, things outside of those factors aren't going to like make things fall out of your head. Um, so just relax, have fun with it, and keep studying the way you've been studying because th that's that's all you can do. Well, you know, we also, this is something that you can answer later on down the line, obviously, but it doesn't get any easier should you defend here today. This is a question for both Laura Kelly and yourself. Um, Thomas Harper already winning that tournament. So is it a lot different now in Star Wars Division than it was a little while ago, knowing that you always have to stay fresh and knowing that even though, even if you should win here today, you, you've got another challenge right around the corner? I mean, yes and no. I mean, the biggest difference is is competing so much. I mean, even the season that me and Laura came in, it was like you compete once, maybe, and then you go for the title. Um, that's all you see. But it's been with la the last tournament last year. It was like, okay, we compete so often. I feel like I like I don't have time to relax ever <laughs> this season because it's like, all right, you got past one opponent, then you got to turn around in another month and defend it again. So. Uh, yes and no, but uh, I welcome it. it. It's always fun to compete in this, this uh, digital sport that we love so much. All right. Well, thank you, and and we will look forward to it in just a moment. Here we go. All right, Mark, our competitors have entered the virtual battlefield. Give us the rules around number one. Just about everything I've ever learned in my life has fallen out of my head, except for the rules of the Schmodown. And in round number one, this is Star Wars. So there's 10 questions from 10 different corners of the Schmodown galaxy. Each question is worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question, and there is no stealing. At least there isn't in round at number one. We'll ask the question. You have 15 seconds to write down your best attempt at an answer with whatever writing surface you prefer. Once we ask you by name or nickname, please show what you wrote to your camera at the same time you verbalize your attempt into the microphone. I'll remind each competitor, this is a five-round match. You still have your three usages of the JTE rule. That's your repeat. Not sure you heard a question right. You want to buy yourself another 15 seconds to summon that correct answer. Use your repeat. You also each have one challenge. You may utilize at any point throughout the five-round match. We'll bring in your manager. They'll deliberate. They'll delineate. They'll confirm. They'll ratify if said challenge is taking place. Christian, it's focus time once again. And, you know, it's the Star Wars division, and I think that's where we see the most focus. Absolutely, Mark. This is, you have to be, as we said, every single letter every single word counts and they have to be locked in all right so we ask the champion are you ready yes challenger are you ready are you ready christian i am and then let's get ready to schmodown ladies and gentlemen here we go five rounds for the star wars championship question number one here we go revenge of the sith what species of alien is the administrator Tion Medon, M-E-D-O-N, who is introduced in the film? And Mark Ellis is out. <laughs> as you see, we have to spell things because as soon as, because <laughs> instead of them correcting us, we get spelling. Oh, that's what you meant. Yeah. And yeah. five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, Andrew. Powen? Yes. And Laura? He's a Powan. Yes. All right. So they both get that one correct. And now we go to the next one. We progress to heroes and villains. The question, which Imperial officer said, we don't need that scum when the bounty hunters arrived in The Empire Strikes Back? Best Star Wars movie ever created. We don't need that scum. Something that Christian and I hear every time we enter a comedy club. Yep. Five. And they're right. Four. Or Denny's three, two, <laughs> one. Pens down, hands up, please. And now we start with Laura Kelly. That would be Piet. 
It would be. And Andrew. Piet. Yes. All right. Question number three. It's from the Rise of Skywalker. Which Star Wars legend has a brief cameo as Oma Tress, a bartender in the Spice Runner's Den? You know what I miss? I miss uh, Star oh, Wars it's... Celebration. Yeah, getting it back Me next too. year. Getting yeah. it back next year, special. I think it's transferred. Oh, good. Five. Ooh. Four. Three. Two. One. Hands down. Hands up, please. And we start with Andrew. John Williams. Yes. Laura. Yes, it was John Williams. Oh, I like the little musical note. All right. Yeah. Can't give an extra point, but in my mind, you get one. All right. Here is the next question mark. It's question four. <laughs> the Christian Harloff Mind Championship, something nobody wants to win. Trust me on that. No planets and locations is the next category. Your question for a point. What is the home world of the character Kiati Mundi? Well done. You like that? Yeah, I do. Yeah. The answer is not Los Angeles, but if we were asking about Nick Mundy, possibly. He might have moved too, didn't he? And he did. five. They want to give away his location. Four. There. <laughs> Three. Two. One. All right, pens down, hands up, please. And we're going to start with Laura Kelly. Syria? Yes. And Andrew? I spelled it Syria? Yes. All right, so there you go. And Syria is correct. And here is the next question. This is question five. Question five. Who said it? Who said it? Which villain said we were on verge of greatness? We were this close to providing peace and security for the galaxy. You know, this is how much we struggle in a franchise that we love. Can you imagine a Star Trek schmo now? Five, no, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, please. And we start with Andrew DeMolanta. Orson Krennic. Yes, Laura. Orson Krennic. Tie game, 5-5, five, five, as we get to question six. Evil guy named after a pig. Your next question is in the world of mixed bag. Could be anything, but chances are it's related to Star Wars. Here it is. Revenge of the Sith only received one Oscar nomination. In what category? Oh, that's a tough one. Yeah, that's <laughs> going back to the ceremony. I wonder who hosted the Oscars that year. Was it you? Might have been Steve oh, Martin. Five, four, three, Ellen? two, one. Pens down, hands up, please. And we start with Laura Kelly. I believe it was makeup. That is correct. And Andrew. Does it sound? All right. So Laura Kelly strikes first blood there. It is six, five, six, five. As we get to our next question, our next question. And here we go. This is question seven. The Phantom Menace. When Anakin meets Padme in Watto's shop on Tatooine, he says that he thinks he has lived there since he was how old? All right, so you're driving, car breaks down. You taking it to Watto's shop? Yeah, I would. I think yeah. he'd get it. He'd get it. Then he'd probably rip me off a little yeah, bit more. Yeah. Five, four, but he'd get it done. Three, yeah. two, uh, one. Hands down, hands up, please. And we start with. Andrew DeMolanta. Three years old. That's very good. That's terrible. <laughs> and Laura Kelly. <laughs> he was three, I think. Yes, you're right. Uh, so there we go. She asked my wife for her water depression. Seven, six. <laughs> She'll get her chance. Seven, six. <laughs> Seven, six. All right. So Laura Kelly up by one. Champion gets that one right. Here is the next question. Marcus, question eight. That's right. It's in the category. <laughs> <laughs> Vehicle. Oh! Weapons and technologies can't hit that level of the diaphragm anymore vehicles weapons and technology is a category and for a point what is the color of the lightsaber used by jedi master agen kolar during the battle of geonosis in attack of the clones man i uh, have not heard of this jedi. <laughs> I, you know, who knows you got a agen kolar impression yeah, five. Who am I? Four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up. We start with Laura Kelly. Please say blue. And it's incorrect. And Andrew. Oh, also said blue. 
No Mark perfect Blue and Revenge of the perfect. Sith. He has a different color in Attack of the Clone. That's Why? right. He does. Green. Ah, colors. Green is the color. All right. Please don't so... ask that question later. <laughs> so Laura Kelly, uh, still up by one because they both missed, but no perfect rounds in this one. And here is the next question. This is Return of the Jedi. What species is Salacious B. Crumb? I'm, I'm convinced they they know every answer. They just miss some occasionally to make us feel less feel bad about ourselves. True. Yep. And that one we I might have guessed wrong anyway. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Hands up, please. And we start with Andrew. It's a Kowakian monkey lizard. Yes. And Laura. Kowakian monkey lizard. All right. Look at that. So it's what eight. What are we seven. asking here? I know. It's what eight, are we <laughs> It's eight, seven. So... There are no perfect rounds. However, Laura Kelly is up by one over the champion. And we have our last question here. This is uh, question 10. It's in the category of Rogue One, a Star Wars story. The opening scene in which we meet Jyn Erso as a young girl takes place how many years before the main events of the film? And I have a uh, Kowakian monkey lizard about 30 pounds heavy snoring right over Yon. I didn't know JT was visiting. A Christian George. I'm just kidding. Christian George. Sorry. Five. Four. Repeat the question. First one. All right. It is the Rogue One, a Star Wars story category. The opening scene in which we meet Jen Erso as a young girl takes place how many years before the main events of the film? Monty using it. One JTE. And here is the countdown in five, four, three, Two, one, hands down, hands up, please. And we start with Laura Kelly. 13. That is incorrect. And Andrew? 10 years. Also incorrect. <laughs> Looking for 15 years before the main events of the film. 15. All right. So we are now, that is the end of round number one. So, Laura. Can I, Ke can I challenge? Is it too late to challenge? No, it you can not. challenge. You can still challenge. I'll yeah, um, I think Jin says it's 15 years at some point in the movie, but it's actually only 13. It was like it was a rounding number. So if you look at like when she was born and how old she's supposed to be in that scene. So we start with Laura Kelly. Laura Kelly has presented her argument. Winston, any uh, anything you want to say inside of that argument? I mean, I was going to do a Wado bit, but this is serious. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, so... I, I mean, I, I trust you on that. And as far as I know that there is a lot of that stuff at the beginning of the film that's kind of messed around with. Um, so I feel like that is a pretty solid challenge. Um, how sure of that do you do you feel that you want to push this just in case we like, need that challenge later? I'm pretty sure like, like Lyra died 13 years before the Battle of Yavin. And I'm, I'm pretty sure. sure that's I'm I'm fairly certain it's 13. Okay, I'm I'm here for it then. Uh, Koi looks like he wants to say the goal. Go ahead. Yeah, Koi. Uh, knows, so that's that's the challenge. So Koi, is your counter? Uh, my counter is just going to ask Andrew if there if he knows of an indiscrepancy and whether or not that. Well, is numbers also are numbers are weird with ages and stuff, especially between things, because some information says something and others others say the other. So it depends on what you're asking. And this is one of those situations. Where it's like eh, it could be ten, it could be fifteen, it could be thirteen. So it's just. One of those things. So in if regards to that, I would like us to look at the phrasing of the question, the specificity of the question versus yeah, the year. That's, that's all I ask. That's fair. All right. So, sure. so the arguments have been presented. Thank you to both the champion and challenger. Sincerely from my heart, from the way that you guys both presented it. Thank you. Very classy on both accounts. <laughs> so we are going You're welcome, to Christian. The day is young. I don't even know. Just, I don't even know that just, character's voice is good. Just, 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 it's a you sound like a character. Like, no, you sound like a Princess Bride character. All right. We're going to the challenge. We'll be right back. Hey, we're back. And we have the ruling of the question. And so the particular question that was challenged was the answer to the query. In the opening scene of Rogue One, we meet Jin as a young girl. It takes place how many years before the main events of the film? According to Wikipedia, the answer is, as we said, 15 years. However, according to fandom slash Wikipedia, yes, Wikipedia, it's a real thing, kids. Look it up. It does say 13 years later. And so 
by letter of the law, we do have to accept either 13 or 15 years as an answer. Therefore, the challenge is upheld and the point will be awarded to Lights Out Laura Kelly. All right. So with that, Laura Kelly does get the point there, finds herself with a two point lead going into round number two. So the score at the moment, Laura Kelly, nine, Andrew Dimolanta, seven. As we get into round number two, it is the wheel round. Mark, how does it go? It's the wheel of fate, doom and justice. The wheel is way far, far away. And so you're just going to spin it virtually with your Jedi or Sith powers. Once you do settle on a category, Five questions from that particular realm of Star Wars, Schmodown, Know How, Will Emerge. Each question's worth two points. There is no penalty for missing a question. However, stealing, yep, it's available in round number two. So if you're not sure of the answer, you can ask us for multiple choice. We're nice fellows. We'll give you four options, one of which we're pretty sure, we hope, is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question does drop down to one. Reminder to both competitors, even if it is not your turn fielding the questions, steal opportunities are allowed. And so please keep your hands where we can see them for the entire duration of round number two. Lights out, Laura Kelly. You have a two-point lead over the current champion of the world or the galaxy. Would you like to spin first or defer to your belted opponent? I would like to go first. Roger that. All right. So now you have 60 seconds to talk to Kelly starting now. Well done. Or Laura. That's fine. One of those. What's your last Great. name? No. <laughs> no, it's all, all it's all good. I'm going by by what Jedi Master Marshal from now on. That's how we doing this. All right, look. First of all, beast mode. That's how you that's how you roll. All right. Sometimes we get stupid questions that don't make no sense, and we miss those. We don't care about those because light table colors change. All right. But you know what we do? Otherwise, we hit every other question. We know about Oscars. We know how to challenge. We roll like G's, and that's exactly what you did. You dress like a boss and you know this and you answer like a boss because you know all this so let's spin this wheel answer every question and keep this going girl ah! sorry stepdad had a little bit too much ice cream before the match thank you all right here is the here is the wheel and here is the spin by the challenger all right and we'll make sure to get word from production just to be safe on what the final category that the Wheel of Destiny settles on. It does appear to be Rogue One. Back to Rogue One. So 60 seconds, hmm. Laura, to decide if you want to stick with Rogue One. Hmm. Obviously, you're going to know how you're feeling on the day. Uh, I mean, every time we've done this, you've been ace number one. You know what I'm saying? Just like it just lights out as your name implies. So how are you feeling today? You know, I like it. We kind of talked about what I wanted to avoid and, and right. what I would be fine with, and I, I think that this I think this works. Let's stick with it. Let's go. All right, Laura Kelly has chosen Rogue One, so she's going to get five questions in the realm of Rogue One. Laura, are you ready? I am ready. All right, here's question one. In Rogue One, on what planet does the film begin? Lamu. Correct. Two points. Question two. In Rogue One, what are Saw Guerrera's last words in the film? Save the rebellion, save the dream. That is correct. All right. Question three. What director has a cameo as the rebel soldier that pulls the lever that releases the Tantive Four from the belly of the Admiral, of Admiral Radis's ship. That would be Gareth Edwards. Three more points. Excuse me, two more points. That's question three. Question four. Take three. <laughs> Give you two. Take three points. <laughs> Here you go. Who plays Republic informant Tivik in Rogue One? Ooh, I got to go multiple choice on that. Is that A, Ben Daniels, B, Jordan Stevens, C, Daniel Mays, D, Nick Kellington? Let's go D. D is incorrect. Andrew, for the steal, who plays Republic informant Tivik in Rogue One? Is it A, Ben Daniels, B, Jordan Stevens, C, Daniel Mays, D, Nick Kellington? Daniel Mays. That is correct for one more point. Could be big. And now, Laura Kelly, here is your last question. What is the name of the popular gunner character affectionately dubbed the Space Monkey? Bistan. 
That is correct for two more points. So Laura Kelly only letting up one point, and it is a 17 to 8 game. And now we're going to drop Laura Kelly out and bring in Corey Shandry. Hey, man. So we talked about this mm -hmm. was either going to be a Demolant to Damon 1 or a Demolant to Damon 2. This is yep. exactly as we talked about how this was going to go, but I have a weird thing to say. You may be down right now, but I think this is the best you've ever played because you used a JTE perfectly. You also did the thing we talked about. That replay usage was incredible. It is right now about to be a more than tied game because you're about to get all these right. That steal was enormous. This is the scrap. This is Damon DiMolanta 2. This is how we expected this to go. But you're actually playing more consciously. We know the trivia is there. Now the skill is also there. How are you feeling, man? Feeling good. Um, rough start. I mean, that's the way it was last match. Uh, but staying focused, um, staying, my, keeping my eyes on the prize. I just really want to know um, how, many, how much time, time do we have? You got about 17 seconds. 17 seconds. How is Galaxy's Edge? I haven't been yet. Dude, it is life-changing. I get Star Wars now. Like, I actually understand your love of the fan. I was in a mm -hmm. Star Wars. Like, I got to experience. I want to talk to you way more now. We got to actually talk about it. I, I know, man. I've been, I've been in Orlando for and so many years. I haven't gone yet. Time. It changed my Time. life. I mean, frankly. Right, I mean, here's the wheel. And here is the spin. All right. So make sure we lock in something we're certain of. And we mm -hmm. got two spins for a reason. Also, remember, slowly but surely, plank through this and... At the end of the day, this is an incredible showing of how much you know, and it's about to further. And I'm glad you went second. How are you feeling? Ben, a minute, that? 60 seconds. Mm, I might as well take it. There's there's a couple of things on here that are like just so. I, yeah. I saw you get warmed up by knowing every single answer to her. So if your gut feels yep. good, let's go with it. Let's go with it. All right. So now Andrew DeMolanza will get five questions. Five questions out of the Phantom Menace. Mark. That's right. Although I was not verbally invited to Orlando to join Andrew and Coy, I felt invited. And so here are your five questions. In the world of the Phantom Menace for two points apiece, unless you need multiple choice, your first one. In the Phantom Menace, Anakin made Padme a necklace to remember him by that he carved out of a what? Chapur snippet. I, yeah. Two points for Andrew Demolanta. <laughs> He's two points closer to the lights out Laura Kelly's lead. Your next question for two more points. According to Qui-Gon Jinn, what can be a very powerful ally? Greed. That doesn't sound like him, but that is correct for two more points. All right, question three. Question three is once again in the world of the Phantom Menace. What is the name of the Trade Federation landing ships that went from Sakak to Naboo? C9979 landing craft. We're kidding with these, right? That's two more points, and that is correct. And Christian Demolanta, perfect through three. He has cut the lead of Lights Out to three points. He's got a chance to cut it to one with his penultimate question in the world of the Phantom Menace, and it is. What is the name of the Gungan band that helped celebrate the victory of the Battle of Naboo? Let's go multiple choice. All right, your four options for one point. Is it A, Augie and the Jazz Whalers, B, the Bonzo Dog Doodah Band, C, the Great Municipal Band, or D, the Great Gungan Marching Band? C. C is correct for a huge point there. Christian, I didn't say Led Zeppelin in any of those, but he still got it correct. And now Andrew DeMolanta has a chance to tie the lead with his final question in round number two in the category of The Phantom Menace. Here it is. What behind the scenes Main State Lucasfilm employee plays Bib Fortuna in The Phantom Menace? Matthew Wood. That is a two-point answer, and we got us a tied ball game at wow. 17. What a match already. <laughs> Only after round two, it is tied up. Andrew DiMolanto was down by two, but now finds himself all tied up with the challenger. 17-17 as we get into the third round. It is the betting round. The betting round works as thus. Buckle up your car seats and put the kids with the babysitter because we're heading to Vegas for one question. We're going to spin that wheel. It's tied, so technically it's going to be Andrew DeMolanta, the hunter spin. Once it settles on a category, one question will be asked to the field of competitors. Before we ask that question, once you do see what the wheel has spun, 
you're going to place a wager. You may place up to three points. You don't have to bet any points. You can also wager one or two. It's completely your option. If you get the ensuing question correct, you gain that many points. If you miss the question that follows, you lose that many points points you will be writing down this attempt at an answer so you have 15 seconds to do so christian it is the hunter who technically has the spin for the betting round will be the category the question emerges from then they'll talk to their managers looks like return of the jedi to me it is return of the jedi the greatest star wars film ever told 60 seconds Corey, starting now just like we talked about? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I think we go with what we talk about, and also we need to acknowledge that you tied it up just like we talked about seconds ago. We also need to talk about the use of Kylo Ren, I think really exceptionally elevates Rise, because there's an element to it that really makes you feel like you understand the sequel trilogy more by immersing you in a newer universe. So the expansiveness really enhances the galaxy. So I really thought that plus the scope of the ride altogether made me understand why the Zealous fandom. So when you come out here and we do with the belt parade around the entire arena of Batu, I'm very excited and I feel like we know our number. We feel confident in it. Yep. All okay, right. Let's go with it. Let's do it. Now we're going to bring in Swag. Seconds. Now, Laura, I know that you're very hungry, so I made you some pasta. So what would you like uh, to have uh, when you celebrate taking the belt away from Mr. DeMolanta? Celebration pasta. What's mm -hmm. on the menu? I mean, I'm... I was thinking maybe linguine, but penne wouldn't be bad either. Yeah, I think I... I think I'm gonna go with the penne. Mm. Mm, penne sounds very good. I will make you mm. some uh, some marinara for it. Okay, take me out, <laughs> Mr. Christian. I am done. Yeah, you're my friend, but thank God that's over. All right, so here we go. Uh, let's now. We got both the champion and the challenger in. On the count of three, we're gonna count down from three to one. Please put your number in the private chat. Are you both ready to do so? Yes. Here we here we are. Three, two, one. Great. No All right. So we have uh, both competitors have put in their number mark, and now we're going to get a question. Uh, here we go. All right. In Return of the Jedi, how many scout troopers are guarding the secret back entrance to the generator before Wicket leads them away? I, uh... I saw you smiling there when I was asking that Phantom Menace question. You, 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 you're, you're really, really good at this. Making it family friendly. Yes. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Hands up. We're going to start with the champion. How many points? Three. And you said? Four. Laura, how many points? Three. And you said? Four. Both correct. Three points. And the answer was indeed four. <laughs> 2020 as we get into the speed round it's round number four mark there's lightning in the distance and that because this round goes super fast 60 seconds for each of you to be exact that's why we call it the speed round in that 60 second window as many as 10 questions in the world of star wars will emerge you can answer them as fast or as slow as you want you get a point for every question you answer correctly However, you will lose a point for every question you answer incorrectly. There is another option. If I ask a question, you're not sure of the answer, you can simply say pass and we'll move on to the next question. Keep in mind, I will return to any questions that you initially said pass to, provided there is still time in the 60 second window. And because this is a virtual match, whoever is in the speed round first, the opposite competitor will be placed in another stream far, far away from this one so they cannot hear or see any of the questions being asked once that speed round is complete we'll switch places the competitor who just had the speed round will go chill in the other stream and we will complete the speed round as such christian it is andrew demolanta and laura kelly the hunter in lights out tied as many people probably could expect at 20 so it is up to the hunter sir would you like to have your speed round first or defer to your opponent I'm going to go second. All right. So we're going to bring Winston. Winston is here. And now, Winston, you have 60 seconds to talk to your competitor before she goes. Okay. No voices. No no sticks. Just straight advice and how we roll. You are playing an incredible game. You are playing your game. You are killing it. 
And when we come to the speed round, we've done these practices before. The biggest thing is make sure that you are focused on the answer that's there. If you're feeling any sort of type of way, let it play in your head, say pass, come back to it. You know what I'm saying? Keep that focus on if you can get it instantly, go for it. If you can't, give yourself that time to recall that information, okay? Feeling good? Yep. So Got this is one of those- Belly I'm in, let's do it. <laughs> so like I said, this is, a, this is one of those weird things that we've done this before. It's a mix of both taking your time and going at the same time. So find that balance and how to do that, okay? I will. All right, You're thank a rock you. star, go get him. Laura Kelly, are you prepared to enter the speed round? I'm ready. Then lights out, your speed round begins now. On what planet does Saw Gerrera die? Jetta. In how many films does the character Boba Fett appear? Pass. Angus McInnes plays which character in A New Hope? Gold Leader. What is the name of the Imperial Two Star Destroyer that deployed the probe droids? Pass. Who flies as Red Five during the Battle of Endor? Grizz Flit Fricks. Which bounty hunter watched the Boonta Eve classic from Beggar's Canyon? Aura Singh. In how many films does Yaddle appear on the Jedi Council? Two. In The Force Awakens, how much does Unkar Plot initially offer to pay for BB-8? 60 portions. Who voiced Babu Frick in The Rise of Skywalker? Shirley Henderson. How many people have directed a live action Star Wars movie? Pass. In how many films does the character Boba Fett appear? Three. What is the name of the Imperial Two Star Destroyer that deployed the probe droids? Time. Okay, that's time. Okay. All right. Thank you, Laura Kelly. All right. So Koi is now with Andrew DeMolanta, and you got 60 seconds starting now. Okay. You were already a Jedi Master before you became a quirky merc, but we can both agree things have evolved even beyond that. Oh, Between yeah. me and you going into Damon and you round one, I think you mastered the plank. I think you also learned how to enjoy the game. Now, what you've evolved most between one and two and today is you're really doing well with the replay. You're doing exceptionally versus that thing we talked about just today. I want you to focus on that in this speed round. If you don't know something, allow yourself to skip and come back. You are very good at finishing this in 30 seconds when you have 60. Use both plank and replay. You've mastered them both. Take your time, know how long that is, and make sure to use skips if you need them. How you feeling, man? Feeling good, feeling good. Um, just again, planking and replaying like we've discussed before, and um, just can't, yeah, just want to just trying to stay focused and not let the, what happened in the past, ma in past uh, rounds, I should say, um, affect what uh, you master a new skill every time, and you've mastered those first rounds. And I'm glad you took a moment, recalibrated. You're gonna own this, I have no doubt in my mind, dude. I'm so impressed, honestly. This is the best of you play, <laughs> okay? All right, Andrew, then with that, we are good to go. Are you ready for the speed round? Yes. The Hunter, your speed round begins now. On what planet does Saw Gerrera die? Jetta. In how many films does the character Boba Fett appear? Pass. Angus McGinn's plays which character in A New Hope? John Dutch Vander. What is the name of the Imperial Two Star Destroyer that helped deploy the probe droids? The Stalker. Who flies as Red Five during the Battle of Endor? Griggs, Gr uh, Grizz Frex. Which bounty hunter watched the Boonta Eve classic from Beggar's Canyon? Aura Singh. In how many films does Yaddle appear on the Jedi Council? One. In The Force Awakens, how much does Unkar Plot initially offer to pay for BB-8? 60 portions. Who voiced Babu Frick in The Rise of Skywalker? Shirley Henderson. How many people have directed live action Star Wars movies? Pass. In how many films does the character Boba Fett appear? Four. How many people have directed live action Star Wars movies? I'm. I am going to go over both competitors' speed rounds on what they got right and what they got wrong. We're going to start with the champion. First question, Jetta was correct. He answered correct. Second, four. How many? Boba Fett, correct. Uh, gold leader for Angus, correct. You got the question four wrong. The name of the ship was Avenger. You got that wrong for the Star Destroyer that just that deployed the probe droids. And he got Grizz Fricks, correct. Aura Singh, correct. How many films does Yaddle appear on Jedi Council? One. He got that correct. 
in the Force Awakens. How much does Uncar Plat initially offer to pay BB-8 plus one? Uh, he got that right for 60. Excuse me, 60. And Shirley Henderson, he got correct. He passed on question 10. So at the end of his round, 27 points for the champion. For the challenger, Jetta was correct. She answered incorrectly on Boba Fett. Minus one on that one. A gold leader was correct. Passed on the Avenger. Grizz Fricks, correct. Ara Singh, correct. She said Yaddle, she said two. I was incorrect. 60 was correct for Unkar Platt. Shirley Henderson was correct. Passed on the last one. So Laura Kelly has 24. So at the end of the round, the champion with 27. The challenger with 24. So the champion has a three point lead going into round number five all right can I, can, sorry, there are can no I challenges in the speed there are round. no challenges are you sure i no mean challenges in the speed round okay that's fine so here is the fifth and final round here is mark go ahead and the answer was seven for how many directors have done a live action star wars movie round number five this is the round that will determine the match unless we go to sudden death overtime don't worry we're prepared for that eventuality in the meantime this is round five it works like a normal round three except the stakes are much higher because a belt is on the line what we need from each competitor is a series of numbers these numbers correspond to a unique category of star wars movie trivia schmodown mystery your first question that we get from those numbers are two points your second question three points final one five big points your numerals that you choose may range from one to 20 again we need three from each of you there is no penalty for missing a question and there is no stealing in round number five andrew the hunter demolanta you had a speed round netting seven points total and so you have a three-point lead over lights out laura kelly you have the right to give us your three lucky numbers first from one to 20 what feels destined let's go 369 369 for the champion and for the challenger I'll do 5, 16, and 18. 5, 16, and 18 for the challenger. All right, 60 seconds starting now. We're ahead, but just like every other Star Wars we've ever done together, the points don't matter till the end. Up mm -hmm. until this is over, a two's line is anyway. We're just going to keep soldiering on. You're going to get all of these correct. How's your headspace, man? I'm loving how you're playing. <laughs> this is a rough one, man. I mean, they're throwing stuff at us that is just out of this world. It, I mean, hats off to the writers of this one. But um, staying focused, trying not to let myself get in my head. The only thing allowed in my head are Star Wars answers. So... Relaxing. I accept your pun. <laughs> I also would argue that everything has been a five-pointer, so it's only mm -hmm. going to be five-pointers going forward. So if you've gotten this many five-pointers, I want you to have that confidence. I don't mean to interrupt you, but I mm -hmm. see the, the wheels turning, and I know you got all these five-pointers. So the two, the three, and the five, we're going to count them all as fives because you know fives, bro. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want you to have that confidence I know yeah. you have. All right, thank you to Let's the Mercs. All right, 60-second Winston starting now. Hey. Speed round's gone. We're done with that. It's time to do this final round. It's time for us to crown the queen. All right? So I can't speak beyond, I can't put into words. I'm clearly struggling right now, how proud I am of you and everything you've done so far. Um, I've watched every time we've gotten to this final round in our practices, I've seen in matches, you are an absolute monster. You are unstoppable. So now's this time to focus in, focus up, tap into both the light and the dark side of the force here. Tap into all of the power that is at your disposal and handle business. This seconds. is your this is your day, Laura. It is nobody else's day but yours. You got this, girl. Hunting season's over. Let's do it. <laughs> all right. All right, so our competitors are here. And now we are going to start with Laura Kelly. Laura Kelly needs to hit her three-pointer in order to either jump it back or to tie it, should she miss the two. But here is the two-point question mark. She chose category five. That puts her in the land of droids. That's right, droids. Do you trust them? I'm not sure I do. But they are the subject of a two-point question now. This could pull you to within one of the Hunter's lead, Laura. And your question in the category of droids in Solo, A Star Wars Story, what's the name of Lando's co-pilot droid? L337. That's a two-pointer, and that's also correct. She is now within one of Demolanta's lead. 
She has to hit this in order to bounce it back to Andrew DeMolanta, so he has to start answering questions. She chose category 16. Category 16, and now that is the Empire Strikes Back. Okay, Laura, well, this is for the lead. To avoid a TKO at the hands of the hunter, your question. In the Empire Strikes Back, when Han tells Leia he's leaving on Hoth, where does he say they ran into a bounty hunter that changed his mind about staying? Ord Mantel. That he did, and with that, we have a new leader at the top of the board. It's Lights Out Laura Kelly, 29, Andrew Demolanta, the hunter, 27. And now, Christian, he's hunting for a tide ball game. All right, so Andrew DeMolanta now has to tie the game here with his two-point question, and he has Rogue One for Category 3. That's right. Hearing a lot about that movie in this match, and I'm a fan of it. So here's your two-point question to tie the lead of lights out, Andrew. Who composed the score for Rogue One? Michael Giacchino. Never know if it's Kino or Chino, but it's correct Kino. either way, and that is two points. Yep. It is 29 all. All right, so we're going to stick with Andrew DeMolanta, who's going to take to try to take a three-point, excuse me, three-point lead here should he hit this question. He chose category six. Category six is going to have who said it. Who, who said, said it? it? These are Star Wars quotes and Star Wars quotables. For a three-point lead and to force lights out to hit her five-pointer, Andrew, here's the question. Which original trilogy character says, I think we've got something, sir. The report is only a fragment from a probe droid in the Haas system, but it's the best lead we have. Admiral Piet. He is correct for three points, and Christian, that puts him on top by three. It does. So here's where we stand at the moment. Andrew DiMolanta up. 32, 32 to 29. So Laura Kelly needs to hit it. She hits it, bounces it back to Andrew and forces him to try to win it with a five. However, if she misses her five-point question, Andrew DeMolanta will defend the Star Wars championship. Laura Kelly, she chose category 18 for her five-point question mark. And that is The Force Awakens. The Force Awakens, Episode 7, the one that brought us all back to a galaxy far, far away. And now it's the subject of your five-pointer for the lead. Lights out, Laura Kelly. Your question is, in The Force Awakens, while on board the TIE Fighter, Poe tells Finn to use the toggle on the left switch between missiles, cannons, and what else? Mag pulses. That is correct, and it is now up to Andrew the Hunter Demolanta, Christian. It all comes down to this five-pointer he's got to have. So we are now at the five-point question. Andrew Demolanta with the five-point question. If he hits it, he is still the champion. However, if he misses, Laura Kelly will be the new Star Wars champion. All right. Here is the five-point question mark. It is have, category. Sorry. Yeah. I have two, two repeats, correct? You have two repeats left. Yes, you do. Okay. So you. here it is, Mark. He chose category nine. Category nine, vehicles, weapons, and technology. All those cool toys in the galaxy far, far away. Vehicles, weapons, and technology, Andrew, is all that stands between you and keeping that belt right where it currently rests. Your five-point question. To retain the belt as the Star Wars champion of the world, In episode one, The Phantom Menace, name the two pilots of the Radiant Seven. We need the first and last name. Maui Matacor and Antidar Williams. And your winner! And still! Yes! Movie trivia schmodown Star Wars! Andrew Dimolanta hits the five pointer. He hits the five point question and he remains <laughs> the champion. 
it was down to that five, just like it was all those years ago. But this it's time, repeating itself. Oh my the God. champion is defending for a Ooh. second time. For a second time, he is still the Star Wars champion, defeating Laura Lights Out. Kelly, what a match it was. 37-34. Big eight <laughs> points there to the Mercs. Congratulations, gentlemen, and we'll see you in just a moment. What a match it was, Mark. Wow. I mean, it, just when you think these things can't get any more intense and you think you might have an easy one, one of these things for the championship belt, I don't think you and I are ever going to have one of those just nice, relaxing Star Wars championship matches. And we don't want it any other way because it brings out the best in us, certainly the competitors, the managers, and you, the fans. What a treat for everyone in the Schmodown community. Andrew, the Hunter Demolanta fends off the mightiest of challenges from Laura lights out Kelly. She didn't win, but she should still feel free to pop some champagne because she played up to her namesake and Andrew Demolanta once again, worthy of the belt. That poor desk, Christian. I don't know. They can take much more of Andrew's fist going through. I don't know, but he, look, it, this is another defense. He's got, he's got two defenses already this year. He is yeah. looking, he wants to tie Alex Damon's record. Alex Damon had four. Well, he's, he's not two, he's two away and he's, and he's only five or six months into the season and he's two away from tying Alex Damon's record so and he's going to have an opportunity once again because he's right around the corner he's going to defend that belt now against Thomas Harper so this is uh the champion is earning it he is playing tremendously this season and he does a big big thing here today as he comes back it's all about that speed run but we're going to hear all about it because the champion is standing by with Jen Sturger, both he and Kojian. Hello. Oh, guys, if that desk was from Ikea, it would already be it broken is. by now. It is. Oh. It's actually, it's, 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 and it's actually on stands, too. That's so I'm surprised. That's more of a testament to your handiwork. Has, hashtag, I'm way. sorry, Desica. We've named her Desica. <laughs> oh, well, congratulations on a well fought victory today. Does it get old hearing your name announced and still? <sighs> It's it's nice to hear. I mean, it, it, that was a rough one. Like, I, I hats off to Laura for making me work for it because there were some questions in there that like threw me some for some loops in there. So, um, it, it's it's nice to to keep holding on to the belt, obviously, but um, it doesn't get any easier, as Christian said. And with a competitor like Laura Kelly, one that you've already obviously been defeated by once, was that lurking in the back of your mind at all? I, now, you can say it now. Okay. I mean, if you can look at my reaction, I, w I, I wish I had a better poker face, but I was I was really excited to get this win because, like, you know, I, I hate losing and, like, I'm a big, I'm, I'm, I'm really competitive. I get salty when I lose. And the last time we went up against each other, she's probably like, what a jerk. He's so mean. But, but yeah, it, it feels it feels good to to one up on somebody that that one up on you because you know competitive juices in me just just it just feels that way. I mean, what it came down to was the speed round. Do you feel like having been through it a couple of times now in these type of high pressure circumstances that that really played in your favor? Um, sometimes yeah, but the, in in this case yeah because there, again, like I said, there was a couple that threw me for a couple of loops. There's one or two in the speed round that I was like, oh, I was kind of nervous about, um, but it. This, this is a messy, 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 scrappy match for both of us because like, I, I really like seeing matches like this in the Star Wars vision, especially the back and forth. It feels more like the Schmodown, not, not like who's going to trip in a marathon. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it's the experience uh, should outrank anything, as one Star Wars uh, character says. But um, I don't well, like to let that get to my head because it's very easy to get complacent when you have the belt sitting next to you every single day. Um, and I felt like I did get a little complacent in this one. I, I felt a little, little too relaxed. It's I got to hit the books a little harder for, for the next one because whew, everybody's coming for it. Coy, let's talk about the impact Emelanta's had for the Mercs, uh, obviously picking up those eight points tonight. But let's see. You won and defended the title twice now. So that's what, 23 points? I'm bad at math. Sorry. I'm not good eight, at math six, either. Don't worry eight, about it. 16, 23 <laughs> sounds right to me. And I, I got to say, it's because of how well we work together. Not only does he know the information but every time we play it's a very different game and we predicted this one would be the closest to Demolanta Damon 2 but mm. we also had to adjust strategy multiple times in the game 60 seconds is not that much time to give a full hey recalibrate restructure and he took all of my notes both cryptic and linear we we got to talk about rise which we're going to do much more now that the stress is down it's incredible but it, it was actually every single thing we did was tactics we talked about before as well as our shorthand which has only evolved these things so 
I, I don't think I would be as good of a manager of a champion if he wasn't so receptive and if he wasn't so good at the game as well as the knowledge. And I really think we work well together. That's why we have these three wins because there is an inherent trust in the other and it changed with every round again. So listen, you don't really get to sit around and enjoy this win very long. No. Um, it's a little bit no. different now. Like you <laughs> yeah. said, like you were saying before the match even started, it's just that it's an entirely different division than it was when you initially joined the league. And so let's talk about it. You know, uh, Major Thomas Harper, he's next. You know, he won the first Star Wars tourney of this year. And let's face it, he's been hyped for a while now. Yeah. Are you watching this at all and getting a little sweaty or... <laughs> You know? I mean, if, if anybody can't watch that last tournament, can't watch these past any Star Wars matches and not be nervous when you go up against somebody um, in a Star Wars match, you're you're dumb. I mean, if you if you don't come in that thing in that way, you're going to you're going to lose. So you have to be prepared for anybody. You can't underestimate anybody. And Thomas is is, is just killing it. And, and uh, you know, there is a little little beef between us. He got drafted before me. I mean. A little bit of beef, but not a lot. I did but like, what I could. <laughs> but it's well deserved. Well deserved hype. Well deserved uh, um, just clout behind him because he's you know Dragon Con winner so many times and look what he did in the tournament beating Ace and Gold Leader and and uh, our guy uh, Eric Whiteley. So um, yeah, yeah. It's, forget yeah. being you know Dragon Con guy. This he might be a droid at this point, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure he's human. The way he answers his his character work and his ness is very mm -hmm. intimidatingly robotic. And I don't trust droids, as we learned today, not to. So frankly, I don't know how it's going to go. But there is, we, we don't have revenge. Jedi don't, when they change the title for a reason, we return. So it's not revenge we're seeking out because he beat Whiteley, but we will return and take him down. I have full faith in Dimolanta. It's happening. Well, congratulations on a fantastic victory today. Uh, best of luck on the, the upcoming yeah. rest of the season. Got a lot of homework. Laura, yeah. so sweaty, these palms. Oh, just, yeah, no, I, Laura. We leave, I just, that was insane. I've watched Hats so off many different Laura. matches, but there was nothing to prepare for that except for uh, what we did. But I just, man, and I, I hate beating Winston, but I love having the belt. So one of them yeah. had to win. Say what well, you will, yeah. Say what you will, but like Laura and I came in team to lead together, so we have that special kind of bond. But like, she's such an amazing competitor, and I love seeing, especially female competitors, not only in the Smodown, but in the, in the special divisions like 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 uh, Star Wars. So hats off to her for an incredible match. Well, congratulations again, gentlemen, and uh, I'll see you again soon. Classy words from a classy competitor, and obviously, all the respect in the world goes to. Um, Laura Kelly from Andrew de Milanta as she has defeated him once and then pushed him to the limit here, forcing him to hit that five to retain the championship. But he does it. He was just that quicker or that uh, and, and was able to report those two. It was those two questions in the speed round that gave him that swing. But he winds up winning the match here today, taking the victory and starting off a good start for the Mercs. That's a big eight points. And the Mercs needed that mark today. Yeah, and you know, you can really tell the confidence level of a Star Wars competitor during that betting round where right. I don't even know if Christian got to one when he had to count for them to put how many points they're going to bet in the private chat. It's three. It's three. Yep. And you just know that they're just so confident in themselves and their ability to answer Star Wars questions, whether it's on the flying to speed round or when they have a little bit of time to think about it and write down the answer. These are two lights out competitors Demolanta getting the win and retaining the belt today but laura kelly making yet another statement that she is one of the best we've ever seen in the world of star wars schmodown competition and so now for an interview with her and her manager of team swag winston marshall we turn it back over to the great jenster <sighs> sorry guys i always hate doing the second interview um because i like to be the one to be able to give hugs in studio and pep talks uh but it, it has to hurt, especially today, Laura, because you know you can defeat him. And today you just came up short. Yeah. I mean, I know I can defeat him because I've done it before and I will do it again. I'm I'm hell bent on it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's that's kind of where I'm at. But all in all, I'm I'm fairly pleased with how this went, to be honest. Winston? There isn't a competitor like... Laura Kelly in the Schmodown. Um, this woman is an absolute monster. Uh, the knowledge that she knows, the grace in which she carries herself through all of these moments, um, the willingness to help others, uh, what what she was doing to help Ace and even be there for Chandru as he's been preparing. Um, Laura Kelly is one of a kind. 
Um, and it's one of those things that like this really hurts because I've gotten this opportunity to meet a phenomenal woman that I call one of my dear friends. And so to be so close, um, it, it, it hurts, you know, but I remain so proud of her. And I know that it's only a matter of time before we come right back and we take what is rightfully ours because Laura has proven that she is a champion, that she is the queen of the Star Wars division and you will all bow down, period. You know, it's, Laura, it was a tough match today, but I feel like you you had it you had it underhand until you got to the speed round. So walk me through your head what was going through your mind that, that round. Mm, you know, I... I, I done a decent amount of practice and I felt pretty good of it pretty good about it going into it but I mean th that for me was that was the biggest uh oh it was always going to be the biggest challenge it was the biggest challenge in the last title match that I played and even in this different format it was still it was still a huge challenge I mean you talk about like the strategies that I had sort of had in mind came in handy but you know they can only come in handy to to some extent when the when the questions are as hard as they are and when you have to stop and think as much as you do. Um, that was a really challenging speed question. So yeah, I, I agree with Andrew and hats off to the writers, but also damn you. Uh, so <laughs> 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 yeah, but this, so that was, you know, it, it sucks, but it's just, you know, gonna be all about practice. And honestly, the last time I played in a title match, that was like the third match that I had ever played. <laughs> ever and in a way i sort of felt like i hadn't earned my spot there yet i didn't feel like i like deserved to be there Did this and match feel like you you kicked that imposter syndrome though yeah yeah i mean that was like the first time i'd had that in in the gameplay and that was the last time i had had it in the gameplay i haven't had it since but like i feel like you know this time i i feel like i earned my spot here i deserve to be here it you know i got to that place in my mind and that was really important um, and I was really unhappy with how the result ended in my last title match. I'm much happier with how this played. Um, my last title match, I missed the betting question, which just sucked. And today I hit it. So I I'm at least proud of that, even if the speed round didn't end up going my way. Winston, you're kind of in a similar position now that like Kaiser is in, in IG. You know, the second Star Wars tourney is only eight players, one person per faction. You have Ace, you have Laura. You know, any thought on who's going in yet? Battle to the death. Just battle to the death. That's how we, that's how we do it. I'll, I'll get them both in one room. I'll get two real lightsabers. Y'all just fight. That's it. That's that's how we solve that problem. Nobody's feelings are hurt because the best will be alive. And there you go. I don't know what's scaring me more. This suggestion or the fact that Laura's nodding in agreement. So yeah. I, I, guarantee, I guarantee you Ace who's watching this as well right now is like, yeah, I'm down. Like, I'm so here for this. Like. What what do you what do you want? Y'all y'all want like uh like like uh like wind tunnel guns that mimic telekinesis with the force? Like what do you want? Like we can make this the most real death battle ever. I'm so here for it. Yeah, I'm I'm I, down. I don't think we have that kind of insurance here, but uh <laughs> maybe like maybe a swag playoff. How about that? It's something I've thought about. I uh we'll have to talk about it. We'll have to see. Doesn't sound quite violent enough. Honestly, that's true. How about every time you get a question wrong, I get to cut off like a pinky or, a, or, or like a toe or something like that. That, that I think that works. Yeah. No, yeah. no, cool. I don't. I don't. You don't have to watch Jen. You can just close your eyes. Send Jessica. Jessica can handle it. She can do the interviews for it. And then we'll we'll, we'll handle our thing in swag. Don't even worry about it. Yeah, sure. I'll see what her schedule's like. All right. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> Tough loss today, Laura, uh, but always a pleasure watching you play. It's got some real. Um, it's got some major Rachel Cushing essence to it, you know, with a lot of Star Wars knowledge behind it. And I just, um, like I said, tough loss for you today, but I'm so thrilled to have someone like you representing us in the Schmodown, specifically in Star Wars. Thanks, Jen. It's always nice to talk to you. And uh, for the record, Andrew, I did think you were a jerk the last time we played, so good job. Okay, I was trying Jesus. to end that on a high note. All right, <laughs> back to the desk. <laughs> Ooh. Shots fired there by Laura Lights Out Kelly. Little shades of corruption there, taking a shot at the champion. But nonetheless, Andrew DeMolanta wins 37-34. He defends the championship successfully. 
That is big for the Mercs and a good start here. But we ain't done by a long shot partner. This is the digital side of things. Now we're going to go to the in studio portion of the show back to in studio. Yeah, we're there. Yeah, Jen Sturge is there. You want me to prove that Jen Sturge is there? Fine. Jen, take it away. All right, Schmodown Nation. I'm here with the guy that needs no, uh, literally a guy that needs no introduction. You see what I did there? Andrew, it's so good to see you. I got to I'm going to hug this out. Oh, good to see you too. Oh, it felt so good. You've been working out. <laughs> Anyways, it, it's obviously been so great seeing you behind the desk this season. What's the transition been like for you? Uh, you know, I I got to admit I was a little reluctant at the beginning. It seemed like Ben and I had a good thing going, but at the end of the day, Grace makes wonderful decisions. And I honestly am so grateful for her and her wherewithal, her presence of mind, and also just being able to kind of look into the future and know what's best for me. And yeah, it's been it's been really great. Yeah. So tell me, obviously, you've been around quite a bit and you've had a chance to see all of these competitors. How are you feeling about this upcoming Inner Geekdom match? Whew. Man, I mean, I, I got to admit, I have a brand new respect for IG. It wasn't like I didn't respect it before, but after even just trying to limp through pronunciations, I it's incredible to me. Both these guys have shown they know so much about this. I'm going to say that I'm going to go with Amaru only because the dude blew me away in the last match of his that I called. I thought he was going to lose that match. I, I'm sorry, dude. I really am. I had so much faith in your opponent after calling his first match, but... He proved me wrong. So as much as Saul has been a dominant force out there. And scary. And sc <laughs> scary. I'm like, are you sure you don't want to change your mind? He you might see should. this. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a great match. I hope they both play very well. <laughs> I hope both teams have fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. One of those type of yes, right? yes, yeah. Uh, is everything going okay, though? Like, honestly, like, you've seemed a little bit off, like, here and there, you know, nothing too crazy, but I just no. know, I know you, you know? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's like trying to figure out new shoes to fill right yeah. but uh anyway jess i gotta go they're calling me up to the desk it's, it's really good to see you have a good day guys um back to the desk collision in studio let's get it fam i'm ready i wouldn't get too comfortable fam have you been out here in 100 degree weather this whole time in a suit for hours uh, you, you've been waiting and I've been waiting, but you know what? You're gonna have to wait just a little bit longer. I'm sorry. And yeah, I've been here the whole time. I've been waiting a long time for this. This is gonna be a very special episode of The Soul Show. Sure, you're here, the beard's here, mm -hmm. apparently the suit is here, and not a drop of sweat, but that's fine. Look, I, 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 I'm ready to go get this title. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you're here for it. Yeah, I don't get hot, I get better. I think you're gonna learn that lesson when you're my very special guest on the next Soul Show. I'm looking forward to it. It's a good thing they build you up. It's people are gonna care more when I, you know, do what I'm gonna do to you. Do what you gotta do in the tournament, fam. Wow, what a match, and Woo! Dimolanta does it. Dimolanta keeps the championship. <laughs> Laura Kelly looked like she almost had it a few times there, but Dimolanta goes and keeps that championship, and now he hits that over for him. He's gotta go and defend against Thomas Harper, but man, what a match that was, Mark. No, not since the movie Network have I seen someone just bang on a desk so hard. Andrew Dimolanta's poor desk, but it's still holding that championship belt. Laura lights out, Kelly played fantastic, even in a losing effort, and I don't know who that idiot in an orange suit was, but man, is he handsome. It was a cute suit. So listen, this is, as the, Jen mentioned leading into this, it's now time for that Inner Geekdom number one contender yeah. match. You've got Amaru Moses, the number two overall draft pick, picked up by Sam Levine and the usual suspects, and he is going up against Saul. It has been the Saul show in his last two matches because he has taken out players like Greg Alba and John Humphreys, and he's done it by knockout. He has been fierce. He has been uh, just a, a terror. But Amaru Moses, you look what he did in his first match, uh, and then Swift, he struggled a little bit, but then he looked so good against Moose Haas. This is going to be something. I have assured Amaru Moses that he will actually have his audio plugged in for this match, and so we're going to get to hear 
hear his lovely voice, and as far as Saul, I'm still a little weary of the guy. I can't believe I'm going to be sharing a stage with him. He's intimidating. He's got those piercing eyes, like you don't know what he's going to do to you after the match, and so hopefully we at least get through the match, and then I'll just run to my car before he catches me. Yeah, there's a lot at stake, obviously, with both the usual suspects and the Den. They both want to get some points here. It's four points for the winner, plus a title shot. The winner will get the winner of Mike Kalinowski and Chandru Dondapani when that match happens, and you can get tickets for that match August 14th. Chandru versus Mike Kalinowski. With that, we're going to go to the promo to show you exactly how we got here today. Here we go. I knew my season was over after I lost to Brandon Hanna, but I, I, I was holding out hope. This will be my ascension. There will be no more doubts. There'll be no more, yeah, but I'm, I'm blowing the doors off the place. I do care. I care about this an awful lot. And if I'm going to care, I have to conduct myself differently. And I have to push myself harder. I'm not near my ceiling. I just got the rocket put on my back. And I'm going to show you my ceiling. And it's going to be a little while before you see it. But that is, that's, the, that's the trip I'm taking you on. The dividend checks are coming in soon. And they're going to be made of golden leather. That was the moment that it feels like you must have had to pick yourself back up from to bring the guy that we're seeing now. Talk to me about that journey. It starts there. How'd you get from there to here? It left a scar. It left a scar. It left some scar tissue. Um, and that, that acquainted me with a very lonely, dark feeling that I have no interest in ever meeting again. I feel fear all the time. I feel amazing amounts of fear leading up to this. And in the next match I play, I'll feel the same amount. Controlling that fear is how I'm able to do anything. Nothing spectacular to me happened here. I knew I was this good for a long time. I'm just glad some people maybe got a glimpse, a small glimpse of it, just getting back to the starting line with the rest of this division in that pursuit of uh, chasing whoever's wearing that belt. So you just tune in the next time, and then the next time, because I'll just keep showing up, and I'll be taking on whoever they put in front of me, and I'll be saying, yes, please, I'll have some more. You just sit down and enjoy the Saw Show, because that's what I'm doing. I'm giving you a show, and you deserve a better schmo now. And that schmo down is through my eyes. I want Ken Griffey Jr. I want Chris Bryant. And I want Amaru Moses on The Usual Suspects to win that inner geekdom belt. I'm, I'm low-key not happy about my performance, but I don't care because I got the win. <laughs> And I have 19 points in a bad game. And it's big for Amaru Moses. The kid was the number two draft pick overall. Can he advance and get to 2-0? Yeah, I want to smash that Moses punk. I know what he's doing. I invented the role he's failing at right now. What a family boy, Amaru. And you know what? Let's cut to the chase. Saul, you wanted me. You got me, fam. Saul is a beast of a man. He will intimidate others in terms of his personality. As I said, his anger gives me life. Uh, or he yells, or I smile uh, and laugh. <laughs> Collision to be fought in studio. Saul versus Amaru Moses. Saul, he's mad because he hasn't been allowed to answer a round three question yet. And you know what, bro? I got you. I've never been in a round three before. I might just wet my pants and run out of the room. You know, if you want to think, this guy can't possibly go three rounds because he's knocked people out. If that thought is honestly entertaining your head, I'm going to let it. I'm expecting a very intense and enjoyable match because when you're challenged, it just makes it more fun. We get to do this live and in person? That's my present to you, Saul. Let's give these fans what they came here to see. An absolute dominating performance. I'm hyped up, and how could you not be? Both these guys want it. They're both hungry. You got Amaru Moses, who's a rookie, who's got an opportunity as another rookie to get to that title match, and then Saul, who has just been on a terror. Whoever loses this match will go into the Inner Geekdom Tournament. We know that. But they don't want to go into the tournament. They want to get to that championship match. But Mark, 
I'm ready to go. How about you? I got my eye of the captain here, but when it comes to intergeekdom knowledge, we're merely first mates to these two fellas. All right, so things are going to be a little different here. We're going to await the arrival of our first competitor. Hit the music. You hear that music, Mark? That is the start. You know Amaru Moses yeah. is coming out here, and he is going to be led to the arena with Sam Levine, number one, number two draft pick overall. It's got to weigh inside of your confidence and everything else. Sam too. Levine has believed in this guy from day one. He was convinced he was the one that's going to bring the usual suspects to inner geekdom, stardom. And there is Amaru Moses. Sam Levine trailing him, looking confident as ever. Yeah, you see, look, I mean, this has got to be a big thing for this kid. You know, he comes in, he's, he's with family, he comes in, he goes 2 0 in digital, and now he makes the first season. He's the first in studio match. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing first with a record of two wins, no defeats, he is the Silent Assassin, Amaru Moses! Crowd lustily applauding for Amaru Moses. He looks primed and ready, Christian. He is ready to go, Mark, and as he should be, and now he just awaits his competitor, Saul. And you hear the music, that is Saul. This is a theme by David B. That it sounds he scarier. Could be, well, you know, amur has got that smile and Saul, not so much. Oh, I like that. Listen to that dirty guitar work. It could only mean a man. And there he is. There he is, there's, there's Saul. There's Saul, and he he's led by Kay Mulligan of the Dead. Fitting that she is the dead mother because he looks like Sabretooth. And his opponent with a record of two wins, one defeat, and two knockouts. This is oh! Oh, so oh, he's going for a hit. He, he took my mic. He Saul did grabbed not the take mic. my hand. He took my mic. Cut the music. Or I can do it to the music, whatever you want to do. Either way, I'm going to welcome everyone to the Soul Show. Very special guest this evening. Number two, Amaru. He comes all the way from the fan leagues. And he's going back all the way to the fan leagues. <laughs> We're going to have a hell of a show for you tonight. I guarantee it. He's going to try to help me out. I appreciate it, Mr. 30 Points. Wow, Saul oh, is opening up the Saul show here, and and we've got our competitor. So I ask you, Mark, you ready? I was ready, and then he took my mic. Now I have my mic back in my purse, and I am primed and pumped to go. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia. Division. All right, Mark, so please give us the rules of round number one. Oh, thank goodness for rules. In round number one, this is Inner Geekdom, meaning 10 questions will emerge from 10 different corners of Inner Geekdom know how. Each question is worth one point. There is no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing. At least there isn't in round number one. We'll ask the question. Competitors have 15 seconds to write down their best attempt at an answer with whatever whiteboard and writing service they prefer. Once we ask you by name or nickname, please show what you wrote to our cameras. There's so many of them here. To our incredible studio audience. And then also to the two announcers, including the hot one talking right now. I'll remind each competitor of your three usages of the JTE rule, named for famous Ewok JTE. If you need a repeat of a question, you just didn't hear it right, you want to buy yourself another 15 seconds, use a JTE rule. You also each have one challenge to be utilized at any point throughout the three-round match. We'll deliberate with managers, we'll hear arguments, and it will ultimately be your manager that confirms and ratifies if said challenge is taking place. All right, with that, I ask Saul, are you ready? Yeah. Amaru, are you ready? <laughs> yes, sir. Then let's get ready to Shmoda! Good crowd. Big crowd on hand for this gala event. All right, round number one, question number one. We are going to start in the realm of Superman. In which film does Clark Kent 
have an epic fight with an evil Superman in a junkyard. So you see, you know, the two of them both starting out, and they need something big here to hey, start out the first one. Hey, whose like glasses like came his specs. on? And five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, please. We start here with Saul. Superman 3. Yes, sir. Please show the camera as well. And Amaro? Superman 3. Got it. All right. So 1-1. One, one. All right. Next question. They're warmed up. Your next question is in the wizarding world of that kid. And your question for a point. Who plays the role of Letta Lestrange in Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald? Which you I love these. fell asleep during. Stop this. Great nap. Oh, yeah. One of the best naps I've ever had. Are you sure about that? I had a headache after this. Yeah. And five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up. This time we start with Amaru. Zoe Kravitz. Yes. Saul. Zoe Kravitz. Got it. All right. <laughs> Question three. We're going to go to the realm of swashbuckling adventure. In which film does Indiana Jones say... I don't know. I'm making this up as I go, just before embarking on a big chase. Uh, speaking of swashbucklers, yes. that Captain Morgan, huh? I like what you did He's there. A good, yeah. I really like that I a lot. I know how to tie stuff You're together. You're a smart person. I like I'm it. like the rug in Big Lebowski. I tie it all together. Nice. And five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up. We start with Saul this time. Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yes. Amru. Raiders of the Lost Ark. We're still tied up. Woo! All right. One gets a feeling we can just go right to sudden death, but I guess we'll honor the match. Your next category, Marvel films. And the question for a point. In how many films has Jaman Hunsu appeared as Korath in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? These two guys obviously playing for a shot at the inner geekdom title. Yeah, they want it bad, too. You can see in their eyeballs. And... Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up. We start with Amaru. Two. Yes, sir. And Saul. Three. All right, so Amaru gets first blood. Amaru gets first blood. There. Guardians of the Galaxy and Captain Marvel. That's right. All right, here is question five in the realm of TMNT. Would you just say what it stands for? No. And... <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles actor Elias Coteus plays which character in 1990s Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? You see, that's why I wait. <laughs> Was that so hard? No, because I got to it in the question itself. They don't know what that stands for. Well, they do now because I just said it. I've missed you. <laughs> and five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Hands up, please. And this time, we start with Saul. Casey Jones. Yes. And Amaru. Casey Jones. Amaru is still perfect. <laughs> Halfway Amaru. through round one, Amaru perfects all trails by one. Your next category, Alien and Predator. And the question. Which film in the Alien franchise features the characters Parker, Lambert, and Brett? Sounds like an interstellar law firm. Don't give any clues. <laughs> Is there a law from any of these movies? Maybe. And five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Hands up, please. And Amaru. Alien. Yes. Saul. Alien. That's correct. All right. So Amaru Moses at the moment is up by one, six, five as we get to question seven. That's comic book movies. What 2000s movie has the quote? None of you seem to understand. I'm not locked in here with you. You're locked in here with me. That is cool. It's a good yeah. <laughs> You like that line? I'd be terrified to be in a situation like that, but if I ever am, I'm stealing that. You're about to be the guy right next to you. He scares the crap out of me. Yeah. And five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, please. And we start with Saul. Watchmen. Yes. And Amaru. Watchman. Yup. Amaru looking good right now. Amaru looking good with a couple questions left to go. That's right. Three questions left in round one. Gentlemen, your eighth question is in the world of Jurassic Park. And the query for a point. 
Which Jurassic Park film features the supporting characters Vic Hoskins, Larry Crothers, and Simon Mazrani? I mean, you look at this, look how intense both these guys are. At the moment. I, I love a good locked-in trivia match, you know? They this are. Is, well, it means a lot. Stakes are high. Sport. First one ever. And five. They're athletes, too. Look at they them. They are. Four. Three. Two. One. Pens down. Hands up, please. And we start here with Amadou. Jurassic World. Yes. And Saul. Jurassic World. Got it. All right. So now question nine with Amaru with a one point lead. Fantasy sci-fi. The character Zach Taylor becomes what color ranger in the 2017 film Power Rangers? I mean, aren't these all kind of fantasy sci-fi questions? Uh, you know, think, you know, every question we've asked so far you think so? You qualifies. Can, well, I'm sure there'd be arguments or a challenge from somebody. <laughs> Who are you and talking about? Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, please. And salt. Blue. That is incorrect. And Amaru? Red. That is also incorrect. Looking for black. For black. That's a big miss for Amaru because now there's no perfect round on the table left. No, and it's still one point because Saul missed that one as well. But you're right. There's no chance for a perfect round here. But we get to the last question in round number one, Mark. That is in the world of Star Trek. And the question. Which hero in the Star Trek franchise said, the line must be drawn here, this far, no further, and I will make them pay for what they've done? Uh, which is a cool quote, but not as cool as the, uh, <laughs> I'm not locked in here with you. You're locked in here with me. That's a really good one. And That's five. Senior quote material. Four. <laughs> three. Two. Repeat the question. All right, first one. It's in the category of Star Trek. And the question, which hero in the Star Trek franchise said, the line must be drawn here. This far, no further, and I will make them pay for what they've done. So Amadou Moses uses his first JTE rule. Two left, Saul retains all of his. That's right. And we go with five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, please. We start with Amateur. James Kirk. That is incorrect. And Saul. Captain Kirk. Ah, we're correct. looking for Captain Picard. All right, so interesting enough, though, so they missed the same one. So Amadou still keeps his one point lead going into round number two. But right now, Mark. Amaru has eight, Saul with seven, and now the managers can, can come up and talk to their competitors as we get to the rules of round number two. Come on up, managers. It is the wheel round, the wheel of fate, doom, and justice, and good news, the physical wheel is back. We Woo! met its green room demands. The physical wheel is here in round number two. Each competitor gets a spin at that wheel. Once they settle on a category, five questions will emerge in that particular genre. Each question is worth two points. No penalty for missing a question. However, stealing is available in round number two. So if competitors aren't sure of the answer, you can ask us for multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question recedes to one. Once again, JTE rules and challenges still apply. And Christian, here's where we stand now. That physical wheel modeled by Alex Marzonio just so, is just perfect. And it's so good to see the physical wheel back. The first person who has an opportunity to spin that wheel is Amaru Moses because he finds himself leading by one. The question is, does he want to take that initiative or does he want to defer to his opponent? For that, we are going to ask Amaru, would you like to spin first or defer? Uh, I'm going to defer. He's, He's going to defer. defer. All right, okay. so we are going to have Saul. You're going to spin that wheel. And so Saul is on the wheel. He's going to give it a spin. And here we go. Round and round it goes. We asked him to spin it gingerly. And what was that? Planet of the Apes, he's keeping it. He's keeping Planet of the All Apes. All right, Planet of the Apes it is. He's going to keep it. So Saul will get five questions in the realm of Planet of the Apes. All right. All right, Saul spun Planet of the Apes, so he's going to get five questions. Saul, here you go. Here's your first question. Which Planet of the Apes film begins with the line, Beware the Beast Man? For he is the devil's pawn. Alone among God's primates, he kills for sport or lust or greed. Five. Four. Please repeat the question. First one. Okay. Which Planet of the Apes film begins with the line? 
Beware the beast man, for he is the devil's pawn. Alone among God's primates, he kills for sport or lust or greed. War for Planet of the Apes. It's incorrect. Amaru, I'm going to give you an opportunity here to steal. I will give you the question one more time. Which Planet of the Apes film begins with the line, Beware the beast man, for he is the devil's pawn. Alone among God's primates, he kills for sport or lust or greed. Beneath the Planet of the Apes. It's a big two-point steal for Amaru Moses. Wow, they had a planet beneath there? Two-point steal for Amaru as now Saul finds himself down by three. 10-7. Here is the second question for Saul. In Planet of the Apes 2001, what is the name of the first primate according to ape religion and prophecy? Multiple choice, please. Is it A, Simos, B, Cornelius, C, Zaius, D, Caesar? Simos. That is correct for one point. All right, Saul cuts the lead to two. He's got three questions remaining in the world of Planet of the Apes. Saul, which actress plays Cornelia, Caesar's wife, in Dawn of the Planet of the Apes? Five. Four. Multiple choice, please. Is it A, Michelle Monaghan? B, Kristen Malati? C, Judy Greer? D, Mandy Moore? C, Judy Greer. That's correct for one more point. All right, he's cut the lead to one. Now he's looking to veer ahead before his time is over in round two. Question four. In which film are apes waiters not given money for tips, but are instead given raisins? Conquest of the Planet of the Apes. For two points, Salt. That's big. <laughs> I'm giving raisins the next time I dine out. That's it. All right, your last, uh, last question here. Last question. Here it is. Who plays the role of circus owner Armando, who raised Caesar in Conquest of the Planet of the Apes? Ricardo Montalban. Two more points. So Saul recovers Big close from a there. tough start, but he finds himself up by three now as Amaru now gets to spin. All right, so the managers are going back up there, and here is Amaru Moses is going to now spin the wheel, and here's the spin. That's right. He deferred the spin initially. He let Saul go first, and that strategy seems to have played out. He only trails by three, and if the competitors would be so kind as to let us know which category he landed on, which one did we get? Choice, Spinner's choice. That could be anything. <laughs> True. It could be. Okay, who they knows? have 60 it's, seconds it's gonna, to deliberate. We don't need that. No. What do you got? Uh, graphic novels. Graphic novels. All right. Okay. So Amaru is going with graphic novels here. And Mark. All right. Okay. Uh, Amaru, you chose graphic novels. Unfortunately, it's a movie trivia show. So I have graphic novels adapted into movie trivia. I hope that works for you. Okay. That's fine. All right. Roger that. For two points, your first question of five, unless you need multiple choice. Which graphic novel adaptation begins with the line, Earth Before the War, New York Before I Was Born, a place I've only seen pictures of? Five, four, three. Repeat the question. Second one. All right, you have one JT remaining. Which graphic novel adaptation begins with the line, Earth Before the War, New York Before I Was Born, a place I've only seen pictures of? And five, four. Multiple choice. All right, for a point, your four options. Is it A, Oblivion, B, Watchmen, C, From Hell, or D, Cowboys and Aliens? Oblivion. Oblivion is correct for a point, and now it's a two-point lead for Saul as Amaru faces his second question in the world of graphic novel adaptations, and for two points. In the film Extraction, Amir Asif tells Farhad to cut off the body part as a present for him. Which body part? His finger. That is correct, and very scary for two points. We got a tied ball game. Three questions left for Moses, and the next one is... 
Which actor plays the role of Nabirius, a demon prince who poses as scientist Charles Wessex in I, Frankenstein? Bill Nighy. He's correct for two more points. Amaru seizes the lead as we now arrive at his penultimate question in the world of graphic novel adaptations for two points. Which actress plays a sex worker named Mary Kelly in the film From Hell? Heather Graham. Ed Helms' wife in the Hangover Movies is correct for two points. All right, so that was question four. So this is the final question. That's right. we got a four-point ball game right now. Moses already in the lead, looking to pad it going into the final round, round three. Your question, sir. In the film A History of Violence, Vigo Mortensen's character calls attention to himself by killing two armed robbers at what type of location? It's in his diner. That's exactly the word written there. That is two more points for Moses. Six-point lead over Saul going into round three. What a round it was by Amadou Moses. He sees himself up by six, and now round number three begins. Mark, what are the rules? That's right. Managers will reassure their competitors one more time as we head into the round that will determine the match, lest we go to sudden death overtime. In round number three, each competitor is going to face three questions. Your first question is worth two points. Next one worth three points. Your final question is worth five of possibly the biggest points of your career. How do we get those questions? Well, the competitor is going to give us a little hand. We need three integers from each of them. These numbers may range from 1 to 16. You may not pick the same numerals as your opponent because each one corresponds to a unique category of inner geekdom mystery. It will be Amaru Moses who gives us his points first. He only has one JTE rule remaining. Saul still retains two. They both still have their challenge. And so now managers retire after a rousing round of pep talks. And oh my god, they almost, almost came to blows. Almost, almost. I do not believe what I just saw. All right, so we start with Amaru Moses. Amaru, can we have your three numbers, please? 16, 10, 13. 16, 10, 13 by the silent assassin and for Saul. One, two, three. One, two, three for Saul. So Saul is going to try to avoid the TKO here, and he will be answering questions first. Saul, you have two remaining JTEs. And here is your first question, sir. You chose category one. That is going to put you, sir, in the realm of dystopian future and time travel. Dystopian future and time travel. Here is your two-point question. The character of Commander Locke, played by Harry Lennox, appears in which franchise? Five, four, three, two. Please repeat the question. Second one. He's got one JT will remain. The character of Commander Locke, played by Harry Lennox, appears in which franchise? The Matrix. That's correct for two points. Saul, big, big point. pull there. Big pull there. All right. So now with that, Saul hits it and finds himself now down by four. Still needs to hit this big three-point question. He can survive by hitting okay. the five, Christian, but you really don't want to only lead by one before Moses has even answered a question yet. That's right. So he chose category two. Alien and Predator is his three-point question. Here is his question. Saul, who plays the synthetic known as Ash in Alien? Ian Holm. Three points. It's so a tricky it, little curveball yeah. right there, and he knocked it out of the park. All right, so now Saul has to hit his five. Saul hits his five. It bounces back to Amaru. However, if Saul misses his five-pointer, Amaru and the usual suspects win via TKO, and Amaru goes on for that title shot. Saul, you chose category three. That gives you Batman films. Batman films. And here is your five-point question. Here it is. In which Batman film will you hear the line? One man is born a hero, his brother a coward. Babies starve, politicians grow fat, holy men are martyred, and junkies grow legion. Batman Returns. And you're!
ever. He was one movie away from it sequentially, from getting that answer oh. and forcing Amber to hit some questions. But as it stands, it is a TKO and a giant victory, not just for Amaru Moses, Christian, not just for the Schmodown being back, but the usual suspects, some much needed points. Guys, just to get some energy in the room, give it up for both competitors. That was an amazing match. And so good to be back in the studio. Amru, this is such a great way to kick off being back in the studio, especially because this is the first time you've been in the studio. Yeah. Um, it's been a crazy year because I, uh, first rookie off board, uh -huh. First match and first match back in studio and and I I have I've lived up to the quote unquote pressure that's been putting on me so I'm very happy to to be able to to be able to do that and deliver on that. Sam arms crossed over there feeling pretty good about himself. A lot of people were probably wondering what you were doing using your 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 pick for yeah exactly for a rookie. For a rookie yeah. And uh, he said he's, he's lived up to, no, he has exceeded the expectations and the pressure that was put on him at the start of the season. And I mean, I was so convinced that this young man right here absolutely would hold a belt in this league, no question about it. And he has been on that track and he is unstoppable. And I cannot tell you how proud I am of him, how hard he has worked, how hard the suspects have worked. And he is the fruits of that labor. And I'm so proud of this guy today. How does it feel playing underneath these lights? A little different from the Zoom, no? <laughs> oh, definitely, definitely different. But I've been, I've been touting it kind of all week since my last match. This is not my first time under the lights. I've answered questions before. This, this, it didn't phase me. It, it won't phase me if I, if I get another one. It's really just answer questions like I'm at home, and and that's what I did today. So. And the wheel obviously bestowed a little bit of luck on you as well. Feeling pretty good after that, I'm I sure. I mean, my first two <laughs> matches, I literally got the slices I did not want. I, I wanted every other one besides opponent's choice and whatever I got in the match. So it was nice to meet today. So th thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Don't thank her too quick. Trust me, she'll get you, she'll get you next time. So I know you guys are going to go and you're going to celebrate, obviously, and you're going to enjoy this moment. Uh, but that enjoyment's going to be a little brief. Because look, either way you look at it, you've got a mountain to climb and either Mike Kalinowski or Shandro, do you have a preference? Before I get into that, I, I gotta give it up to Saul. I know the man is gonna is is gonna be back. He's gonna be uh, whoever's in the tournament. I'm sorry, I, I apologize because because that man is coming. Um, I I don't have a preference per se, but if like Dream playing Mike, the man's a staple, and to be able to like put my knowledge up against a man who's been at it for years uh, would be just surreal. This is surreal, and that would be even more surreal. Um, but either one, I'm, I'm gonna be ready for. Absolutely, well, congratulations today, gentlemen. You deserve it. Go have fun, all right? Thank you, thank you. He was ready to play. He answered the questions as if he was at home, but he stayed in the pocket, and he was, and he didn't. He even when he missed a couple questions in the first round, he stayed focused. Yes, he got Spinner's Choice, and he was able. But you have to still answer your questions, and he did it. He picked Spinner's Choice. He picked the right category, and he looked solid. And as Sam said, he's exceeded expectations the way that he's played thus far, and he's also right because Saul's going to be angry. Saul's going to be angry, and I wouldn't say Saul looked phased or nervous at all today either. He just got a category that he spun Planet of the Apes. He looked confident. He got some tough questions, couldn't quite pull the five-pointer when he needed to most in round three. That guy is going to be back, and as a matter of fact, he's back in just a second because now Jen Sturger is going to interview him and his manager of the den, Kate Mulligan. I guess, guys, I have to start with the, the question that I'm sure everyone's wondering. You looked so confident when you, when you spun Planet of the Apes. What happened there? They, uh, they had these questions and I didn't know the answers to them. <laughs> <laughs> they do that from time to time. Yeah, I've, I've heard I've heard that's the case. Uh, I gotta ask you though, how did it feel playing underneath the lights versus playing at home, you know? Well, I had to wear pants this time, so that's a challenge in and on itself. But aside from that, it was, uh, it was, uh, it was exciting actually, it was very exciting. I mean, I feel like we, I don't, I don't know, I, you're actually very calm right now. I was expecting, you know, the Saul show. It became a little bit more of the Amaru's show, you know? I had a different approach for this match. Uh, in hindsight, probably not, uh, I made some mistakes that I thought they felt right at the time, but now in, with this hindsight, I know that uh, my preparation was not what it should have been. I'd altered it because of the logistical uh, issues with traveling and um, I, now I know better. 
Kate, you still, I, I feel like you're still so proud of this man, especially to come out and play in his first live event, you know, in front of a small crowd, you know, how are you feeling right now? I honestly, I, I, we knew that, listen, this was a big moment. We were going to be the first match back. We we're going to be the first, you know, live event back. But that being said, or not live, but taped event, there's, we don't lose today because he's about to go murder in the tournament. Yay. So to Woo. me, I feel like, you know, this, the, yes, this, this, the stakes of this were high, but at the same time, like, you know, he's, you know, Amr was going off to slaughter and we are going off to slaughter. You see what I did there? It's the same phrase, but he's going to do the slaughtering and he's going to be slaughtered. Okay. So I'm glad I could explain that. Thank you for coming to my Ted talk. I'm so glad you like really laid that out there for yeah, me. Yeah. So I guess last words for any of your competitors coming up in this tournament. I'm not going to be happy. Whoever I play, just know that. Yeah, that, I was going to say best case scenario actually today for the tournament is that Saul lost today. So then that fire is back. But I also have to say, I feel like there's this rhetoric surrounding Saul that like, oh, he's 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 uh, he's too intense. He's too this. This if he's this is what happens. If you if you try to take this man's intensity away, the winds go away. So we're bringing the intensity back. OK, we're going to come angry and that's how it's going to go. All right, well, come angry, just don't break anything. This place is expensive, all right? <laughs> no promises. Tough loss today, guys. All right, Mark, so you see, obviously, a disappointed Saul and, and the Den, but she is right. Not only is Saul going into the tournament now, he gets to face the hitman, Brandon Hanna, and you know that he wanted that match, and that match is going to happen now. So, yeah, obviously the disappointment goes there, but if you're Sam Levine and you are Amadou Moses at the moment, you got to be on cloud nine. This is a big – three wins. His first match against Jesse Swift, it was good, and even by his own admission, he said it wasn't my best game. He played very good against Moose. This – hands down his best game and you showed exactly why he was that number two pick. he was the three c's we talk about all the time cool calm collected yeah. i'll add a four c with the term captain because he certainly ran the ship here today he got the w he knows he's going to celebrate he knows he's going to have a good time but he also knows what is lurking ahead of him he got to a very high plateau defeating somebody on the caliber of saul now he's got to bring that blue flower to the top of the mountain to do the league of shadows and i'm losing my batman references here but the bottom line is mike kalnowski or chandra donapani is going to be in the top of that Hill. Yeah, but you also got to look at what Sam Levine's doing. And let's not forget, tomorrow, on August 1st, we are taping Irwin versus Merle. That's a championship match. That's a suspect's title match. Sam Levine, everyone's like, oh, the suspects are out of it. They're going for two yeah. titles. They got two championship shots right here. Sam Levine could have the singles champion of the world, and he could have the inner geekdom champion of the world, and he could do it pretty fast. So the usual suspects are absolutely playing hot right now, and that was a big win, and it showed Sam. Sam sometimes knows what he's doing. I'm going to pull a Dennis Nedry right now. You tell me the usual suspects are out of it. Usual suspects are out of uh, it. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Ah, ah, ah. Ah, ah, ah. And that's exactly what Amadou Moses did tonight. Ah, ah, ah. Because he was able to pull that, and because of it, now he is getting that title shot. But we're not done, not by a long shot. We have some more matches that are coming up, and there is a number one contender match coming up. You talk about that singles. Yeah, uh, Ethan Irwin. Dan Merle, they go at it. They play for the championship, but their route isn't over because as soon as one of those guys win, they got to play the winner of the next match, and that is Lady Justice, Marisol McKee against Kevin Goodenough-Smith. Number one contender match, and Mark, this match set up. You look at what happened with um, in the beginning of the season. Everyone's like, oh, Marisol, she's not going back to corruption. It's not going to happen, and Mulligan was able to pick Marisol up in free agency, trades her back to Corruption for three big picks. They both come out of it. Both the Den and Corruption come out of it good, but Marisol McKee has proven why that trade was good for Corruption as well. This is going to be a great match to watch. We filmed it digitally. It's about to be in front of your naked steaming eyeballs, and so no matter how you choose to celebrate the Schmodown and watching this match, pick up Captain Morgan, make your favorite beverage, but please do so responsibly. Captain's orders. All right, so thank you. And now we are going to throw back to Jen Sturger, who is with a very special guest. Jen? So, Ben, I got to ask you, like, you don't have a match today, Collision. Um, what are you doing here? <laughs> I mean, Jen, would you really expect me not to be here? It's the Schmodan Collision. I have some people to keep my eye on, you know? 
Uh, sure. Uh, obviously, you know, the upcoming match with Marisol and uh, Kevin Smith. You have any favorites in that match? I think this is the one where Marisol really gets tested. And I think it's totally reasonable to think that Kevin Smith might get very close to winning. Wow, really? For, uh, you seem oddly confident about this choice. Look, Marisol's a great player, but she's a young player. She's new to this league. She's had a lot of success very early. Let's be honest, Smith hasn't lost yet. He just hasn't lost a match yet. I think it's totally within the realm of possibility that Marisol could pull this off. She could get the win, but I also think it's very reasonable to think she could misstep. Smith could have a good day. Let's be honest, it's only, it's only three rounds. Anything can happen in three rounds. Usually just comes out of the five-pointer. Absolutely, and you're the man that knows about that. What's it been like? <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help myself. What's it been like? You know, this season, obviously, things are a little shaken up. You're playing with Dan Merle now. I mean, what's this whole transition been like for you now that I'm actually getting to talk to you in person? Yeah, well, you know, Mark Riley is a legend of the game and somebody who I have a tremendous amount of respect for as a player, somebody I enjoyed playing with. Uh, I skipped the next guy on the roster because I had no interest in playing with him, and I went straight to the greatest of all time. I just got to beat Roca twice, so that was great. Um, you can learn a lot from Dan Merle. I think he's the best for a reason. He carries himself a certain way, and uh, the journey I've been on in the Schmodown has taught me a lot. This is the final step in that journey, so I do expect to hold the singles belt again. Let's hope it's this season. But right now, I'm here to support Dan Merle. All right now, I'm here to support Dan to see what he can do, you know, how, how he fares against Ethan. You know, I was this close. We've heard me say that one before. And, uh, but, but, but we have a, a long season ahead of us, and I do expect to hold both belts. Well, um, good luck on your scouting expedition, I guess. Thanks, Jessica. I appreciate it. No one can get my name right. Anyways, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and send it back to the variants. We're going, we're going digital, guys. I just wanted to take a second to say thank you so much. And also, I know what you did. What, what did I do? Jay, you helped me out, man. Like a good manager would. You knew exactly what you were doing when you set Maris all up for success, and I couldn't be more grateful to you for it. You did that. I, I didn't, hold on a second. What are you doing? <laughs> that woman had ears everywhere. Grace, she, she isn't even here, Jay. You just don't know. It won't make to fly me crazy, okay? Look, okay. yes, I knew Marisol would win these things. I put everything in order for a reason. That happened. The change room thing. I got plans, okay? What more do you want from me? I want you to help me get Grace out of here for good. Wait, you want me to help you get rid of the woman that gave me this job and gives me W-2s that I get to file for taxes? Yeah, I do. I'm not saying yes to that. But I'm not saying no either. What I... Mm-hmm. This is too much. I, I'm a... Bye, Jay. <laughs> oh, yeah. We definitely got him. here it is the number one contender match in the singles division what an event we've had so far the collision has been fire so far and now mark we are getting to it it is the number one contender match for the singles championship marisol mckee lady justice four and one against kevin good enough smith 3-0 and two knockouts what a crazy crazy match it will be today. Christian, the singles division, the one that started it all way back in the 1800s, now has two competitors of unequaled potential because you look at Marisol McKee and her young career. She's already soaring with the Eagles high above the movie trivia schmodown landscape, but in her way to a championship is a Jersey devil whose movie trivia knowledge is so hellaciously deep, it reaches into the very fiery pits of hell itself. Will Kevin, good enough Smith, 
bare his tusks and get to the championship match? Or will it be the talons of the very symbol of Americana reaching that height? This is going to be a good one, partner. It's going to be a really good one because both of these competitors are red hot. You look at what Kevin Smith did as a rookie last year. He defeated both uh, Chris Jericho and Zaflirt and Flouse. And then he TKO'd not only Zaflirt and Flouse, Stacy Howard, which no one thought he was going to be able to do. Everyone's like, oh, okay, Kevin, he's a celebrity. He's not going to, he, he did fun in those first two. And then he got the Whoopi Goldberg category, and that's all she wrote. Well, I found himself at 3 0. Marisol McKee has been really, really working this. Remember, she started out against Vinny, and it was like, okay, it was a tough one. She got she got her victory, then vi video drew, and then Janine the Machine, one of the greatest matches we've seen in a very long time. But she's 4-1 and one right now. Should she win today, she will be the first woman to play for the singles championship since Clark Wolf in 2018. If Kevin wins here today, he'll be the first rookie to be 4-0 since I believe oh, Seth Collins was 7-0 last year, but another undefeated rookie going for, excuse me, for going for the championship. And it's just been so impressive to watch these two careers in the movie trivia showdown because when you talk about Lady Justice, you talk about someone who seems to play better when the pressure is greater. It's those three pointers, those five pointers that she always just seems to come up big in the clutch. But with Kevin Smith, look, he's used to ordering around people on set. He knows a thing or two about authority, and he is looking to drop the hammer on Lady Justice today. Well, we are going to see how both of our competitors got exactly where we are today. Here we go. I was so in the zone, so zen, so Jedi. It's an area that I can compete. Until Schmodown adds a physical challenge, I think I, I, think I got there. Kevin Smith is for real. Kevin Smith is for real. He didn't just beat the flirt and flouse. He didn't just beat Jericho. He beat Stacey Howard. I, I do know a thing or two about movies. That's where it all begins, because in order to become a director, you got to what? Love movies. Better and better with every match he plays. His record is now 3-0. and Not only do I think he's got a bright future as a director, as a Schmodown competitor, he is someone to be feared. Marisol McKee has been traded from the den to corruption. Welcome home, Lady Justice. You made it just in time for war. Lady Justice, how are you feeling after that win? I know there was a lot of hype about you. After today, I just want to let everybody know that the defense rests. Justice is here, and she's here to stay. Senor Smith, the court recognizes your unique body of work within the showdown, but you're a novelty that has passed its expiration date. On a great match, the video Drew picks up two points for Corruption. Starting the beginning of Corruption, she sees herself going to play. Janine, the machine, now she is three and one. Well, we had one mission today, specifically today, and that was justice for Dewberry. And, and like I said earlier, this was just the start of the justice train. This is gonna be a, a situation of two titans colliding with each other, and I'm ready to take it to the wire. And your winner, advancing to the that was a spectacular level match. You now have a number one contender match. A number one contender match. Let that sink in against Kevin Smith at Collision. Two years ago, you were a fan of Orlando. Now you're going up against Kevin Smith. You're the face Kevin Smith in the number yeah. one contender's match. I hope you enjoyed playing a few scrubs, because you're about to get a hard dose of reality. When you become nearly another notch on the ladies' gavel, the name of the game tonight is Destiny. Let's just face it, it's not Kevin Smith's destiny to be the next movie trivia showdown singles champion of the world. It is, however, Lady Justice's. I feel like I'm in my lane. I feel like I could get into a, a shot at the title. I have already coached a team to the belt. I have coached a Star Wars champion to the belt. He knows the game and he knows the trivia, and it's just a matter of when the next match is scheduled to make it happen. The man's getting the belt. I'm ready to be the first woman since the great Clyde Wolf to challenge for that singles belt. 
And it's fitting that I'm playing here today because I'm colliding all right with destiny. I mean, come on. I want I want to start watching. I want to I mean, it's almost like I wish we were just like sitting and watching this match, but hey, we got the best front row seat possible, partner. It's just going to be a good one. They both have knockout potential, which when they clash means we're probably going to be going the distance. This is going to be a fun one. For everybody watching out there, this is why we do events like the Collision. It's not because of Christian Knights, because we have talent in the form of Lady Justice, of Good Enough, and their managers, nothing to sneeze at either there, Christian. Not at all. This is a big match. Both Corruption and Quirky Mercs have a big amount of points on the board here today. We already saw those first two matches and the Star Wars match, and now there is this match. We are ready. Mark, are you ready? Like I said in the first match that we had in this suit, it feels tighter than it used to, so the quickest way to get me out of it is to start the match. Ladies and gentlemen, in the singles division introducing first representing the quirky mercs with a record of three wins no defeats and two knockouts he is Kevin Gooden of Good enough, Smith sporting the quirky Mercs Kevin Smith exclusive jersey available now on stores. Look at that. Unbelievable. Look at that quirky Merc. That is awesome, Kevin. From what you have done so far, dude, in this league, it has been so fun to watch. 3-0. and And I think that last match after you played Stacey Howard, did you see the Schmodown community go, oh, wait a minute. He's he, This guy really knows what the hell he's doing in this game. I felt acceptance for the first time anywhere. I'll be honest with you, not just here in the Schmodown, but like anywhere, I felt utter acceptance. Been in this business nearly 30 years, right? Never felt acceptance from the Hollywood community. Finally felt acceptance when I could put some wins on the board, man. But may come to an end today. Because when I was a kid, fortune teller told my parents, your son will rise like a phoenix until he slams into the portmanteau. And my whole life, I've been waiting to face the portmanteau that which would unseat me. And I don't know if you gentlemen know this, but Marisol is a portmanteau. It's putting together two words, man. It means sea and sun. So we're gonna see, son, that I might lose tonight. That's what I'm afraid of. I just know I am sipping on the wrong beverage right now. Kevin, let me take you back a few decades to when you're on the set of Clerks and you're making a movie, making your way in the world. If I had told that Kevin Smith that one day in 2021, you're going to be competing in movie trivia in front of a worldwide audience against the very concept of justice itself, what would you say to that? I, As a longtime Batman fan, I, I would say he's he's got to have to throw it. I can't stand for two things. I can't stand for winning and for justice. So unless I can justly win, I got to lay down my, I don't even have a crown yet. I got to lay down my hat. Well, speaking of the crown, though, number one contender match here, you know, you got an opportunity to go for the title should you win today. I know Shannon's been talking a lot of smack on it. You've been in the smack game already. You went against the flirt and flouse. You go against Shannon here, too. But going up, because I remember talking to you back in the day, you're like, look, man, I want a shot at the title. You're one step away, though. I know you're, you know, you know, you're taking Marisol seriously, but is the title shot in your second season something you're looking forward to trying to do? Um, I believe me, I would like to. It's it, it would definitely be um, something to kind of shape the next year uh, of my life, which right now is a bit amorphous. But you got to be real, man. Like sooner or later, you know, unless you're that football kid that keeps winning trophies. I don't watch sports, so I don't know his name. But unless you're that boy, you, you got to lose sooner or later. Unless you're Wayne Gretzky, there's something I can address. 
Um, sooner or later, you got to lose. And I feel like, I feel like, you know, my Cinderella story, you know, comes to a crashing halt tonight. I feel like Glass Slipper gets left on the stairs and Marisol picks it up and then puts it on and people are like, you only have one. And she's like, oh, I'll get the other. And then she, I don't remember the rest of the story. The metaphor fell apart. But I feel like tonight might be the night that my dreams come crashing to the earth. I'm sure Koi is just ecstatic to hear the, the confidence coming out of you. <laughs> Well, good luck to you, sir. And we are going to just bring in your opponent right now. And his opponent, representing corruption, with a record of four wins, one defeat, she is Lady Justice Marisol McKee. Lady Justice Marisol McKee, the brand new theme by David B. An epic theme at that, an epic entrance for an epic season thus far, Marisol. You have been playing really, really well, and now you play against Kevin Smith. You saw what he did against Stacey Howard. What and how have you been preparing for good enough? I've been approaching him like everybody else. And don't be fooled, okay? I'm not going to be swayed by this sudden humility and flattery by Smith's party over here. I know I'm dealing with someone with some, some, some ammunition, all right, behind those eyes, all right, as glazed over as they may be. I know, I know there's a killer lurking there. So the court is not fooled, the court is not swayed by this sudden humility. And that's how we've approached this from the get-go. And I'm ready to face him as a championship level opponent today. Because I know, you, know that. you mentioned championships and he ostensibly referenced the quarterback Tom Brady. You know something about beating Tom Brady in a big game. And so what is the strategy of beating Kevin Smith, a guy who you've probably been a fan of since you can remember, now you have to face him. So how does justice, how do you pound the gavel on someone who you've admired? Hmm. Remember that in front of the eyes of the court, everyone is equal, even esteemed directors. Um, and that's what, that's what I'm here to prove today, that everyone is equal and no one is above justice. So I think we can see a bunch of that today. I know we've um, been investigating um, Mr. Smith further. Um, I see all these KOs on his record and zero, zero losses and a lot of dominance. So I haven't mentioned this to him, but he should be aware that there is also an investigation into some clear performance enhancing substances that we think we're seeing on display. So he's not off the hook. I think you might actually just get video proof halfway through the match. So, all right. <laughs> I'm just, uh, I'm sorry, kids. I'm enjoying my last few moments of allowing my hands to be below the frame line because as we all know, at a certain point, it's all hands up so that you can't be cheating or anything like that. That's right. It's all hands up. Thank Fix you very everything much. Everything and I'm, I'm ready. My hands are ready to go. All right. So with that, the two competitors for the number one contender match in the singles division have entered. Mark, please tell us the rules around number one. The great Kevin Smith doing my PSAs for me. You see, Schmodown competitors, if Kevin Smith can keep his hands up, so can you. We now get to the rules of round number one. Eight questions from eight different categories of movie trivia Schmodown goodness. Each question is worth one point. There is no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing. At least there isn't in round number one. We'll ask the question, and the competitors have 15 seconds to write down your best attempt at an answer with whatever writing service you prefer. Once we ask you by name or nickname, please show what you wrote to your camera at the same time you verbalize your attempt into the microphone. Penmanship, spelling are forgiven. Eh, we'll look at everything else as it comes. And speaking of that, each competitor does have a challenge. They may issue at any point. We'll bring in managers, deliberate to our heart's content, and then it will ultimately be your manager that confirms and ratifies if said challenge is taking place. If you're not sure you heard a question right, you just want to buy yourself another 15 seconds to get that correct answer, use a JTE rule. You can also just simply say repeat. We'll repeat the question. You have three of those each throughout the duration of the three round match. Christian, it was all fun and games, and now I'm starting to see some focus. 
All right, so we start with Kevin Smith. Are you ready? I'm so prepared, sir, as ready as, as I can be. As we all know, Marisol is a shortened form of uh, Maria del Soledad, Mary of the Solitude. I went to Catholic school. I don't know if you guys know this or not. I never really mentioned it in my work. So, you know, I feel like I'm not just fighting Lady Justice, but perhaps the Virgin Mary herself. So I, I don't know if I could do this. Lady Justice, are you ready? Well, hold on to your butts, because court's in session, Smith. And let's get ready to schmodown. Round number one, category number one, and we are going to start in animated films. Ben Stiller voices Alex the Lion in which animated film franchise? So, so far... Marisol McKee, Kevin Smith. Question number one, we're underway, Mark. That's right. Animated movies. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, please. We start with Marisol. Madagascar. Yes, Kevin. Madagascar. All right, so Madagascar and is correct. One, one, as we get to question two. Once again, Lady Justice winning the war of handwriting, but it is one to one. Your next category is in the realm of mystery. These are mystery movies, not a mixed bag category. Your question for a point. In what comedic mystery film does Tim Curry say the line, we're trying to find out who killed him and where and with what? Let's see, even though there might be a little um, silliness going on, the intensity is there from both competitors. You think he's just acting humble, don't you? Yes. Five, <laughs> four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, and we start with Kevin. I have no clue. Yes, sir. And Marisol? Clue. We're tied up. Two, two, as we get to question three. We're going to go with new releases. Who directed Wonder Woman 1984? All right, Christian, if I tell you the year 1984, first thing that pops into your noggin, what do you got? Oh, it's, I'm talking about it too much. Temple of Doom. Mm, it's, you sure it's not a baby smoking a cigarette with a Van Halen? Red Dawn, maybe. Oh. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, please. Pens down, hands up, please. And we start with uh, Marisol. The great Patty Jenkins. Yes, Kevin. I hit a stoner moment, man. I hit a speed bump. Didn't uh, happen. Didn't happen. All right, so Marisol, Marisol goes up uh, by one here, three two, Marisol over Kevin Smith by one. As we get to question four, we move to a ceremony Kevin might have been invited to in the past. That is the Oscars, and for a I spoke too soon. Someday, kid. Someday we'll all get there. For a point, your question about the ceremony that we've all watched on TV at least. Who won the Best Actor Oscar as an elderly man struggling with dementia for the 2020 film? The father. So Marisol McKee strikes first blood here by one, as it is three to two. It's question number four. That's right. She's still in the running for that bonus question. Could be a bonus point. Could loom large later. Four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up. We start with Kevin. Anthony Hopkins, sir. Anthony Hopkins. Yes, sir. And Marisol McKee. Anthony Hopkins. Marisol has not missed. It is 4-3, so we have to question number five. We're going to go with dramas. Which actress starred in the films Notes on a Scandal, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, and Where Do You Go, Bernadette? These are three very uh, eclectic titles. Yeah. You know? Just shows the skill of this particular person. Uh, I see what you did. Yeah. Five. Four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, please. And we're going to start here with uh, Marisol McKee. Kate Blanchett. Yes, Kevin. Do we have to do last names? I said Kate. Yeah, I can't accept Kate. Uh, How many Kates are there in this business? C A T E. <laughs> Could be Kate Winslet. Could be Kate. That's K A T E. I said, How many C A T E's are? Would you like? Would you yeah. like? Do you want to challenge it? She's like Madonna. She's like Cher. Absolutely. Kate. You're going you're gonna to challenge that? Bring in the manager, and it will be the manager that decides if the challenge is going through. So, Coy? 
Well, you see, the thing about working in this town is there's a certain shorthand. And I imagine Kevin and Kate know one another. And the Kate in question is very clear with the C-A-T-E usage. I would argue it's a very specific name. And uh, Kate is the actor in play. So I, I think it stands. So you want to so you want to use that challenge, Koi? Okay. I... <laughs> okay, Koi's going to use the challenge. And Shannon, do you have a counter? Do I have a counter? Do I actually need to verbalize this counter? Are you all seeing what's happening here? You do need to you need to verbalize it if you want okay. to. Uh, number one, this isn't Hollywood Boulevard. Number two, this isn't a sound stage. This is the movie trivia showdown, and you need to have the full name. All right, fair enough. All right, so we're going to we're going to uh, get to the judges in just a moment. We will have the challenge banner. We'll be back in a moment. We're back, and we have the combination, although we don't have Koi Jandru. We did get his argument before we went to challenge, and the challenge will be ruled as thus. Upon a Google search of famous Kates, C-A-T-E-S, what comes up? Most popular breed of cats, the 10 most famous cats in history, and the 14 most badass cats in history. And so, Kate is a very unique name in Hollywood. However, we still needed a last name because as Shannon Barney, the Queen of Corruption did point out, we're not on Hollywood Boulevard, at least I am in the Valley. And so the challenge will be overruled. We will go with our original ruling and that is Marisol McKee gets the point. Kevin Smith does not. Kevin has lost his challenge and there are no challenges left for the Mercs. And now we get to the next question mark. That's question six. Hey, can I challenge the challenge? This does not say C-A-T-E-S, it says C-A-T-E, so the Google search could probably... All right, where's my gavel? Where's my gavel? No, no, you can't, you can't challenge the challenge. I'll, I'll, I'll say that. You can't I would think Lady Justice yeah. would be on my side. What does she not want to find out? What's the problem here? Why can't we just go a little deeper is all I'm saying. I'm not saying this is Arizona, but let's recount. <laughs> Yeah. All right, let's get, this is a kangaroo court. Uh, it, is, it is now 5-3. We're getting to the next one, and here we go. Here yeah, we, Smith, uh, Smith is correct. We're still waiting for some military and overseas ballots to come in, and maybe those are some famous Kates. But in the meantime, I do have good news, Kevin. Do you want to hear it? I, I, I need some at this point. I lost two direct, uh, the lady director question, and then the famous lady actress question, actor. I'm, I'm flailing here, obviously. I'm going to be canceled once this hits the internet so yes i need some good news well your good news is as follows your next category for a point is in the world of comedies i feel like i'm living in one right now but i'm ready <laughs> here's a question about another comedy and it is who stars as the alcoholic gunslinger the waco kid in mel brooks's blazing saddles so, so Christian, I, I don't hate the strategy for this reason. If if you're Kevin Smith, you gotta throw everything against the wall and leave it all out there on the court, even in the first round. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up. We start with Kevin on this one. Um Okay. <laughs> okay. Is Gene Wilder. Let's see the bottom. Well, just because I know it in my head, and just because <laughs> like my stoner body wrote Hackman, that that oh. doesn't, <laughs> that, doesn't count. that shouldn't count. I said Wilder, mm. but we can't accept it. You wrote it down. You wrote Dean Hackman down. So many it does, unfortunately. It lead. has to be written down in round number one. I will applaud you for being the first to put your hands up, as you've done for each and every question. This, <laughs> it was it was a good attempt. I like. I feel like I was in school at that point. I was a good teacher. Uh, and Marisol, I believe you were looking for Wilder. I was. I really was. <laughs> I was saying it. I just my hand wasn't writing it. I, boy, you, you know, kids, you why you can't watch the left hand without no knowing, knowing what the right hand's doing. One of those biblical things. This is one of those moments. I told you, Marisol. Well, it is six to three at the moment. Gene Hackman would have been an interesting choice in the film. However, it was Gene Wilder. And hey, he, he could have pulled it off. Gene Hackman's an all-time legend. 100%. All right, here is the... Uh, you would be so sickened by the confidence with which I wrote Hackman on that card. <laughs> I saw it. I saw it when you first heard it. You're like, I got this. I, uh, well, look. 
literally thought that in my head. I was like, this one I got. At least it was a gene we all know and not like your next door neighbor or something. I was also being such an ageist because I was like, there's no way this kid knows who Gene Hackman is. <laughs> <laughs> well, she got Gene Wilder as well. And here we go at question seven. It is action adventure. Which 2015 action comedy stars Melissa McCarthy, Jason Statham, and Jude Law? You know, sometimes you just have to go with the reverse. Like, for instance, what if we asked the question and we just said the first names of the three stars? <laughs> we like that. We got to start doing that, though. I and know. <laughs> five, four, three, two, one. And we're going to start with Lady Justice. This is a profession I'm sure you would excel at um, and be very subtle at, Kevin. It's a spy. Okay. Hey, Kevin. I spy the correct answer. That is correct. All right, so we have a 7-4 to four ball game at the moment. This is the eighth question in round one. Marisol McKee at the moment has not missed. Should she get this one, she will get a bonus question. Here is the question mark. Your final question in round number one for a point is in the category of movie quotes. These are things said in talking pictures. And the question, what Oscar winning film has the line, it's a hell of a thing killing a man, take away all he's got and all he's ever gonna have. And uh, speaking of, of killing Christian, currently I'm here, but in a couple hours, I'll be on stage in Seattle. You can still get tickets probably. Five, four, Three, I'm excited about that. Two, one. I can tell. Pens down, hands up, please. Pens down, hands up, please. And we're going to start with Kevin Smith. Total guess on this one, kids. I want Unforgiven. And you would be correct. And Marisol. Unforgiven. All right, so Marisol McKee hits a perfect round. So she will get the bonus question that Marisol, only you will have to answer. You don't have to write it down. You simply just have to answer it. Uh, here is the question. Which actress received Oscar nominations for her performances in the films Dangerous Liaisons, The Wife, and Hillbilly El Elgi? Elegy. Elegy, thank you. There you go. Perfect. I'm sure the film would have been well-received, if more well-received if it was called that. Mm -hmm. um, it is uh, Glenn Close. For one more point, a perfect round for Lady Justice and sees herself now 9-5 over Kevin Smith at the moment, 9-5. As we get into round number two, Mark, what are the rules? Yeah, not a lot of Glens with two ends running around Hollywood either. But the good news is that Gene Hackman was great in Unforgiven. I will certainly say what? that. So now we do progress to round number two. It's still only a four-point game for everybody watching at home and our competitors for that matter. Round number two is the real round where fortunes can change mighty quick. It is the wheel of fate, of doom, and yes, Marisol, of justice. You spin that wheel, you get four questions. Each question's worth two points. There is no penalty for missing a question. However, stealing, tomfoolery, shenanigans are available in round number two. So if you're not sure of the answer, you can ask us for multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which we're told by smart people is the answer. At that point, the value of the question recedes to one. Lady Justice, you are in control of the board. You have a four point lead over your opponent. Would you like to spin that wheel first or defer to Kevin something? Um, as courteous as I would like to be, um, I wanna go first. All right, Shannon, 60 seconds starting now. Marisol, do you know why Kirk is wearing a Bullwinkle hat and I'm wearing a crown? Tell me. That he's never gonna have? Because crowns belong with royalty and royalty is corruption, okay? Did he understand that? Does, does he, is he on the same planet as us? I don't know, I don't know. Um, excellent first round, absolutely excellent first round. I'm so glad that you were above his little head games and I mean, maybe it wasn't a head game, maybe he really, did just reach his full potential, which is really sad to see, you know? And, and I, I think he was invited to the Oscars as a, as a seat filler and, and that matters. That's important work. It's important work. It's very important work. So let's give the man his, his due credit later. Okay. For now, we're going to get that wheel up. We're going to hopefully spin something we love and we're going to increase this lead. How are you feeling? 10 seconds. I'm in agreement. I concur with everything you said. Um, this trial isn't over. So let's, <laughs> 
continue. Yes, All ma'am. Right. And now here is the wheel. The first spin by Lady Justice is away. Okay. Nice call. Obviously looking for a big spin here. Christian, I see courtroom movies on there. That's interesting. Well, she's going to land on the 80s. Mm -hmm. Got 60 seconds to decide. 60 seconds to decide. Hmm. I think I would say spin again. I'm not scared of it for you, but it is the entire 1980s, and I think that we can do better. What do you think? Yeah, um, I'm not I'm not scared of it, um, um, but I. it is broad, and, you know, age before beauty, I, I recognize I'm dealing with a gentleman who has lived well beyond my years, well beyond my years, and is probably far more familiar with this. Far beyond your years, yeah. Yeah, so I like things more. Um, so let's give it another spin. Let's see what happens. All right, so Marisol McKee spinning, and here it is. Here we go. And spinning away from a decade, and it's going to be Reese Witherspoon. Reese all right, Witherspoon. all three repeats. Challenge if you need it. Let's do it. Right. Let's go. All right, so we're going to get four questions in the realm of Reese Witherspoon, Lady Justice. Are you ready? Yes. Here we go. Reese Witherspoon plays Deputy District Attorney Penny Kimball in what 2014 film from director Paul Thomas Anderson? That would be Inherent Vice. Two points. What offbeat 1997 thriller? stars Reese Witherspoon as a teen who runs afoul of a killer played by Kiefer Sutherland. Multiple chase. Is it A, Fear, B, Best Laid Planes, C, Hideaway, D, Freeway? Freeway. It's correct for one more point. All right. Here is the next question. Which actress plays the title character opposite Reese Witherspoon in the 2006 romantic fantasy Penelope? Christina Ricci. Two more points. Marisol McKee having a really good round thus far. Yeah. And here is the fourth question. Final one. Reese Witherspoon. Stars in which 1993 live action Disney film about a group of teens who must trek across the African desert? Multiple chase. Is it A. Cheetah, B. A far off place, C. Shipwrecked, D. Far from home? And five. D, far from home. It is incorrect. Kevin, for the steal, I will read the question and the multiple choice answers. Reese Witherspoon stars in which 1993 live action Disney film about a group of teens who must trek across the African desert? Is it A, Cheetah, B, a far off place, C, shipwrecked, D, far from home? Cheetah, A. Hey. Also incorrect. Looking for a far off place. Far Ooh, off place. God, I second guessed myself. That was my original answer. <sighs> All right. So we at the moment, Marisol McKee picking up some points. 14 5. So a nine point lead over Kevin at the moment. And now Kevin will have the opportunity to spin. We're going to drop out Marisol and bring in Koi. All right, Koi, 60 seconds starting now. All right, man. So where we're at is I see it as she only has a one point lead because you're about to get eight points right here. Those points don't matter. We're going into this like it's tied. We're about to dive in and get eight points. We love this wheel. There's a lot for us on it. And the way I see it is year one was clerks, right? Impressed everybody. Everyone was going crazy. And then the beginning of this was mall rats, a very critically challenged film that didn't do as well as it should have, but then found redemption and is now getting a well-deserved sequel. Now is the time to make Chasing Amy. Now is the time for the comeback kid. Now is the time to get on the Criterion list. How you feeling, man? Uh, I feel good after that. That's a lot of Kevin Smith analogies, and I understood every single one of them. So I know exactly where I stand right now, man. Coy. All right. We're going to spin that. We're going to get Chasing Amy in our hearts. 
And now we bring up that wheel, and here is the spin by Kevin Smith. And we are underway with the spin. Round and round it goes. You just want to avoid opponent's choice. He got spinner's choice. choice. So spinner's okay. choice it is. So now the fates are going to smile on Kevin Smith. Spinner's choice. This, we've got a couple seconds to actually think about this. We want to go with the absolute most comfortable. Anything on that wheel whatsoever that feels like a must, that you feel like you're compelled to take on. I can't, I'm trying to read. Can we turn the wheel? Yeah, we got opponent's choice, Matt and Ben, young adult novel adaptation, remakes and reboot, 80s, Disney, Spitz Choice, Wizarding World, Action Adventure, Courtroom, Legal Thrillers, Reese Witherspoon, Bruce Willis. So I, I, would I would say between, between the 80s, 80s reboots and Matt and Ben, because it doesn't matter about her, it matters about us. I'm not saying anything she can't steal. I'm focused on where your head's at. What are you feeling lately? Um, I'm between courtroom dramas and 80s, but Matt and Ben seems like an obvious choice. 10 seconds. Uh, you know, you know the 80s well, and it's going to be a little broader. Go with your gut between those two. I say it's down to Matt and Ben in 80s, whatever you feel. Five, five, four. Matt and Ben. Matt and Ben it is. I think I'm playing this game all wrong, man. What's wrong? I knew, I knew a far off place. So, and, and I think picking Matt and Ben was a mistake, but let's go. I'm ready. I'm dialed in. I sometimes I've watched sporting events every once in a while where you see like a player just spiral and you're like, how does it happen? It's happening. Well, here is the four questions from Matt and Ben. Here is the category. First time I believe the category has been used, and here we go. That's right. Category is Matt and Ben. These are famous Matt's and Ben's. And your first question. For two points, before playing Batman, Ben Affleck had portrayed what other comic book superhero? Daredevil. Two points, and Kevin Smith is on the board in round number two. We chugle to the next question for two more points. Which actress co-stars with Matt Damon in the film We Bought a Zoo as the lead zookeeper, Kelly Foster? Scarlett Johansson. He's getting even last names now, Christian. He's starting to feel it. That is two more points. Kevin Smith, perfect through two. His penultimate question in the category of Matt and Ben is... How many Oscars has Matt Damon won? One. He's perfect through three, Christian, and this is the comeback that Coy Jandrew had predicted for his slightly less confident competitor. Six points so far to make it a perfect eight points in round number two. Here is his final question. Good enough, Smith. What is the first film? that featured Matt Damon and Ben Affleck in the same cast. School ties. He went perfect on his spinner's choice wedge of Matt and Ben, and it is a brand new ball game now, Christian, because it is 14 for Lady Justice, 13 for Good Enough Smith. We got a pretty clean slate here. We have a very clean slate. It's a one point ball game going into the third and final round. Mark, what are the rules for round number three? Round number three, this is the round that will determine the match. Unless we go to sudden death overtime, which we're pretty prepared for. And so what we need from each competitor in round number three is a series of numbers. These numbers may range from one to 20. Each numeral corresponds to a unique category of movie, trivia, schmodown, mystery. Your first question is going to be worth two points. Your next one is worth three points. Your final question is worth five big points. There's no penalty for missing a question, and there is no stealing in round number three. Lady Justice, it was a big lead, and now it's a one-point lead, but you still retain control of the board, and you have the right to give us your three lucky numbers first. From one to 20, what feels fortunate? Hmm. Let's start with eight. Let's go with 14. And let's end with four. Eight, 14, and four for Marisol and for Kevin. Um, uh, Three, seven, and 16. Three, seven, and 16 for good enough. 60 seconds, Shannon, starting now. All right. Not a bad place to be. A one-point lead is a one-point lead, all right? So I need you to clear your head. 
I need you to relax and focus because you got three questions more than likely coming your way. The good news is you are so strong in round three that I fully believe that if you have to answer all three of these questions, you're going to do it with no problem. Okay. You have all of your repeats. You have your challenge. I know the expectation that you set on yourself. Let it go. Let it go right now and just relax. Okay. How are you feeling? How's your headspace right now? My headspace is good. I, I told you this humility was all a ruse. Of course. I told you. I told you. Um, and I'm still keeping an eye on this guy for performance enhancing substances. Um, yeah, the, the lead got whittled. Um, that happens and I'm still ahead and the game is not over. And this trial is not over. No, so ma'am. yes, I'm focused, I'm here queen and let's finish this game. That's my girl, let's do it. Chasing Amy, we chased her, we're there. It's, it's now dogma season, creative freedom is upon us making crazy stuff. I am so happy as a Bostonian that the honorary brothers from Boston got us here. And I didn't even mention checking down to multiple choice because I trusted you to have that. I literally didn't want us to go there because you went perfect without even second guessing it. So what I want you to do this round is we've got three JTEs, three repeat if needed. So remember in the first round where you got mad at yourself about like, oh, I needed one more second and I had that. In this round, remember, you've got those extra seconds. You can take your time. You can think you've got all three of them. You know this. This is yours. We use the lucky numbers. 37 has never steered you wrong. It's not about to now. It's all yours. How you doing? You're my boy, Koi. I'm, I'm, I'm in the zone. I hope I get these. It's time. We woke up. We're into it. Let's get that belt. Let's go after Dan. Our competitors are here. And now round number three is about to begin. We're going to start with Kevin Smith, who's going to try to bounce it back to Marisol. He chose category three, Mark, and that is in the realm of action adventure. Action adventure pictures for Kevin Smith. Kevin, this is to take your first lead of the ball game. For two points, the question is, this film stars Patrick Swayze, C. Thomas Howe, and Charlie Sheen as young men who defend their town from invading Russians. Red Dawn. Kevin Smith has the lead. Kevin Smith has the lead. So now we bounce over to Marisol McKee. She chose category eight, and that would be Disney films. Disney films would be category eight. All right. For two points. Your question, to regain the lead, Lady Justice, in the world of Disney, what classic Disney animated film is known for the song, Hi Ho? Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. All seven of them, she got the number right. That is correct, and it is back to Lady Justice with a one-point lead, so we go back to good enough Smith to see if he can hit his three-pointer once again to reclaim the lead. That's right. And he chose category seven, category seven for Kevin Smith. And that would be Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks would be the question. And here it is. Somewhere between America's dad and America's grandpa at this point. Tom Hanks. Your question, Kevin, for three points and once again for the lead. Which sitcom actress plays Tom Hanks' wife in the 1986 film The Money Pit? Shelley Long. A lot of people say my mom looks a lot like her, and they're correct. So are you for three points, and it is now a two-point lead for Good Enough Smith. Christian, could you have guessed we would have been here in round number one? Round number one, that is correct from what we were looking at, and now we are at we have a three-point, excuse me, three-pointer for Marisol McKee. She chose category, category 14, which puts her with romantic comedies. Romantic, romantic com comedies? These are also known as rom-coms. And your question for three points and the lead. This 2001 film starring Renee Zellweger follows a year in the life of a British woman who is determined to improve herself while she looks for love. Bridget Jones's Diary. I hear it's a good read as well. That is correct for three points, and here is where we stand. It is once again a one-point lead for Marisol Lady Justice McKee, and that bounces back to Kevin Goodenough Smith for a five-pointer he's got to have. So if Kevin Smith hits this, it bounces back to Marisol McKee, and she will have to win it on her five. However, if he misses this question, Marisol McKee will go on to play for the singles championship. All right. Kevin, for category number 16, 
you chose the category of comedy. Comedy. All right. For five points, and more importantly, the lead. In the world of comedy, Leslie Nielsen plays the president of the United States, Baxter Harris, in what 2003 spoof film featuring Queen Latifah, George Carlin, and Ja Rule? Five. Four. Scary movie? And your winner! Ladies and gentlemen, Lady Justice Marisol Marquis! The answer was Scary Movie 3. Scary Movie 3 was the answer. And it is by by two movies. By two movies. Kevin Smith missed only by two movies. And Marisol McKee is going. Is is Kevin waving for a challenge? He's out of challenges, unfortunately. Yeah, and watch the tape. Somebody starts screaming before I'm finished with my answer. I say scary movie, and I'm about to put a number on it. And then somebody starts screaming, and the screen disappears. So. You guys, what is this preferential treatment? Why is he still speaking? He has no challenges. <laughs> he doesn't. Get him off. We, we, we didn't get a final screen. answer. We yeah. didn't get a final answer. Call exactly. All of a sudden, somebody he starts paused. screaming. He and does I'm not have a challenge done. to I'm to massage everybody out there watching right now. I will levy a ruling, regardless of whether a challenge has happened or not. Is that there is in the rule book a grace period of about one second at the judge's discretion. Kevin Smith had said scary movie, and it was about one second later that the screaming had started. And so that is, unfortunately for Kevin Smith, who played a magnificent game, the final judgment here. It was scary movie three, not scary movie. And the movie trivia schmodown is a razor thin margin between winning and losing. And that is what we just witnessed in one of the all time great matches. I feel Christian lost it for me. I'm going to say that on the record. I know the man knows his Carlin. I know the man knows his Carlin. I, I, I was sitting there being dramatic presentationally and stuff. And all of a sudden somebody called the match prematurely. This is like heaven can wait when Warren Beatty was pulled out of his body by uh by buck henry like uh, there was just, a hanging chad to go back to the me uh, metaphor earlier there was a hanging chad and it was the number three and i think it was attached well right. unfortunately you guys uh, these shenanigans don't fly in the court of corruption get off my unfortunately, screen unfortunately shenanigans are no there are no more challenges for the quirky mercs so we do have asterisk. to let them go there's an asterisk next to this well either way asterisks are not Marisol McKee is officially the number one contender and will be going on to play for the singles championship next month. She is the number one contender now standing at five and one. Congratulations to Marisol and to Shannon. We are going to put you in the waiting room where you will be talking to Jen Sturger momentarily. Four massive points for corruption. And what a fight it was. Minus uh, the shenanigans, uh, whatever might have happened at the end there, too. It was a lot of fun. The match was fun because Kevin fought back from, I mean, he. it, it looked like it was almost lights out after. I mean, you look at what Marisol did. It was like nine or ten points. Fought back with Matt and Ben. Hits his two. Hits his three. And then just missed it. Regardless, there was a pause, as you said, inside of the rule book. Sounded like scary movie to me. I stand by it. And but nonetheless, nonetheless, Marisol McKee goes on to win. And now she will be facing for the championship. And we are going to hear from Marisol McKee and Shannon. Just a moment here, Mark. And even without the benefit of instant replay, I will admit it was a very close call, but it was the correct judgment. And for Kevin Smith, I mean, somebody who appeared at least, maybe tactically, maybe realistically, to emotionally bury himself before the match had even begun, he pulled his way out of that pit and came to within a five-pointer. Like you said, he was within the right franchise of regaining the lead. And who knows whether Marisol McKee would have hit her five-pointer. But the way that she played today, Christian, indicates she wasn't going to miss. No, not at all. From the way that she played today, and she has been, look, she's 5-1. and one. She's played so well. Now she finds herself, as we mentioned earlier, she is now going to, since Clark Wolf, she will be the first woman to challenge for the championship since 2018, um, three years ago. So 
here we go. Marisol McKee, the number one contender to the Movie Trivia Showdown Championship, is now standing by with Jen Sturger. Jen? Marisol, I have to ask you, how does it feel to hear number one contender in front of your name? I I mean, hey, all respect to Smith. I feel high as a kite right now. I mean, I mean, I feel pretty great. Uh, you know, it's 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 pretty exciting. I um yeah, I it was it was earned, I'll say that. Um and it feels pretty great. I have to say though, Kevin Smith kept you kind of on the edge of your seat and fighting the entire match. Were you a little surprised with that? No, I told you. I told you. I knew I knew. I knew, okay? I have I stand by everything I said before. All right. I could see the killer beneath those eyes. Behind those eyes. I I, I can see it. And I knew he was leading me into a false sense of security. I knew it. I knew that was his plan the whole time. Tell and me though, what went through your head when he hit Matt when he chose Matt and Ben? No, I said that. <laughs> Here we go. Um, <laughs> No, I, it was, it was, it was the right call on his part and he, and he swept the board, something that I failed to do in my, in my round two. Um, and the court recognizes, as I said before, it recognizes, you know, where it, it recognizes, um, recognizes a clean sweep when it happens. Um, but, uh, as we can see at the end, uh, his closing argument wasn't strong enough. I think that's pretty apparent. So justice rolled out. So now you're the number one contender, first woman since Clark Wolf to play for the title. How does that feel to have that kind of legacy to follow? Uh, it is, it's, it's indescribable. It's, it's, it's like looking up at a mountain um, um, and knowing that I guess I got to climb it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's an honor um, first and foremost. Um, it's an honor and a responsibility and a duty that I'm not going to take lightly. Um, and I'm going to carry it um, in my heart and in my brain um, every single step of the way moving here forward, um, you know, for, for the women that have come before me and the women um, that I know are going to follow after me, that are going to play alongside me and follow after me. So it's an honor and it's something that I, I play for beyond just playing uh, for myself um, because that's important too. You know, I play for myself, um, number one, because we all we all should play for ourselves. We all should be our number one fans first before anything else. Um, but uh, right behind that is all of this. Like I said, the women before me and the women after me. And it's a lot, but it's an honor and it's thrilling. Shannon, you made that trade to get Marisol back at the beginning of the season. Does that all just kind of seem worth it now? I mean, it was worth it from the very beginning. It was my sole intention to make sure she found her way home. And we made it happen. We made it happen. I don't care if Grace's red hair is turning gray with the stress she must be under seeing this happening to her. But I quite frankly don't give a damn. Yes, I told everyone since day one, we're getting them back. We're getting Marisol back and it will be worth it. And it has been more than worth it. You know, corruption keeps fighting back, Shannon. I mean, look, there's Marisol, Mike, Chance. How are you feeling about their match against Shazam tonight? Oh, I'm so amped up for this match against Shazam. I am so ready to watch everything that they've worked for. I want to take out two sets of Mercs in a night. It'd be amazing. It would be an honor. And speaking of an honor and a privilege, what a privilege and what an absolute sincere honor it must have been for the guy from Harold and Kumar to face Lady Justice in the ring today. Incredible for him. Um, I'm very, like I'm very Do you want to tell her or? <laughs> oh, I love that movie. No. <laughs> oh, mm -hmm. well, congratulations, ladies, on a fantastic victory today. And uh, best of luck, Marisol. Thank you. All right. So Marisol McKee takes the victory. She has now become the number one contender and will go on to face the champion next month next month marisol mckee officially the number one contender mark this was a hell of a fight between uh, both kevin smith and marisol mckee it's just i mean listen to those two names you just said you know you, you have a rising star in the movie trivia schmodown who's announced herself to the world you have an established celebrity who loves competing in movie trivia and it's all under this little house that we built but it's these kinds of personalities that make it 
a home. And to see the confidence that Lady Justice still has in that interview, she was like she could go another three, maybe five rounds right now if we asked her to. And then you look at the side of the quirky Mercs. And let's talk about Kevin Goodenough Smith for just a second, because to show the mental fortitude to come back after just only trailing by three to five points, but then just being so down on himself, he managed to will his way back into the ball game and reclaim the lead twice in round number three. And you think back to a match that we recently had, the Drew McWeeny Barbarian match, where it's just that razor thin, and that's why challenges are so crucial sometimes when it is just that that beat. It's not even a second, it's that .01 of a second that could make the difference in any given match. It started out as a fun bar trivia at the end of a podcast, and now look at the beast it's become. And we're proud to have everybody in here, including Koi Jandrew, and Kevin Smith, who I believe we're about to hear from, if I'm not mistaken, Christian. Yeah, let's throw to Jen Sturger and Koi Andrew and Kevin Smith. Look, I know this is this is new territory for you. Um, I have to ask you though, do you think like, your mindset going into this match played into any of the end results? Like, were you just not quite sure enough of yourself to pull that last answer? No, not at all. I honestly, you go watch. It's performative. I'm go. I, I I say scary movie, and then I, I'm a, like, I would thought I was putting on a show. I honestly feel like like Christian pulled the trigger too fast. I think my heaven can wait analogy is is spot on, and you know I think it's weird that the judges are the same people that pulled the trigger too prematurely. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, and I'm not saying conspiracy. I, I just think Dan messed up. Like, I don't think they had it in for to Marisol to win, but I think, like, no, like, is that your final answer? I think we should go back and watch other matches to see if Christian comes in that quickly. But, you know, I don't want to sound like a sore loser, but I, I like, I don't feel I lost that one the way I lost it. I probably would have lost it legit by one point to Marisol when she got the next question, but I think in his zeal to announce the winner, I think... Christian kind of screwed me over. And I think the George Carlin of it all is is a factor for me, is that that is definitely where I stand with, I know your knowledge of a very certain icon. And literally, literally his final film. He shot that after he shot Jersey Boy. So, oh. and we had to wait like a year. So like, I, again, I, like, you know, it's it's all fun and whatnot, but like, I, I legit feel like Christian kind of pooched my game right so there. wait are you guys saying this is the boston screw job essentially i'm saying we <laughs> won by boston and we may have lost by boston i don't think it's a conspiracy but i do think that he got too excited and he jumped there was too much like oh my god but it's like dude i wasn't done speaking like there's no like you know request for a final answer or anything like that there was no clock there was no like i ran out of time it was just too much enthusiasm, I feel. And uh, I don't know, it kind of poisons the well a little bit for me, kids. To go back to the metaphor that I was playing with through round two, we did experience so much of the East universe, but the thing that happens after Dogma is you do strike back. So I feel if there was ever a time for Silent Bob to strike back, it's after a loss that involves a certain moment of perhaps indiscrepancy. And I think that's what happened with Jay and Silent Bob and they did okay. I think you come back discrepancy not indiscrepancy oh that's another thing entirely yes. thank you <laughs> yeah, there's, i think you're absolutely right though you you missed the target but hit the tree koi there is a discrepancy story uh, of his life kevin yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but i have to say you had to be feeling pretty good when you were able to you know have your choice with matt and ben in the second round like that was kind of you that was you roaring back um i did I, you know i th thank god that I, I kind of ran that category. Boy, it, it would have been t terrible if I didn't, you know, run the category at, at the very least on those two guys. Um, they were deep cuts questions, though. I was uh, happy about that too. I didn't. I don't. I don't feel like I won on any easy things. I, I will definitely be beating myself up for not saying uh, far, uh, far away place um, because I. It was like that was in the video store at RST Video where I worked, as was Cheetah. And at the last, and I knew it was, you know, a far off place, but the last second I was like, wait a second, was Reese in that Cheetah movie? Was she on the cover? I was like, did that go for And I, I went with that. So I, you know, I'll kick myself for that. I'm haunted by 
Reezy Witherspoon anyway in life in general. So it, it stands to reason. <laughs> stands to reason that you know she uh, she was uh, my jinx. Also, the we lost jinx. one. I'm gonna to go back to it. The bigger jinx is the host who ends the show before the show is over. I, I just don't want you to hold that against me, okay? Big fan all. over here. No, I just, I just, I've never seen that in game show history. I've been watching game shows for damn near 50 years. I've never, I never saw Richard Dawson jump in and interrupt somebody before they finish their response. Like, There was a bit of irony that it was Reese Witherspoon, though. That was, well, that was an old that was an old Reese question. The irony was that that uh, it was a movie like again. I worked with George Carlin. He shot his scary movie three thing after we shot Jersey Girl. So like I, I was in the zone. I was just yeah. but performance. I you know that'll teach you kids. Don't put on a show. Be like the Lady Justice and just give your answers and stuff. But I was sitting there going scary movie and then i was going for my number because in my head i was like one two three and then i was about to that's land what i thought two. was happening that's yeah. what I, look that's what was happening that's the sad <laughs> truth and, and then yet christian who you know brought me into this league you know almost single-handedly took me out with the premature well, we're not letting you selly. leave that easily he sellied, sir. He sellied and ruined my chances at winning he went all celebration on Marisol, and then suddenly it was all over for me. I, I wasn't That's why you got to stick around for some redemption, though, because look, you're you're three and one. All right, that's, how do that's I, a how solid do I redeem, record. How do I redeem myself against a crooked system? David's um, Goldman, we've just seen it. Well, uh, maybe a rematch with Jericho for starters. He's been really I wanting one. Jericho. my match was with with Christian. <laughs> you just want to run this back right now? We can't do that. <laughs> I, I, I'm saying, if I'm ever going to rematch anybody, it's like pull Christian into the let us switch seats and let me cut him off so that he loses prematurely. I'm just saying. I think there's two great scenarios. I think one is there's a tournament coming up, a singles tournament, and Kevin comes back and runs it and shows people. Because frankly, at the end of the day, this was a number one contender. Everyone doubted Kevin both years, and he just took Absolutely. on easily one of the greatest champions the sport has ever seen. And he pushed her all the way through. And he knew two answers that were clear as day. He'd written down a gene, he'd written down a cape. Those were known. He would have won this in a different headspace. He would have won this in a different scenario. He would have won this maybe if we were live versus digital. So I argue tournament, we definitely make a thing. We'll have a conversation, but also maybe an exhibition against Christian. Never mind what I did or didn't know. I could have had a chance at winning this if I wasn't cut off prematurely. Watch, oh. Oh, watch, ba watch back, kids. We're going to have to roll the tape back yeah. to the left, back yeah. into the left. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, okay, this thing. Well, tough loss today, Kevin, but it's always a blast to see you compete and uh, a pleasure to see your face on my screen. Kids, never try. The system is against you. And Koi, you were here too. I showed up. I hit the tree. <laughs> Whatever. Bye. Well, that makes you feel awful. I'm just cleansing everybody's timeline, but I will say this, Christian. Look, if there is ever an exhibition between yeah. you and Kevin Smith, uh, I know two announcers that are currently right here that would be happy to call it. All I'm saying. I, you know, I just you can't uh, you can't win. You can't win. Uh, the, I will say this, and I'll tell I'll tell Kevin off air, and I'll tell Kevin uh, on air. I had nothing but. The, the most respect for Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith to me is one of my idols. And the fact that I think that I was cutting him off or anything too. I played the game, I listened to the game the way that we've always listened to the game. And I heard that particular thing happen and I, I, I made the call. So um, I think uh, th th this is one of the things of being a host is that you're also an announcer. You're also a referee and there's going to be controversy. We've all been mired in, but at the end of the day, we're there to give you a show. And folks, boy, did you see a show today in every phase of the game in every word? Doesn't matter if it's Kate Blanchett or Phoebe Cates. There's a lot of famous Cates with C's out there. But you talk about the three C's that won this match today, Christian. Cool, calm, collected. That's what Marisol McKee, Lady Justice, brought to the table. Well, either way, Marisol McKee is the number one contender. She will go on for the championship. And now I'm going to throw back to Jen Sturger in studio. Thank you so much, guys. I'm here with Commissioner Jay Washington. Jay, it's a pleasure to see you as always. What's it been like 
wielding all of this power here at the Movie Trivia Showdown. With great power comes... I mean, it's cool. <laughs> like, I, I felt like that was the line I should have said. Nah, it's... The whole commissionership has been great. Uh, Grace is doing a wonderful job as president. And, like, I'm... Look, I get a paycheck. You're not going to take my check from me, okay? I got bills and babies. You can't take this from me. I swear to God. Like, don't you mess this up. I've been trying to get this right for a while. But no, I'm cool. I mean, it's good. It's, you know, to have a collision taping and, you know what I'm saying, hopefully I can file this off of my taxes. I bought a sparkling water. But that's all. So we obviously have the team's match coming up with yeah. the titles on the line, Shazam versus Corruption. Look, you're very familiar with these teams. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favor going into this one? I mean, if I had to pick one, I just think it's going to be a good match. You see what I'm saying? That's how, that's how you just answer your questions. Like, do I have to really pick a favorite? Like, am I obligated to pick somebody for somebody? Everyone is, this, is so non-committal here. Is this, a, is this a betting website? Do I just say, what's the odds on one team or the other? One? Oh, we can't do that one. Okay, so I mean, if I got to pick one, of course, I'm going to pick the team with the dude on it. The team with the white guy. Uh, Jay. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure. I'll let you get back to, you know, business and doing things. Thank you. Thank you. Being important. Tax deductions. Unreal. Koi. Hey, man. Yeah, hey. No, I was trying to, I was, when you called, I was just trying to call Kevin and I left him at. Yeah, no, I... I don't think he's gonna answer. Dude, Kevin is, is legitimately pissed off. I've known Kevin for years and I have never seen him like this. No, I, 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 I can see that he was pissed, but you know, you know me. And I was, you know, that was... <sighs> well, dude, he thinks you haven't can wait at him. I... He thinks, he thinks I what? What does that mean, heaven can't wait? I, I You preemptively... I, I, I know, but you told him, right, that that wasn't the case. No, 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 no. I understand where you're coming from, and I understand why this is going to be controversial, but I got a side of my player on this one. I, I know he's your player, but... It was Scary Movie 3. I, I know. Yeah, but, you know, that's not... He was filming with his friend, George Carlin, right before Scary Movie 3. If there was ever a movie for Kevin to know and to feel connected to that isn't one of his own, it's Scary Movie 3. He knew that answer, man. But, you know, he was still Scary Movie, Scary... Debatable. And yeah, now he's pissed off. And I got a side of my player in this one. Yeah, but, you know, that's not great if he's mad because... Yeah, I'm with Kevin. I'm not not pissed off, too. You think I didn't want to get that round? You think I didn't want the number one contender spot for Kevin? <sighs> Look, okay, I'm just the messenger here, and I want you to understand that. Okay, what, what's the message? This is coming from Kevin, and he said to tell you, Harloff, this isn't over. This isn't over by a long shot. Welcome back. I, before we start this match, the crowd is here. It's at a fever pitch. Christian Harloff, uh, buddy, you want to talk about what we just saw right there? Uh, no, Mark. It, 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 that didn't go very well. No, it did it didn't not. Go well. I mean, I was there for the match. I was calling it with you. It was a hell of a match. Marisol McKee taking the victory over Kevin Smith. Lady Justice beats Good Enough. Good Enough in you. Uh, some words. Look, I tried afterwards, too. Coy also seemed like, I, I don't know. I mean, the guy, he, as he said to me, that it's not over by a long shot. What the hell that means, I have no idea. All I know is that didn't, you know, Marisol McKee played a great game, and uh, and now Kevin Smith is mad at me. So what do I do? I it know. looks like he's trying to turn you into silent Christian, but that is going to be something to be settled at a later date. Right now, we have a little thing called the Collision main event it is shazam taking on corruption and i believe there's some hardware on the line my friend it is the team's championship match and this is a rematch for the titles because shazam the first time they were the champions they took the titles off of corruption during the digital era and both shazam and corruption are two-time champions 
tonight, if corruption can get it done, they'll be the first team to ever win the title three times. And Mike Kalinowski is trying to become the first person to ever be double belted twice as he is the reigning Intergeekdom champion. Shazam is trying to get that title defense. William Bibiani has been a singles champion. He is a two-time team champion. He has not been able to defend a belt yet, even though Shazam right now has a great record at 10 and 2 and the the kid he wants to hold on to that title so there's a lot at stake especially for the mercs the mercs pick up that big win with andrew dimolanta with eight points they come up short with uh with kevin smith sorry and there you also and then corruption Marisol does win that match, so this is a battle between Corruption and the Mercs as much as it's a battle between Corruption and Shazam. And it's a question as to whether each manager can employ their preferred tactic of strategy, given the fact that Koi is just so overwhelmingly happy and positive all the time. Is he going to take a little bit of that, I'm just going to say, Kevin Smith-Christian controversy into this match, or is he going to be able to use that Shazam magic that we've seen so many times on the other end of the ledge? Is Shannon Barney, the queen of corruption, intimidation, tactics, some dark powers, some evil forces coming to work and getting a whole lot of wins as a result. This is going to be one heck of a barn burner, friend. It really is. I mean, right now, if you've got Mike Kalinowski, you know, if he's able to win here tonight, he's going to tie Dan Merle as far as how many championships they both have won. But this is, uh, yeah, there's so much on the line because Kalinowski's playing great this season. Bibiani's playing great this season. The kid at uh, Chance right now is on fire. So uh, who knows? I mean, Chance has an opportunity to be double belted should he win today, and he's on a run for singles. So there's so many potential with both these teams. These are four of the great players. The, you're going to see the elite of the lead clash in just a moment here. This is why it's so much fun. I am currently enjoying an Eye of the Captain cocktail. We encourage everybody out there watching to bring the spice to your Schmodown Collision viewing experience with your Captain Morgan cocktail of choice while you stream and enjoy this incredible promo telling us just how we got here tonight. Corruption took the team's titles. If they defend these titles tonight, then Shannon Barney is going to have a very good spectacular because you have Corruption going up against Shazam and they're looking for those titles. You clowns call yourself Shazam. It's factually incorrect. So when you guys decided to name yourself that and you thought it was clever, you actually were idiots because it doesn't make any sense. That's the guy that wants to come at me? Yes, I'm ready to win it. Yes, I'm ready for those nice shiny belts to be right here. It's the Merc's time. So thank you, Mike, for the kind, kind words. Let's go. Are you done you know, yet? Oh, I'm just getting started. There is no excuse. It played awful. It's embarrassing what I did out there. I embarrassed my teammate. I embarrassed my manager. I embarrassed my faction. I need to rethink something. This is entirely unacceptable. Because we know how well Chance is going to play. It, this really just comes down to one thing. It's just Mike Kalinowski. Six matches for Mike. He has not answered more than seven questions correctly in the first round. You went perfect. Mike got six. You got every other point in the whole match. You guys annihilated us because of the fact that you played better. Chance Ellison went perfect again. He's got to be one of the best first round players that we have. When corruption plays like that in the first round, they are a very, very hard team to beat. I started studying for IG for this belt that I just won for two months, February 28th, till this match. Now imagine what you will if I took time off from IG, put that focus towards singles play. I think you have to start acknowledging the fact that Mike Kalinowski could be a pound for pound all time great. I'm gonna be a six-time champion very, very soon. We owe Shazam a much better match than what they got out of us last time. You two can do it, and that's what I wanna see. I want them to get the match they deserved, and I want us to take that belt back from them. The Odd Couple comes back and wins the championship for a second time. This was a really, really solid match. It was up and down, but I am especially proud to finally be able to hand a belt over to Mark Andreco. There's no easy way to say it, so I'm gonna say it. I'm uh, officially retiring from Schmodown. The odd couple who won the championship, they will not be the defending champions. Jeff Snyder will be. Whoever that partner is won't be recognized as the champion unless they defend. They will be the new member of the odd couple and the defense will be granted. We're ready to go. The, the, the players are different than we thought, but the game is still the same and the challenge is still the same and we're excited.
by William the Beast Bibiani, former singles champion. And today, what are we gonna do, gents? Win? We're gonna win. And win! He Here we are again, facing another mountain. This one being Shazam. Uh, our, our first title match for the Mercs this season was a 101 point game. This title match that we just played was a 101 point game. <laughs> you should just get those shirts. You are not going to stop me from taking your belts. It, it's been a while since anyone has actually had an in-person match. There's no advantage there for either team going back into studio. Both the teams have a lot of experience, but it's just been so long, so it'll just be interesting yeah. to see what that's like. Speed round is what I'm not especially worried about just because that's something we that's something we train for, like especially during title matches. I think it's heavily misconstrued that corruption is just gonna like sweep that speed round. Corruption are two-time champions. We are two-time champions. The stakes could not be any higher. We know how serious this match is. We know what this match is going to mean for Legacy. Now it starts. This was all just the warm-up to the reign of Shazam. <laughs> we deserve that team's belt, just like Andrew deserves to hold on to that belt. So it is the time for the Mercs to change the trajectory of where the league is going. full of jokes and sloppy gameplay all across the board to take the top spot in the faction race. We won't allow it. So we're going to shut down that show right now. Look, and as you see, you got to be pumped up here. You got to be, spice. of course, and you have Woo! to be excited to see what what this means. And they they are all aware that this is an in studio match. They all are big performers as much as they're great trivia players, they and they want to have that energy. This is I can't even tell you from all the competitors that I've talked to just here today, people in the crowd, they're excited to be back in studio. That energy is back, and they want. To, there are no two better teams that just work off of live energy than these two teams. Do you think Shazam spent more time prepping for the match or prepping for their intro? What do you think we're going to see here tonight? Not sure, but we're about to find out in just a moment because as soon as that music hits, we're going to have some competitors come out. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie know the start of that God, you know the start of that it's iconic at this point it's, it's like the a big David rock B. concert is about to happen it really is it's the david b set up he's he's done this he performed this at spectacular by the way tickets for the spectacular still oh, look at you Good, having that. a little ticket plug in their intro but you know this is big for them this is big for shannon shannon the corruption started rough again and now they're on this stretch it feels like this is sort is. of a redemption tour for corruption That's right. can they capitalize on it in their first in studio match of the season and here they are and the booze and the cheers coming out at the same time. And there is Shannon Barney, the leader of Corruption, waving Whoa. her hand for her two A players. And there is the interview to champion Mike Kalinowski, Chance Ellison. These guys are the first Anarchy team, the real big first team, the class Anarchy team standing. And here they are. They work so well together as a unit. And if you thought Saul was intimidating, look at Shannon Barney and look at the sunglass duo of Chance Ellison and Mike Kalinowski. They make their turn. They're about to hit the stage led by their queen. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing first the challengers with a record of eight wins, three defeats. Oh, that's a spook. The Cobra. Chad Tellison, the Inner Geekdom Champion of the World, fight the killer, Kalinowski, Corruption! More like boots than cheers, but they do have their fans. Oh, wow, and some words there right away from Shannon Barney, someone in the crowd. Mike Kalinowski not saying anything. Wow, well, that is for Mike. that's a first. Mike Kalinowski choosing not to say a word here. Wow, what, what kind of Christmas gift well, has he, this been? He is enjoying a Tootsie Pop. I don't want to be telling tales out of school here. I think Mike and Shannon are sweet on each other. It's a possibility. 
And now we await the arrival of the champions. There's that music. Once again, a David B. special. You gotta be happy if you're Koji Andrew, though. You know, you got the Star Wars champion in the world, you got the team's champions. And he's always happy anyway. He's always happy anyway, but he loves managing the champs. He just loves it. He, he loves that lightning bolt. It has become the lightning bolt of mythology in trivia competition. And you know what's funny is that you talk about the, the chemistry that Corruption has. These two guys have amazing chemistry, and they've done it so many times over. I mean, they have 10 victories with only two defeats. And they're performers at heart, and you look at them riling up the crowd. If Corruption got some cheers, Shazam gets everybody on their side. Oh, the fan favorites, people love them. They love their jovialness, all of it. And, and well-deserved. They've been in the league for a while. And their opponents representing the quirky Mercs with a record of 10 wins, two defeats, and three knockouts. Meyer, the former movie trivia showdown champion of the world, William the Beast Viviani, the undisputed movie trivia showdown team champion of the world, Shazam! The crowd loves some Koi Jander grabbing their two belts. Now, William, I gotta say, I'm, I'm, I'm usually, I see these big entrances that you normally do, and there was, uh, oh, this is a little like smaller than oh, I. Oh, uh, sorry, uh, one sec. Oh, hey, that was good. Any, any, anything else? You want? Yeah, I got, uh, you know, I got, I got some prepared remarks actually. Yes, go, please. So uh, I, uh, I'm here to represent uh, the quirky Mercs. Uh, uh in this uh, particular event. Let me stop, let me and, stop you right there. And, oh, um, there. Uh, hold Mike, on. And my count. Oh, oh, excuse me there for a second. I mean, you know that I can, nice. be, uh, I can be quite loquacious if I want to, and I've been known yeah. to talk about many things, things that I love, like Shannon, my partner, or myself, but uh, I've got to talk about that right now. You know, what I've seen is what happens all the time. You guys doubt us constantly. I see the polls, I see exactly what happens, but Chance and I have proven time and time again why we are champions. So we're here tonight, you know what? I was expecting a big entrance and we didn't get that, so already I'm disappointed. Yay! So what we're gonna do is we're gonna win. We are going to be the first team to ever win these belts. Was it twice, three times, oh. twice? Three times, three times we're gonna do right now. And then when you're done without that belt, you can go and you can do your nice little entrance. Sound good, my friend? That, that would be great, thank you. All right, Okay. right. Let's play some trivia, shall we? And get those right. belts back where they belong. I believe oh. this is yours. Yeah, please. Can I, uh, can I have a, a short rebuttal? Oh, sure. You want to say something? I was, I, well, I, it's not so much that I want to say something. What, oh, what's Bibiani doing oh, now? No. Careful, Bibs. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh. Wow. Oh, Bibs pressed him with confetti. the inner kingdom champion. I got to wow. say. I got to say. Let me. I know I just said something, but I want to say something again. You know, <laughs> the first time back in what? 13 more months? 14 yeah. months? It's live in, and. I was expecting something better from Shazam, these grand entrances. It's, and that's, it's been 13 uh, months of, of, of some... I'm disappointed. I'm, I'm, sorry. I'm poor. <laughs> All right, I'm, sorry. So I'm very poor. All right, so here we go. So now the champions have arrived. The challengers have arrived. It is five rounds for the Movie Trivia Showdown Teams Championship of the World. Mark, round number one. It is about to begin. What are the rules? Confetti is no longer legal in the Movie Trivia Showdown. <laughs> that is not in the rule book. That is actually not in the rule book. What is is round number one in the team's competition plays out like an individual exercise of Movie Trivia Showdown and know-how because you may not rely on your teammate's strength to acquire an answer. In round number one, eight questions emerge from eight different corners of Movie Trivia Showdown goodness. Each question's worth one point. No penalty for missing a question, there is no stealing, at least there isn't, in round number one. We'll ask the question. Competitors have 15 seconds to write down your best attempt at an answer. Once we ask you by name or nickname, please show what you wrote to the cameras, to the audience, to us, to a whole lot of folks. At the same time, you verbalize your attempt into the microphone. I'll remind each team, you have three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the match. You're not sure you heard a question right, you just want to buy yourself another 15 seconds. Do what JTE does and ask for a repeat. You also each have one challenge as a team you may utilize at any point throughout the five round championship match. We'll have managers deliberate, we will hear all arguments, and it will ultimately be your manager that confirms and ratifies if said challenge is taking place. Christian? They look ready to go. All right, so we asked the champions first. William Bibiani, are you ready? Can I get a growl growl? Growl growl! Then yes. The kid, are you ready? Totally ready, let's go. Chance Ellison, are you ready? 
Let's get it. Mike Kalinowski, you're ready. Boys, let's play some trivia. <laughs> then let's get ready to show down. All right, round number one. Question number one. We start with famous actors and actresses. Which actor made an appearance or starred in the films? Draft Day, Get On Up, and Marshall. So the match has begun. That's one, right. Two, five rounds. Five big rounds. This yes. is a, we have a long way to go Thank here. Thank goodness we have a captain guiding our ship. And five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, please. We start with William Bibiani. The legend himself, Chadwick Boseman. Yes, and Chance. Chadwick Boseman, R.I.P. King. Yeah, and, uh, excuse me, the kid. Chadwick Boseman. And Mike Kalinowski. Chadwick Boseman. So everybody getting it right. 2-2. Two, two. All right, here's question two. Next question's in the world of animated movies, drawn by hand or on a computer, sometimes made with clay. Your question for a point. In which 2000s Pixar film does a computer say the line, by and large, everything you need to be happy your day is very important to us. So everybody writing these down here and... It's what I text you every morning. Since 2007. And five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up. We start with Chance Ellison. Wally. Yes, sir. And the kid. Wally. Mike Kalinowski. Wally. And Bibbs. Wally. We got ourselves a 4-4 game. Category of Oscars, which actress won an Oscar for her performance as divorce lawyer Nora Fanshua in the film Marriage Story? Uh, so it was Wally, and then his sweetheart was that iPod named what? Eve? Eve Eva? Eva. Well, I think yeah. they stayed together. I think yeah. They stayed together. Nah. Five. Upsell. Four. Three. Two. Wow. One. Pens down. Hands up, please. And we start with the kid. Laura Dern. Yes, Mike Kalinowski. I had Scarlett Johansson. So missing that one, and Bibbs. Be nice. Oh, uh, sorry, it's a Laura Dern. Yes, and Chance. Laura Dern. Okay, so Mike misses there, and corruption down by one. Shazam 6-5 as we get to question four. That's right, it's in the category of martial arts films, and I should know after three weeks of karate practice. For a point, your question, who starred in 1985's The Protector as well as the 2000s films, The Medallion and The Forbidden Kingdom. All right, so now they're all fiercely writing here. Mike is finished. They're looking to rebound. Corruption down by a point. Yeah, they need a miss here, which doesn't seem to happen by Shazam in the first round. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up. We start with Mike Kalinowski. Jackie Chan. Yes, Bibbs. Everyone's favorite, Jackie Chan. Chance. Jackie Chan. And the kid. Jackie Chan. All right, so. Chance and Shazam purpose so far, Mike. Mike only missing one, and we see ourselves with an 8-7 game. Shazam up by one as we get to question five. Here it is. Horror slash thriller. What is the profession of the protagonist, Paul Sheldon, in the 1990 film Misery? You know, the category is horror movies. Yeah. It's a buddy of mine. Yeah. Scared to death of horror movies. Why He's say, such a fraidy why cat. Why do you say things like that? It's not true. Five. You don't know who I'm talking about. Four. Three. Talking about Knapsack. Two. <laughs> one. Pens down. Hands up, please. And we start with Bibbs. Uh, he is a novelist. Yes. Uh, chance. I said author. That's okay. I uh, said writer. That's okay. <laughs> uh, that's all right. And I took what they both said and wrote novelist writer. That's also wow. okay. Hey, so, two okay. points for Mike, huh? Yeah. We would accept all of those. So, all right. So, they all get that right. It is 10 9. Shazam up by one as we get to our next question. It is in the category of comedies. You took it. It's comedies, everybody. <laughs> Been waiting 13 months to say that, you Sorry. skunk. <laughs> you stole skunk. For one point, the question. Which famous sitcom actor co-starred in the comedies Serving Sarah, Almost Heroes, and Seventeen Again? You know, we're going to talk about that Seventeen Again in just a moment. <laughs> you know why. Famous review. <laughs> and five. Four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, and chance. Matthew Perry? Yes. Uh, the kid. Matthew Perry. Kalinowski. Matthew Perry. And Bibbs. Matthew Perry. Wow. All right. 
So you still think you can beat Zach Efron in basketball? Yeah, I still want to take on Efron one-on-one. -on -one. Bring it, Zach. All right, here we go. This is the category question seven of directors. Who directed the films? The Goonies, Scrooged, and Lethal Weapon. See, because he's a dancer, so he's going to try all these moves, prancing around. I am going to drain threes in his eye. Right. I'm going to back him down in the low post. Okay. I'm going to hit my free throws Five. if we call fouls. Four. I don't think that's true. Three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, please. And we start with Brendan Meyer. Richard Donner. Yes, sir. The legend himself. Richard Donner. Yes. The late, great Richard Donner. And Chance. You're trying to make us sad. Richard Donner. Okay, so 14-13. Nothing makes Chance sad. Shazam up by one. So here's where we stand at the moment with the last question. Uh, both Shazam and Chance Ellison have not missed yet, so they have an opportunity for a perfect round and a bonus question, that is. So, Mark, here's question eight. And it's in the category of 90s movies. Excuse me. 1990s movies. <laughs> Dude, and for a point, your question. Who stars as Sam, a man obsessed with Charlie Chaplin and Buster Keaton comedies in the 1993 film Benny and June? Saw it in the theaters. Did you really? I was a little tight. Oh my God. By the way, I got to tell you. You're a fan I of mine? I am. Adorable picture you posted on Instagram. Really good. As a father of two, I got to tell you, it was an adorable picture. Would <laughs> you my dad now? Yeah. Five, four, you made it weird. three, two, one. Hands down, hands up, please. And we start with Mike Kalinowski. Is it Aiden Quinn? It's incorrect. Oh, uh, uh, and Bips. I would walk 500 miles and I would watch walk 500 more. Excuse me for Johnny Depp. Perfect Maybe. round for Bibbs for a chance. Jonathan Peter Depp. Yes, and the kid. Johnny Depp. All right, so those are the three right there. They got perfect rounds. It's 16-14. So Chance is going to try to keep them in this here because they have a bonus question. And... Excuse me. Yeah, gentlemen, Shazam. please continue to write down your yep. attempts yes, because we do have multiple perfect rounds. Sham opportunity here to pick up two more points. All right, here we go, guys. This is the bonus question. In which action film does Arnold Schwarzenegger say the line, I eat green berets for breakfast, and right now I'm very hungry? Is that a cereal? What's that? I don't understand what he's saying. I don't know. I love that. I mean, I'll definitely do the line like afterwards. Confusing. Yeah. And five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. All right. We start with Pips. Is it Commando? It is. One point. Right. Chance. Commando. Yes. And the kid. Commando. Wow. Woo! Wow. What a round. So Shazam and the managers can come up now. The managers will come up and talk to their competitors. And it is 18-15, Mark, going into round number two, the wheel round. Big round for Shazam there, but Chance Ellison doing what this is, seems to be what Shazam and Corruption usually do. Three-point ball game in favor of Shazam. Round number two is the wheel round. The wheel of fate, doom, and justice emerges, and it is physical and looking glorious. It must have P90X during the situation this past year. Each team gets a spin at that thar wheel. Once they settle on a category, six questions will emerge in that particular realm. Each question's worth two points. Keep in mind, stealing's available in round two. So if you're not sure of the answer, you can ask us for multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question recedes to one. All JT rules and challenges still on the board for each team. And so now we ask Shazam. You're currently leading by three. Congratulations, Shazam. Would you like to proclaim that you're spinning first or defer to your opponents? Oh, we are such proclaimers to be. You're welcome. Yeah. They're, they're going to spin first. Yeah. All right, you're going to let them spin first? Yeah. All right. And now Mike and Chance going up. Give it a light spin there, boys. And here light is spin. the spin. <laughs> round and round it goes. And it has landed on. What is it? What? Inner Geekdom Mixed Bag. Inner Geek to mixed bag. Okay. I might not keep it. Interesting. Interesting. They have 60 seconds to determine whether they want to keep that category or use their mulligan, which is golf, for I'd like to spin again. We're going to keep it. They're going to keep it. Inner Geekdom Mixed Bag. These fellas know a little something about Inner Geekdom. Yeah. All right, so Inner Geekdom Mixed Bag will be corruption. They are going to go for Inner Geekdom, excuse me, Inner Geekdom Mixed Bag for their category. All right. Here we go. All right, so gentlemen, you get six questions in the realm of Inner Geekdom Mixed Bag. 
here you go with question number one. You'll find the Loom of Fate, a device that has mystical properties and produces the new name for assassination in which film? Wanted. Two points. That is correct. All right. They conferred. They got the answer. That's how you do it. Question two. Who plays the FBI director Tom Manning in 2004's Hellboy? Jeffrey Tambor. Two more points. And they have the lead, just like that, 19 to 18 over Shazam. At the end of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1, which character kills Dobby, the house elf? Bellatrix Lestrange. Two more points. Oh, that's too bad. All right, here you go. Which Star Trek film feature, features Patrick Stewart, Jonathan Frakes, F. Murray Abraham and Donna Murphy. Star Trek Insurrection. Two more points. They're cooking in a category that I think a lot of folks out there would assume they're going to do pretty well, and two more questions remain. Two more questions. Here is the last one, or penultimate, as Mark would say. In Fantastic Four, Rise of the Silver Surfer, Galactus is known as the what of worlds. Five, four, three. Destroyer. That is incorrect. Here. Right, it's a two-point steal opportunity. Okay. Christian's going to repeat the question, okay. and then you may wager a attempt at an answer. All right, gentlemen. In Fantastic Four, Rise of the Silver Surfer, Galactus is known as the what of worlds? Devourer. Yes, sir. Two points. That is a gigantic steal. On the part of Shazam right there. It is now 23 to 20. It's a three-point ball game. Corruption still has one more question in round two. All right, here's your last question. In the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, Dr. Henry Jekyll calls his other half by what name? Five. Bubble choice. A. Hide. B. Edward, C, Prince, D, Montgomery. Is it Hyde? It's incorrect. So, guys, here you go. In the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, Dr. Henry Jekyll calls his other half by what name? Is Ed it A, Hyde, B, Edward, C, Prince, D, Montgomery? Edward. One more point for Shazam. Good job. Good job. Giant steals there, closing out the round for Corruption. It's Shazam getting the point. They find themselves only trailing by two, and now Shazam gets a spin at the wheel. All right, so now Koi is going to rejoin his team here, and that was a massive round because that is obviously a strength from the Inner Geekdom champion. And they and were cooking through four questions. They really were. There was just two big misses there at the end, and that really hurt them with three big points, massive points with Shazam. They got to hope that Shazam either hits opponent's and choice you know, or something else. diviani has been waiting to spin this wheel for a long time. And here is the spin. We hope it's a light spin. That's just a perfect It's lead. a great spin by the former champion. That was beastly and gentlemen. And we landed on. And the category is, what do we got, gentlemen? What did we land on? 2000s. 2000s. And they're going to keep it. All right, 2000s. All right, so 2000s. 2000s, and they are going to get six questions in the realm of 2000s. And here is the first question mark one yes quarter. what is the score the score at the moment is 23 for corruption you have 21 okay 23 trail by two the category is the 2000s a decade that feels like 70 years ago but it wasn't your question first of six for two points unless you need multiple choice the black dahlia follows the investigation of a real life hollywood murder that was committed during what decade We're going to go multiple. Multiple choice. Your four options for a point. Is it A, the 1920s, B, the 1940s, C, the 1960s, or D, the 1980s? Uh, the 1940s. Is correct for a point. They're on the board in round two officially now for their spin. They trail corruption by one. They can take the lead outright if they hit this next question. Here is the question. In the 2006 film Borat, from what country does the title character hail? 
Kazakhstan. That is correct for two points. Shazam has taken the lead over Corruption. They still have four questions remaining. All right, here's the next question mark. And that is, who plays the role of Mary Fuhr, Norman and Claire's neighbor, in What Lies Beneath? Miranda Otto. The value is two points, and they hit it. All right, that was a big pull there, big pull. And here is the next question. All right, All right. this would be a question four in the category of the 2000s. And it is. Who played Charlotte's celebrity photographer husband, John, in the film Lost in Translation? Giovanni Ribisi. These guys have seen a lot of movies. They really have. And that is, now that was question number four. 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 They have two questions remaining in the category of the 2000s. It's a, currently a five-point advantage for Shazam. They can extend that by two more with their penultimate question here. And it is, what is the subtitle to the third high school musical film, which was released theatrically in 2008? Five. Senior year. I can still beat that kid at one-on-one. -on -one. That is correct for two points. Seven point lead for Shazam, and they're not quite done yet with round two. They have one more question before we head to the betting round, and it is. In the 2003 film, The Cat in the Hat, who stars as Quinn, a neighbor vying for the affection of Sally and Conrad's mother? Alec Baldwin. Sorry you had to remember that movie, but it is correct for two points. I gotta tell you. Just like that, it's a nine point lead for Shazam. I gotta tell you, that was a very impressive round by the champions. They looked unstoppable in that round. <laughs> really with three points stealing in that inner geekdom. Yeah. And then, then getting that, that was big. So now they are getting to the betting round, Mark. It is the betting round, and that wheel is gonna stay up here and hang out with us because the team in the lead, which is Shazam by nine, is gonna get one more spin at the wheel. Whatever category it lands on, a question question will be asked to the field of competition to the two teams who may confer on their attempt at an answer. Before we ask the question, each team is going to wager a series of points. That's why we call it the betting round. They may wager as many as three points. They may wager as little as zero points. It all depends on their confidence in the category that is spun. We're going to get the category. We'll get the wagers from the teams. They may confer, and then we will ask the question. And so, Shazam, at your ready, you get one more spin at okay. that wheel. And please let us know what category you arrive at. All right, so Bibbs obviously spinning the, the category that they liked in that last one. They're, oh, yeah, he's going to retain the yeah, spinning right looks like Shazam. It. So now they're spinning on it, and here is the spin, and it is moving through, and it is going to... Round and round. Oh, yes! All right, so we have Nicolas Cage is the spin, a predictably zany spin that landed on Nicolas Cage. So now what we need are the wagers from each team. We're going to see them. Nobody else will. First start with Shazam. They have written that. There we go. Don't show that to anyone else. And now for Corruption, we see that, and we have the bets. And now Christian Harloff with the question about one of our favorite actors. Here we go. All right. What 2003 drama about a young male street hustler is the only film that Nicolas Cage directed? Nick Cage questions. Yeah. That's a good one. That was a good one. You were okay. sitting on that, Jeff. I was waiting for it. All right. Wait. And five. five. Four. Three. Two. One. Pens down. Hands up. All right. We're going to start with Shazam. How many points? Uh, two. And you said? Sunny. And Corruption? Three points. And you said? Sunny. Both correct. Wow. All right. So that's a little bit. So Corruption needed that. They've seen just a little bit of a pickup there, but they see themselves 34 to 25. That was a – at least they picked up one point. But now they get into the speed round. It is the buzzer round. It's back. The buzzers are about to emerge, folks, and that means it is the speed lightning round. Five questions emerge to the field. Whoever thinks they know it first is going to hit that buzzer. Whoever's buzzer lights up first, I will say their name. Once I say their name, they have exactly two seconds to say their attempt at an answer. If it's correct, they gain a point on behalf of their team. If it's incorrect, their team loses a point. Five questions in total, all to be read by you, Christian Harloff. I will now take my perch as the judge of who buzzed in first. All right, Christian, I'm at my station ready to say the name of the competitor that buzzes in first. You will be administering the five questions at your ready. All right, Shazam, you ready? Yep. yep. Corruption, you ready? Yes. Yep. Here we go. 
Which franchise features characters such as Oz, Finch, Nadia, and Sherman? William. American Pie. Yes. Nice, nice job, Ibsen. Who directed the films Groundhog Day? Harold Ramis. Chance. Yep. He got Harold Ramis. No, no, I'm not. I'm just okay. okay. I didn't get it. That's okay. All right. Which actor appeared in the films Dazed and Confused, Sahara, and... Chance. Matty McConaughey. Yes. Which year saw the release of Jaws the Revenge, Teen Wolf 2, and Beverly Hills Cop 2? Chance. 1987. Yes. One more question remains in the speed round, Christian. Which actress voiced characters in Paranorman and Trolls? Chance. Anna Kendrick. Yes. Wow. Chance Ellison, single-handedly oh now. Wow. Let's bring you back. We'll bring you back. We'll bring you back. Yeah. So Mark, Chance Ellison has an amazing speed round and sees themselves now only down by five. That is, it's 35-30 now. They cut the lead by five points going into the final round, round number five. Shazam 35, Corruption 30 as we get to the fifth and final round, the championship round. One of the more clutch performances we've seen in a speed round, and it gives way to round number five. This is the round that will determine the match lest we go into sudden death overtime. In this round, three questions emerge for each team. Your first question is worth two points. Next one, three points. Your final question is worth five of the biggest points, possibly of your pretty impressive Schmodown careers. We get those questions because each team gives us a series of numbers. Three numbers for each team. You may not pick the same numerals as your opponent because each integer corresponds to a unique category of movie, trivia, Schmodown, mystery. Once we tell the team what their category for the two-pointer is, the team will have to decide which member is going to be fielding that query solo. You may not rely on your teammate's strength for the two-pointer, and then the opposite teammate will have to solo answer the three-point question. You may only confer with your teammate for the five-point question. It is still a very impressive speed round for Corruption. Shazam has a lead by five. So Shazam, you have the luxury of giving us your three lucky numbers first. From one to 20, what feels fortunate? One, nine, and four. One, nine, and four for the champions and for the challengers. We're going to go 2, 12, and 14. 2, 12, and 14 for the challengers. All right, so we are going to start with Corruption, who's going to try to avoid the TKO. We start with Category 2. Category 2, and that would be scores and soundtracks. Scores and soundtracks. Uh, who's going to take it? I will take it. You're going to take it, Mike? All right, scores yeah. and soundtracks. Mike Kalinowski will be going first. Here you go, Mike. Here you go. The song Beat It by Michael Jackson can be heard playing in the Cafe 80s in which 1989 sci-fi comedy? Back to the Future Part 2. That is correct for two points. That's a big answer from Mike right there. You could feel his confidence grow when you said it was correct. All right, so Chance now has category 12. He'll tie the game should he hit the three-pointer. Category 12, that gives them the 2000s. The 2000s will be Chance Ellison's three-point question. Here is the question, Chance, on the 2000s for your three points. Who plays the character of Tommy, the brother of Tobey Maguire's character in the 2009 military drama Brothers? Jake Gyllenhaal. Tie game. Tied ball game just like that. Corruption has tied the lead of Shazam. Well, they avoid the TKO, and now in order to try to get the win here, Shazam will actually get, if they can get two points and force Corruption to their five, they have chosen the category category one, category one, Mark, crime films. Crime, crime movies, films. which you have a history of in real life. These are movies based on those perpetrations for two points. Who is going to take the question? I'm going to take it. Brendan Meyer, a kid who's clearly never committed a crime in his life. <laughs> for crime two of points. being too handsome. <laughs> Guilty as charged. I found the tenderoni who was right for me. <laughs> Brendan, your question for two points and to regain a lead. Brian Kirk directed Chadwick Boseman as NYPD detective Andre Davis in what film? 21 Bridges. 
Shazam has the lead once again, Christian. All right, so here's where we stand. Corruption now. Corruption needs to hit this five-point question. They hit it. They bounce it back to Shazam and try to force Shazam to hit their three and five. You chose category 14. Category 14. That would be horror. Horror. All right. Here we go. In the category of horror for your five-point question, here it is. In which installment of the Saw franchise are the players trapped in a house inhaling deadly poison while Detective Matthews tries to find his son? Five. Four. Repeat the question, please. All right. Here is the second. Excuse me. First one. In what installment of the Saw franchise are the players trapped in a house inhaling deadly poison while Detective Matthews tries to find his son? They have two JTE rules remaining. Should yeah. they need them? Should they miss? Shazam will retain the titles. And five. Four. Repeat the question. This is the second. That was the second one. In what installment of the Saw franchise are the players trapped in a house inhaling deadly poison while Detective Matthews tries to find his son? Five. Four. Repeat the question. Last one. In what installment of the Saw franchise are the players trapped in a house inhaling deadly poison while Detective Matthews tries to find his son. Saw two. That is correct. Yeah. Five yeah. points, yeah. and now, five points, and now here is where we are. Shazam, if they hit the three, they tie it up, they'll be safe to at least go into sudden death. If they miss it, however, then they've got to hit the five to win. Here, Shazam, they have category nine. This is William Bibiani, category nine. That is remakes and Reboots. Okay. Remakes and reboots. All right, William, you're fielding this question solo mm. for three points and to tie the lead of corruption. Your question is What screen legend plays coach Nate Scarborough opposite Adam Sandler in 2005's The Longest Yard? <sighs> Five, four. Burt Reynolds. That's correct. Woo! All right. We I got mean, ourselves. He pieced it together. <laughs> we got ourselves a tie game. So here's where we stand. All right. Shazam hits the five pointer. Then they have retained the championship. If they miss, then we are going to sudden death. All right. They chose Mark. Category four, that is in the realm of Pixar films. Pixar films. Pixar films. These are movies that make a lot of money. And now you have a question about one of them to keep those shiny belts, which also cost a lot of money. Gentlemen, you may confer on this question. And it is. For five points in the win. What specific object had crushed and killed musician Ernesto de la Cruz during a live performance in the movie Coco. Five, four, three. That's the first one. All right, the category is Pixar. What specific object had crushed and killed musician Ernesto de la Cruz during a live performance in the film Coco. Yeah, I trust you. Okay. Is that a really big guitar? And we're going to ah! sudden death. Oh! It was a bell. It was a bell. A bell. A bell. A bell. Oh, so it. we are going to right. sudden death. Woo! Shazam misses Woo! the five point wow. question. What a match we have. Oh my God. I thought he had it. I thought he was, I thought he was confident in it. He was. He just, it was the wrong. Wow. It was a great guess.
All right, so we are going to sudden death. The championship match in the main event of Collision has done exactly what we thought it was going to do. Yes, it has. And oh my me. god, we are now going to sudden death. I didn't think I was going to have to do this rule reading today, but I am thrilled because what a match we have in studio. And for all you fans watching around the world, Woo! sudden death works as thus. It's going to feel a lot like round one, except the pressure. <laughs> it's a little more intense. We're going to ask a question from up here. Competitors have 15 seconds to make a solo attempt at answering the question. You will write down your best attempt at answering the question correctly. If you do so, you get a point for your team. If you miss, there's no penalty, but you don't get a point. At the end, of deciphering all of the answers. If it's tied, we move on to the next question. If nobody got it right, then it'll be tied, and we'll still move on to the next question. However, if one team has more points than the other at any point throughout sudden death, that team will be declared the champion of the movie trivia schmodown teams division. All right, so we ask the champions first, are you ready? Uh, yes. yes, yes. And the challengers, are you ready? Let's We're get ready. It. Here we go. Question number one. Thank you. The crowd's a little excited here. What? All right, guys. What 70s musical includes songs such as Summer Nights, You're the One That I Want, and Beauty School Dropout? And... Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, please. And we start with William. I believe Greece is the word that you heard. Chance. Oh, Greece. And the kid. Greece. Mike. <laughs> Greece. All right. Got it. All right. Here is. We have one repeat, right? You both one have repeat. one repeat. Yes. As All right. a team, you have one repeat, right? Gotcha. That's right. Yep. All right. Okay. Here sure. is the next question, Mark. One repeat in that question for another big point. Here it is. Possibly two points when you really sit down and think about it. Angela Bassett plays what famous singer in the biopic What's Love Got to Do With It? You just got to rely on yourself, on your teammates. It's a little bit of everything in sudden Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, please. And we start with Chance. Tina Turner. And the kid. Tina Turner. Mike Kalinowski. Tina Turner. And Bibbs. Who needs a heart when a heart can be broken? Tina Turner. All right. Very true. Here you go. Somebody's heart's about to get broken, Christian. What year saw the release of The Mummy Returns? Five, question. four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, and the kid. 2001. Uh, Mike. 2001. Bibbs. 2001. And Chance. 2001. All right. Wow. All right. Four Here. fans of Scott Mance on stage right Here now. Here is the next one. Here it is. All right. Your question. In what southern United States? Was the film Cold Mountain set? And five, four, three, two, one. We start here with Mike Kalinowski. I went South Carolina. Uh, Bibbs. Georgia. Chance. South Carolina. And I said Mississippi. Looking for my birthday, damn it. Virginia. North Carolina. Oh! oh. Wow. Oh. Boy Jander says it's all good. Not with me, Christian. Wow. Not with me. That close. All right. Wow. Here we is. We all survived that one. Wow. Here's the next one. That was fun, though. That was fun. That was fun. Here's the next one. All right. Which Pixar film features the voice talents of? Army Hammer, Kerry Washington, and Chris Cooper. You're scribbling down a little more confidently than that state question. And five, four, three, two, 
One, pens down, please. All right, we start here with Mike Kalinowski. Oh, so, wait, oh sorry, Bibbs. Is it mine? Bibbs. Okay, sorry, Cars 3. Pixar, uh, Pixar. Uh, Chance. Cars 3. I had Cars 3. And Mike? I had Cars 3. Oh, well, nice. All right, all right. All right. Here is the next question. All right, here we All go. Right. You know who loves car racing? Everyone in North Carolina. All right, here is the next Sorry, question. Sorry, North Carolina. Right. Thank you, Willie. For another point, possibly two for your team, here we go. Who plays psychiatrist Ben Sobel in the 1999 comedy Analyze This? All right. It's so funny how sometimes you just see a lot of confident writing, sometimes unconfident. It doesn't really bear out all the time. No. Sometimes you believe in an answer and you miss it. And five, four, three, two, one. And we start with the kid. Billy Crystal. Uh, Kalinowski. Billy Crystal. Bibbs. Billy Crystal. And Chance. Billy Crystal. All right. Everybody got it here. All right. Here is the next question. <laughs> Next question. All right, here we go. Here we go. All right. Who plays a college basketball coach who travels to Africa to find talent in 1994's The Air Up There? Five. Four. Read the question. Okay, only one. Here it is. Who plays a college basketball coach who travels to Africa to find talent in 1994's The Air Up There? It's so tense in this room right now. Yeah. Folks, watch. And five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, and we start with Mike Kalinowski. I said Matthew Perry. And Bibbs. Kevin Bacon. And Chance. No, it was that one. And I didn't say any. I said Billy Crystal. And your winners! And still! Movie Trivia Showdown! Champions of the World! William! Cummings! Viviani! Wow! Joaquin Brendan Meyer! Just down! Confetti rains down! Or what's left of confetti rains down as Look at this celebration between corruption and Shazam. What an all-out battle this was over five, nay, six rounds of expert-level movie trivia moments. You don't think that this is the best trivia league in the world, folks? Yeah. Look at what you just witnessed. Right there, then alone, the champions wow. get it, and it's only by one point. William Bibiani <laughs> shows point. what he and knows. look at the score. 51-50, they did it again. 51-50. Okay. <laughs> Where are our 101 shirts? 5150, where's our shirts? Where's our shirts? So what an unbelievable wow. victory for the champions. They defend the titles and they do it by one point. William Bibiani showing that encyclopedia of a brain he's got for movie trivia. Holds to Kevin Bacon, the only one to get it in that final round. And man, you talk about an intense game of Kevin Bacon game, and that was it, man. And six it. degrees away, and William Bibiani plays the hero. He is the one in the 51 to 50 final score for an exclusive interview with Shazam, their manager, Coy Jandra. We now turn it over to Jen Sturger. Jen, I imagine there's going to be a lot of confetti up there. Oh, oh my God. Yes. Thanks so much, Mark. I, I honestly, I, I don't know what I was going to do without that. Uh, of course you brought props. Guys, how, how was that match? Are you not entertained? Yeah, what were you just saying? You can't believe they got horror. They got horror and we got Pixar. It was like, so embarrassing. Oh my God. <laughs> Bibbs, can I, you, do you need like multiple handkerchiefs I, I here, huh? This is actually signed into the pocket. First of all, I, I, I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> How does it feel to finally defend? I, it, you know, um, it feels good. Like it feels really good. Can you say it without a question mark on the end of it? Like, it feels good. <laughs> about corruption that just brings out the fire in you guys. Look, they're, they're one of the greatest teams to ever play this game, and they proved it again, in that every time they come up here, they prove 
over and over again how good they are. And they work so well together. And every point, I mean, when it goes to sudden death, you look back at every point that you got and you go, okay, I'm glad we got that. I'm glad we got that. And you saw in sudden death, nobody blinked in sudden death. I mean, I missed the last question. Bibbs won it for us. We didn't even beat them. You know, it's like Bibbs, had, no one lost it. They won it. And I think that that's, that's what all great sport is. I'm so glad I saw that terrible movie. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, this, listen, corruption is, is amazing. I think, you know, the, the worst mistake you can make in the Schmodown is to underestimate your opponent. I've learned that the hard way. And I, and they'll, they'll back me up on this. I said, we are not expecting this to be easy. We're expecting this to go to sudden death. We got to go a long way into sudden death and look what happened. For real, I think we're gonna have to pay extra for the studio time at this point. Koi, you've gotta be feeling pretty happy for your boys right now. The old credo was Shazam doesn't lose till spectacular. Now it's Shazam wins at spectacular. Now we're going all the way. We're gonna break that curse. What's our record right now, guys? I think it's 11-2. I think I said last year we were going to be 10-2. and two. That last defense put us at 10-2. and two. This defense puts us at 11-2. and two. We're going 15-2. and two. We're going to keep going. This, as long as the Schmodown exists, we're going to be blank and two because these guys have an exclamation point in their name and they're going to earn it. It's going to be 87. No, no. It's going to be 51-2. and 51-50. Quirky Mercs. These champions know so much about movies. It's insane. I'm so proud of you guys. I play enough we matches. love you, Koi. Sorry. If I play enough matches like this to be 51 and 2, I'll pass. I'm not going <laughs> to. Yeah. It's like he's going he's gonna to he's gonna be the old man by then. Yeah, I'm not gonna It'll be that. fine. Yeah. <laughs> so, baby goat. We're just going to be goated up, man. Get you goated up. Baby goats, yep. I got to say, though, guys, there's a lot of teams out there right now, a lot of very hungry teams right now that are not going to let you sit with these belts too long. Well, I'm, I'm, can I just say one thing right now? I know all you other teams are very, very hungry. I've tried. This is not made out of chocolate. Do not eat the belts. I had to replace the leather strap. It was very expensive. Are you done? Are you done with this with this second city act you're doing? Up there? Like but for real. But for real. Exactly. Yeah. But for real. Yeah. No, for there's, real. There's a lot of great teams out there, and we know they're coming for us. And we have never had an easy match. That's just never happened. We have faced the best. We have beaten the best. And we're gonna try to keep doing that. And you know what? There's amazing teams out there, and we've got our eye on all of them. We're watching every single match, and we're saying to ourselves, my God, how are we going to beat them? And I guess we'll find out. Koi, any last words? I never have to worry about these guys, because even if somehow we do lose, they are so impressive as people, as winners. They're so humble. They're so good. And we just keep doing this work. I'm just so proud. No matter what happens next, we're 11 and 2. We're one of the best to do it, and I'm so proud of these guys. Guys, give it up for Shazam one more time. Shazam, Christian, just doing a fantastic job. Entertaining a nation, sure, but more importantly, getting those points for their faction. That's the point. That's what you just said there, too. What we This was like going to Vegas and scoring big for the Mercs. They just picked up 16 <laughs> points tonight. 16 <laughs> points with both Andrew DiMolanta and Shazam. They just picked up 16 points. That is an incredible leap for the Mercs, and Koji Andrew's got to be a happy guy right now. Very seismic shift in the landscape of the faction standing. Speaking of faction standings, corruption not out of this race by, by any stretch shot. of the imagination. And now they came up just, just, you can't even say short. They just missed a tough question at One the end. One question, that was it. It is 51 to 50, they are the 50. And now we turn it back over to the great Jen Sturger for an interview with Corruption and their manager, the queen, Shannon Barnett. Can I get one more round of applause for Corruption, guys? <laughs> That match was absolutely nothing to hang your head about. It may have been one of the greatest matches that I have witnessed in my time here at the Movie Trivia Schmodown. Yeah, it was a match. It was a, I'm sorry, yeah, it's, it's tough, you know. Um, what I love about us is we, you, you can't ever count us down. And, and even when we're down as far as we were, um, I have this IG belt on my shoulder right now. Right now I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it proud. I don't deserve it right now, playing the way I do with IG questions. The one thing I know as a player is to trust my gut. Three times in this match, I didn't trust my gut. I knew it was Devour of Worlds. I knew North Carolina, and I went against it. I went against it. We wouldn't have gone that far in sudden death, and we would have won the game. It's on me, this match. It was on me. Uh, I take full responsibility for that, but that's what it is, and we've lost before, and we're going to, you know, do what we do, come back stronger than ever before. And Shannon, you still have to be very, very proud. I saw you just sudden death, baby, the entire time. Are you freaking kidding me? Are you kidding me? They were in like TKO range and they made them go 
check my math, however many rounds of sudden death. <laughs> What more could you ask for from a championship team? They may not have the belts on their shoulders right now, but I guarantee to you, they will get those belts again because they are the best of the best. Speaking of best of the best, we got to talk about your speed round, buddy. Hey. Holy crap. Oh, yeah. okay. It's okay. Oh, stop it. I think that was like quick draw McGraw up here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I wanted five for eight. I wanted five for five. I'll take, I'll take four. It's fine. But uh, yeah, no, I mean, that's a motto of Crutch's Speed Kills. We practice that. We preach it. I'm glad I can come up here and demonstrate. Absolutely. It's so funny because I was speaking with your manager before the match, and she was just like, Jen, you have to watch this kid's speed round. It's unlike anything I've ever seen. And let me tell you, you delivered. You absolutely delivered. So, guys, how do we regroup from this? Where do we go from here? All the way up. All the way up. We have so many opportunities in front of us. And I mean, you guys are gonna do what you do best. You're gonna go, oh, corruption sucks. Boo, they're out. Yeah, let's hear it, boo. Boo you too, boo you too. I'll give you all a nice big boo at the end of the season when we're the faction champions again. And you can suck that, how about that? Well, I was going to say we were keeping it classy today, but Never. you know, okay, thank you so we're much. We're live, baby. We are back in studio filming. You better freaking believe that we are coming with all the heat, all the wins, all the freaking crazy matches, crazy matches. You guys were unbelievable today. Unbelievable. And who can win, like, lose with a hype woman like this, right? No, nah, no, nah, we're ready. If anything, we proved today. We still got gas in the tank, Mike. Ready to go? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, hey, I gotta shake this off. I gotta take my time. I've got this belt to defend here in a little while. That's in front of me right now. I can't sit there and wallow in my pity, which, you know, has happened before. I gotta dust it off. And it shows, you know, I got weaknesses. I played this, you know, I should've gone 12 for 12. That's on me. Uh, but I've got a lot of work cut out for me, you know, but to defend this belt. I've, that's the one thing I haven't done, no matter how many belts I have. I mean, if I would've won another belt today, make it six. Everyone say the same thing. You didn't defend it. You didn't do this. No matter what I do, I'm never good enough in this league. I'm used to that by now. Me personally, I want to defend this belt. So I've got a month to get going for that or however long it's going to be. A couple weeks, whenever they throw me, you say, hey, your match is then. I've got to be ready for it. And that's what's in front of my plate right now. So that's what I got to do. Well, get some studying done, buddy. Yeah. All right, we'll see you again, killer. Back to the desk. All right, so obviously, I mean, look, there's a lot on the plate here to be as the tournament for the teams is coming up. And now, obviously, you would have to assume that Shannon is going to now lead with corruption inside of that tournament. You'll see them back in the tournament. It does mean that deception will probably take a back seat for that tournament. But Mike was talking about the Inner Geek team. He's got that match with Chandru on August 14th. Chandru Dondapani trying to win that title from Mike Kalinowski. Just such an amazing display of movie trivia, really with all four matches that we saw, and what a way to cap it off. In a round one where we honored some all-time legends, the final score honoring one more great guitar playing legend, 51-50, Shazam over Corruption, and the fact that they dropped that many points, it's a shame that there has to be a winner and a loser, but that's how it goes in the world of competition. That's how it goes in the world of the movie trivia showdown, and it was just such a blast to be back with you yeah. in a live setting with a great crowd, with a great house, with a great sponsor like Captain Morgan. Thank you to everybody for celebrating with us. Whether you're celebrating the win of Shazam or the effort put forth by the comeback from corruption, we ask you to celebrate responsibly with your favorite Captain Morgan drink of choice, Captain's Orders. That's right. Thank you to our wonderful crew and everybody who was able to put this on here today. Thank you once again to Captain Morgan. We appreciate you. We appreciate you, the fans. I hope you enjoyed the show. We certainly enjoyed it. What a great event it was. The collision is back. We are back. And don't forget, you feel that energy. Well, you can feel that energy, whether it's on the 1st, on the 14th, New York. That's right. New York, it's on back. sale right back. now. So get on over there. Get those tickets, New York. It's October, October 9th. Get your tickets at the schmodownlive.com and December, December 4th, the Schmodown Spectacular. It is the big party to kick off the end of the year. Get there downtown Los Angeles, the schmodownlive.com. For the great Mark Ellis, I'm Christian Harloff, and we will see you next time. <laughs>
Christian, you know what time it is? What time is it? It's time for the unapologetic moment with Captain Morgan, our sponsor, the original Spiced Rum. The unapologetic moment of the night has to be William, the Beast, Bibiani, not taking any of Mike Kalinowski's <laughs> rhetoric. He <laughs> takes the confetti and throws it at the Inner Geekdom champion, and that certainly was the unapologetic moment. There was no apology within a mile for that confetti, nope. and why would you need it? Now, we're going to cheers, but let's just make sure that no confetti got in our drinks. I think we're good. Yeah. Hey, folks, cheers to the unapologetic moments with Captain Morgan. Thank you, Captain Morgan, for this original spiced rum. I'm going to make a decadent bud cake!